Yeah. All right, Cody takes the ancestral. So uh, the classic debate of do you want the explosiveness of the Lotus versus the consistency of, of the ancestral? ancestral? Yeah. Um, what we've seen, because of the initiative change, we've actually seen Sapphire float down as yeah. well and Time Vault float up. Time Vault's been in a weird spot. Like, Time Vault and Time Walk are both seem to be back on the float up. Yep. Uh, walk in particular has Walk for a, a little while directed down to, like, the 4, 5, 6 range. Okay. Uh, three, 3 through 6, but lately it's been back in the 1, 2 range. Yep. Um, Vault it seems... Oh, and here we There's go with walk. Mike with the walk, right? Okay. <laughs> I speak it and it does and the, Yeah. <laughs> so... We, had, we just hit the Lord of the Rings set. It's been out. It's been part of the Discord drafts for, yeah. I think, the better part of a month, maybe two now. And this is the first time we're going to see a paper. Just change scene. Can we... We, we did this okay. live now. Okay. Um, we were... Oh, okay. It was our beautiful visage for oh, one pick yeah. too long. There we go. Um, so one of the things that I was curious about is coming into this event with the uh, availability of Tinker and Transmute Artifact, if we would see the one ring Ooh. go a lot higher than the statistics say because it's only been in one draft according to the stats it was picked 46 yeah well that was right. it's been in one where it got picked as the joke pick and then oh okay I, like, I, I think they ended up running it even yep. but then it's been in a modern I got picked in the first round in a modern online but uh, uh, yeah I imagine I imagine it will go 15 to 25 ish okay you know, somewhere mid um, it's an interesting build around card you can do a lot with it um, some of the, the things that uh, were pointed out immediately is you could play mind over matter and spend a lot of time attempting to combo out and then right. basically draw your deck and do whatever you want from there. You have Lab Man and the Thoughts Oh, Vince combo. with the sack. So this is unusual from Vince. Vince has always ends up in a kind of often ends up in a Lansy shell, a shitty Lansy shell. Oh, oh Bowmass. Bow I like where Vince is going here. It's, it's plural. There's two of them on yeah. the card. Um, I I like uh, Bowmasters was another question that I had if we would see this yeah. and where Bowmasters has been. I think the first time it got picked was like seventh. Okay. And then it got picked second right after that. Yeah. And a Colum uh, one from Columbia, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, yeah. It just got picked. It got picked by so, me. It got picked yeah, second. Okay. My, the, the only issue I have with Boa Masters coming up this high is that your cantrips are spread across so many decks that it might not be able to amass that much. So are you going to pair with some of the other amass options yeah. in front of you from both no, Amon Ket block? With, with Sapphire, and I'm just, he's going to just have some wheel stuff. But okay. even at just the crazy value of killing a Ragavan, killing a Bob, like just the two bodies yep. with the ping is really powerful. Don't get me wrong, I believe yeah. 100%. Coming from uh, the constructive side of things, you know, we have the Modern Pro Tour going on this weekend. Anybody who's been engaging with Legacy knows the power of Bowmasters in response to the one mana can so, trip, right? So it's interesting. Here I was talking about like Jet, you know, Crypt and Soul Ring going, but Soul Ring, Mason are. ends up Mason ends up grabbing yep. a Soul Ring and later than where it has been on average. Kyle seed six, Ruby and Taragamon. <laughs> There's the aggressive, the aggressive deck, yeah. which is something that I don't think we've seen for a while. No, it's been on the uptick, especially yeah. with like uh, it's it's it, it, not it's, in paper. I think we yeah. haven't seen it. Well, it seems a little more mid rangey, but it's very aggressive. Yes. It involves, uh, will often involve Comet or involve um, uh, yep. uh, Minsk and Boo. Yep. Right. So, like, there is, we have seen more aggressive. Yeah. Uh, Funky Lander uh, is saying they took Ring in VRD, but believes it can be floated down. It's right. not a tier one. A, I, I don't think it's a, it's a, you know, a, a tier one or tier two pick. It's not that it's not super powerful to tinker into. You don't want to take tin, tinker and then the one ring. Right. It's just another option for the tinker deck. You don't have to just go tinker time ball tinker blight seal cost. It's something else to do with that, and it introduces something new with Thassa's Oracle. Maybe because you could also like displace our kit, and you can do weird things with that and like yeah. flicker the ring. The that first way. time I read it, I didn't catch the cast clause, so I was like, I'm just going to goblin wilder this thing into play. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so Cody's going ancestral white plume. He's just like, uh, I'm just going to draw a lot of cards, and I'm going to take the initiative. And yeah, I wonder. Advantage. I wonder if he's taking it out from underneath James, who took crypt into vault. Uh, I don't know. I mean, crypt into vault makes me think you're going to be in like, some kind of muddy Eldrazi, yep. maybe possibly. Uh, uh, Mike with walk, walk into vault. He just wants to take some turns. Taking turns. Nick. So the breach is interesting. We've had a couple drafts recently where breach has gone in that second um, second round. Right. Swifty like, says it's a statement breach. I I, I agree I with agree. Swifty, but yeah. I also think that 
Breach moving up is probably right in a lot of ways because there's a the thing about Breach is interesting is or not I can't remember just yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah the, sure. the thing about Breach that's interesting is that it can be a combo engine or it can just be a really really solid value. Thank engine. you. The, I think the <laughs> idea of the value Breach yeah. seems to have fallen down so far because of yeah. what it's doing in modern with the grinding station combo. But if you've been watching the Pro Tour, the idea of bolt 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 like yeah. that that meme from yesterday five five lightning bolts like. So I think I don't think Breach is a second round pick. I think Breach is oft should not be a thirtieth pick. Right? I, yeah. Like it, yeah. Um, and Breach doesn't have to just go with with Brain Freeze right. and LED. You have the Lotus, right? So obviously you're that's your statement. You're staking your claim on the fact that you already have two thirds of this combo locked up. So right. you're either gonna float Brain Freeze and kind of psych people into thinking you're taking that so maybe somebody will hate it later on they're like aha he hasn't taken it yet I'll take right. it but in reality you're going for a fair plan and like you just want to value grind some people out with car- with cantrips or uh, like bolt style yeah. effects right? yeah no and I agree I, I, as I said I think Bree should land in the, like the 10 to 15 range probably uh, Nick is one of our newer new players, uh, and with that, Breach looks you know, to a new player. Breach sounds like this is something people are going to want, right? Yeah. Uh, especially um, if you have vintage cube experience, right? Like that deck gets p- bits and pieces of that deck get taken very quickly in vintage cube. So okay. that could be that kind of like transitionary knowledge that we were talking about before, where you so, come from. Cube. And also, I'm just going to say straight up, like Lotus Breach Brainstorm is a beautiful start there's to a Thoughtful Oracle deck. Uh, yeah. There's <laughs> like, nothing wrong with and that And Lotus Breach is, yeah. you know, I, I like do throw like, some Loris in that crap, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you're just going to be like printing money, yeah. you know. I like Cody's pick, of oh, course. God, I, Cody's pick is beautiful. I wonder if we're going to get, if he's going to take Teferi 3, if it's available on the wheel. I know. Uh, so his last draft, was a white blue initiative tempo list mm-hmm. with like to fair and this is the one he won with yeah and it it was strong if, and it fairy three is available on the wheel i almost guarantee he'll slam because what was funny on the way in he was talking about all these different ideas and i was like well if the picks are there you can always rerun your white blue list yeah he's like oh i don't like rerunning a list i'm like yeah but this is a money draft right like this is yeah, yeah yeah this isn't like you know uh you know us goofing off on discord oh, um i hope james is trying to build the legacy mud deck that's just kind of running things okay at like a at well, like I mean, a tier two level anytime you get a grim monolith i want to see a zerta um okay yeah, yeah. so that, I, like, that's always been my thought experiment is how you get zerta working like I went five or two as a reason. Not as a, I was thinking about it, not as a companion. We can talk about this. When we I, have, no, like, mine was as a companion. Yeah, like, I, I, I dug deep into cart. What are things like, uh, like channel as an ability? Oh yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's activated. Activated. Yeah, yeah, I dug deep into weird things like unearth yeah. is activated. You know, I, I also dug deep, but I wanted it in the deck. Um, and Kyle with the bolt. So Kyle's like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some red things yeah. here. I, um, I think it's perfectly fine. Mason yeah. is. It looks like just falling back Ma- on mid-range. Ma- Mason has a... So Mason has a tendency. I have seen him multiple times. Yep. Take thought sees and take the discard stuff. Yep. And then even sideboard. He'll take thought to pick two, pair two or three. Yep. And then he'll audible onto something else and sideboard it in. Like his elves deck. Yes. He started with jet thought sees. Yes. And then he ended up running elves. Got it. He ran thought sees on the sideboard. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. You were right. I think Vince is going yeah. to go with yeah. this like wheel dot deck. Yeah, so we'll yeah. probably see Hull Breacher come out. If he takes hold, well, he's Holbreaker got the and Shoulder here don't play well together because you have to. Pick it locks them out, but yeah, right. Yeah. You either pick a lock them out or you pick them taking damage. But oh, grief, nice. Okay, it's a little early for the grief, but yeah. I like it. I was just, I'm just trying to think of like how what you want to do with this. He deck should have taken how, time twister there. I oh that well you can float twister. Not really, not probably. I don't know. You don't think well, like the not breach? With Nick. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The breach is the one that kind of yeah. like throws the spanner in the works here. Right, not with Nick. Um, I don't think with Nick. I think that grief is way. Way too early. Unless Vince is trying to do something we're not expecting. I th- when I, like Sapphire into into Bowmasters just spoke to like a value. Right. You you appropriately called wheels. I I agree with that. In my mind, there are two ways you can even. It's go... the new wheels though. It's a better wheels because it's an aggressive wheels, right? Okay, like, yeah, lot, yeah. It's not wheels combo where you're often dirtling with five Nar- pieces. Yeah, Narset it's, and Teferi's puzzle right. box. I'm gonna. Hull I have a Bowmaster. I have a Shelter. I'm gonna do like you know this deck wants a dark ritual. Yep. And where you're turn one dark ritualing out, you know stuff like yeah. uh, like Sapphire dark ritual Shelter turn one. Yep. Like, yeah. It, it's wheels are an extra thing to go for a kill. Yep. Um, Let's see. Apparently the pictures haven't fixed, so can we switch over to that draft? Darcy is yeah, not good. There we go. 
Darcy is a mediocre VRD card that underperforms. You should officially. I'm going to pull this up because I I am the firm a firm believer that you can float this so far down. Yeah, you yeah. can probably take it after the second break. You yeah. Uh, it depending on the draft, you can take this last pick. I mean, some, some, sometimes you're going to see it. if you get a blue red. Yep. If you get a blue red spells list, as you're that, that we don't see one right now. Yep. If you get a blue red spells, you have to take this a little bit earlier because yes. they're going to take it. But like. This card is extremely overrated. I have never been as an opponent when I when they play Darcy against me. I'm like, cool, well, whatever. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I've lost to it once. Yeah. in this format, it is. I would almost rather have something with haste. Anything with haste, uh, like Layla. Nobody's... Layla's the best red, best red card. I keep forgetting about. How can I forget about Outside Layla, of Ragavan, Layla, Layla when I best. enjoy Eric Clapton? Yeah. Um, and Outside of Ragavan, she's the best red card. Yeah, uh, and I think after that's like Swift Spear, Fury here, like. I think Kyle might be floating Fury, but... You can't float Fury. I, I would agree with good. that, yeah. Fury's funny. Me. Fury was, like, the underestimated one at the beginning. Like people are like, oh, Pyrokinesis isn't good. Like, Fury was the underestimated of the Elementals, and he's just, like, so ridiculous. Yeah, it's weird. There was a point in time where everybody was like, oh, Fury's bad, and then they started misplaying it because all the other Elementals have Flash. They're like, this oh, is so good! Maybe. And they're like, wait a minute, no, it doesn't have Flash. But it's also just a 3-2 and you can scam the crap out of it. Mason with a late Urza Saga. That's, is it? That's a, that's a steal. I mean, that's, that's a is good Is 5 steal. late for Urza Saga? Let's At this point, it. yeah. I, the, the stats may not show it because of early, but it's been consistently in like the 2-4 to four range the last recent couple. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So usually around 6, but I think as we look at the stats, we're going to see that a little... Um, a little closer. Okay, so there's the car, Ned James. Yeah, that's, you know. Are we just, like, we could be, like, I love it. I love the quote, what does Brown do for you? You know, the UPS quote. And, like, I don't know what we're going to do here. Are we going to lock people out? Are we going to stack some? Like, we can do a lot of things. You can yeah. lock people out and you can Neldrazium. I mean, uh, I like the oh, team. there's the the We know, we know what we're doing. Yeah, he's just Nick. like, he's not fooling around because Thoracle's another one you can kind of float. Mm-hmm. And he's not, te- he's just like, nope. He wants to take his business up front, and then... And that's... I I respect that. I I respect taking an earlier pick than you want, just to make sure that no one's gonna... Yeah, you're you're telling, like, business in front, party in back. Exactly, right. It's the the mullet, man. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) The the (laughs) turn (laughs) five Thoracle is the mullet. What? Cody walks away with both forces. Yes, Uh, that's... This is the second time Cody's, like, just taken, gotten both forces in his little streak here. Yep. Where he's just, like, fluked into both forces and been like, I don't know how I did that. I, I... Okay, I didn't think about Force of, ne- of Negation. I thought Cody would have floated it. One of the cards I'm in- anxious to see where it ends up is Delighted Halfling. We've had it drafted twice. It's been drafted somewhere in the middle rounds. If we were to I take a look at the stats. I don't think anyone's going to... Jake might, because he's got white green. Without Brandon and, pla- and the Planeswalk... And traditionally, right. the Nea Planeswalker. There. Oh, God! Cody. There it is! Oh. On the wheel! Oh. With oh. both forces, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Now you have, like, what, days? And foil. There's what a foil's not taken? Pedal. That's not a card. There's a pedal. That's good. Yep. That's good. I'll keep going down. There's oh, the ring. There. Okay. Mike. I Mike. like Mike's draft so far. It's interesting. We'll see. I mean, he's got the double, the walk and the vault. So the thing about vault that there was a, um, it was one of Mason's buddies in an online one. He had the sweetest vault deck. Is it because did it involve that card from 40k that I, I literally learned about last night, the 6 4? No, but it okay. involved, like, he just had so much, he had Oswald. To like fe- to fetch it's the birthing Cabrera, the baseball player. Uh, no, the birth the birthing pod for artifacts. Oswald Fenderbender, the gnome from. Uh... I was literally in the shower yesterday thinking like, well, here's the birthing pod for artifacts. Right. It's Oswald Fenderbender or whatever his name is. Fiddlebicker. Or... What's what's? I'm pulling this up. Yeah, I gotta uh, know what's that. It's a uh, it's it's a uh, Baldur's Gate. That's why. Yeah. Oswald. Fiddlebender. Fiddlebender. Yeah. So he had Oswald, and he had Loris to buy it back. Oswald to get it. Loris yep. to buy it back. He had uh, Emery to buy it back, and like oh, two other, that's like gross. just so much redundancy. Like, oh, you're gonna mess with my vault, I'm gonna get it back. Or yeah, I'm gonna get it. it was sick. That is really good. Yeah. So, so I, I guess, with, with both with both models, if he does not end up Zerda, I will yeah. cry. <laughs> um, because Zerda's powerful, man. I mean, it's Zerda's hundred percent. Zerda, I think, is the like regularly undrafted most powerful card in the format. Like I think it's difficult. It's banned in Legacy for a reason. Yeah, I think you it's know. difficult because you see a lot of these cards, and you're like, all right, I need it as the companion, and so you kind of get stuck in that mode, and you're like, well, I but can't just build a that, deck with the activated. It, it's not that hard because it's only permanence, so yeah. you still get control. All your spells. It's just wasn't it wasn't that hard to find. There was o- the only thing that sucked was I couldn't run Urza Saga. Yep, and I couldn't run. Um, 
Because I was trying to read a different list. Oh, so let's talk about that for a second. So Urza Saga is a saga that does not actually have, have any activated, activated abilities, abilities until the first until chapter the, resolves. Yes. You also can't run an Urborg or you can't run a Yavimaya. Because I was looking yep. at green-red Zerda yep. to get uh, Rafelos and Zerda both in the same I'm deck. I'm looking at Azor Zerda in, in the deck. Uh -huh. Because I want to play like... I want to lean into Hearthstone and Training Grounds. Okay. And the reason I want to go Azor is that I get all my artifact tutors, right. all my spells. And I'll just draw into Zerda over time, and with the other two options to reduce uh, that, I'm already putting Zerda in the deck. I can uh, staff domination somebody out of the game with Thassa's Oracle or Labman. Right. That's kind of how I want to take the deck and just play this like tempo-y, fiddle farty deck. So James is strong right now, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Now, but I don't. Here's the question uh, with James: Is that when do we get Tomb and City? No, 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 not even that. Like that's fine. James is a new enough player. To, this is first VRD, right? Yep. Um, the question for James becomes, does he understand how easily the mud deck gets blown out? If he goes straight mud. Yep. The problem yeah. with the, with straight mud in the format is it's so powerful, but there's so, so much many ways. You have a, on like, right now, an almost mono-white drafter in the seven seat that can yeah. take Kataki. He's got green, minimum. yeah. And he's got green. So he'll yep. end up white green. Yeah. And you have three blue drafters to your left that could right. end up with recall, Hercules recall, uh, essence flux. Yeah, e no. Ether, ether flux. Ether flux. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Essence Flux is the aura one. Yep, yeah, yeah, which I just learned about not too long ago as well. Yeah. Um, you have your Red Drafter to yeah. your right, which has infinite. So, or like between speaking of Red Drafter, we should see. Look at this. We should see Fury, and then that should be followed by Solitude yep. from Jake at this point. Yep. So we're looking at the images now. We also have the text. Right. Uh, so we see a vamp tutor, vamp tutor coming, coming yeah. for Mason. So, oh, uh, is that it? That's a wheel. Okay. Yeah, that's a wheel. I, I wonder if that's a... It's it just a refill my hand. It's an empty my hand, refill my hand. I'm okay with that Why wheel. not play the dragon, though? The one that's played in... And there's the solitude, solitude. Like, I, okay. like I called. What's the name that... There's. Do you know the name of the dragon that's played in Loops All Wheels and Legacy? It's a lot of mana, though, isn't it? It is. Uh, but I think there. it might have a reduction on it. I'm not 100%. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to go... I'm going to make a call here on Mason. Okay. Mason's going to go goblins. That makes sense. There are some. There are some very good black goblins... Well, you need it for the combo. Like, you need the black for the combo. List. For what? Uh, sling gang? Sling gang. Yeah, because yeah. there's no... The activated ability is just a sacrifice. It doesn't pay it. That's the difference between... That's what makes sling yeah. gang so powerful compared to siege gang. There it should is be only one damage. Yeah, Swifty's right. There should be a twister here. And if it doesn't, I'm going to kick him in the nuts later. <laughs> um, okay, narf set into... Twister. Yeah. If he doesn't... If, if Vince takes whole breacher without taking twister, or... You can't even rely on Windfall. That is just not what, good what, enough. Yeah. I mean, there's other... Echo of Eons LED is great for yep. this deck. That, that's fine. Oh, I forgot about Echo. Le because uh, neither Echo nor LED have been taken. Their, that that little package is still on the table. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a late pack. LED is not late. But, no. like, like... If you don't have LED or Lotus, then... Subtlety? Is he floating Twister? No, he's not. He's just fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> And this is... I love Vince. Vince is a heck of a... If Vince could pull his head out of his ass sometimes, he could win one of these things. Yes. Uh, that's rough. That's rough. Subtlety is such a late pick. And there's the Fury, finally. Yep. Uh, okay. Up to the sword. So, Solitude Swords. Runehorn Hellkite. That's where we are. Yeah, I don't even know what this card does. Uh, Runehorn... Oh, it's one word. Nope, I have it one word. I haven't misspelled it. Runehorn. Uh, yeah, I don't know that's going to be relevant here, but there is a um, uh, com Commander Masters is legal, which yep. doesn't affect anything except for Commander decks. So Commander Masters, yes. Commander decks. So it's an entire reprint right. set. Right. So the other, yeah, we were talking about this yesterday. Um, oh, I'm wrong. There goes my Goblin's call. He's like so. Soul tie. Soul good tie. stuff. Hey, yeah. Yep. Got to scroll down a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. Um, yeah, so the, the Rune Horn Hellkite that goes in all wheels cost six. That's off the yeah. table. I thought there was a reduction on it. There's not. Right. Uh, what was his first pick? Was it Mason? Jet? Yeah. Yes, Jet. Jet. Okay. Yeah. I've seen him first pick a Jet and then not run it. So he could end up in something else, but I don't think in this case. Uh, with I mean, Jet Soul Ring. I wonder if we'd see... Like, we're, we're not there yet. Not with Van, if he took Vampiric, he's, he's going to run the Jet. Yeah, but I mean with... Uh, sorry, we see Oko, Uro goes right. right alongside that, but we don't have Uro's enough spells to late. power it. Yeah, Uro's exactly. super late. Like, Uro, 
Like, Uro's better than... Uh, the card I've discovered I hate in this format is... Yeah, that's Light Oko. Uh, Walkers have just taken a bit of a back downturn. They went hot for a while, yep. and now they're in the back scene. But this is also contextual. Nobody else is, is playing these right. colors. Nobody right. else is showing that they want to draft Oko, so float it. This comes down to what we were talking about before, which is just understanding the draft that's going right. on around you and knowing when you can float, when you can pivot. Um... What was I saying? The uh, like I've seen him not play the Jet Thought Seas he, yep. he picked for early on, which is it's brave to not play your first pick. Yep. But sometimes you got to do it. I did it once with a Vault and a Mana Drain. It was my second, third pick, and I just ended up not playing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of open space there for him. Uh, well, 100. Uh, we're super early in the draft too, so it's not like right. this, we're fighting anybody for anything yet. We're just kind of floating along. Yeah. And interesting. I was saying him on the Fury. Uh, so my wife coming in. I was saying to the Fury earlier that that would be, you know, he should pick it there. And it is good enough that he needs to pick there. But right now, I'm not seeing a deck the Fury blows out. No, no. Like, well, uh, you, Other than maybe the white deck. Exactly. The deck next to right, right, you. The next. <laughs> but it's just a good value creature. Yeah. You, But I think Mara is a mistake here. What he needs to do is he needs to next pick um, Minx can Boo. And at green. Oh, okay. So you want to go that way instead no, of going like Mono Red's bad. Well, instead it's of going still, for like Merc Tide and like a maybe a Delver Tempo. Like there's not a lot to set the tempo out, but no, the, 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 the Delver Tempo list is good. He doesn't have the picks for that yet. Not yet. Like, like he could. I mean, uh, this is my inexperience with, yeah. with VRD on the whole. I'm thinking you could go Delver from here. I forgot. Not like, Delver, but Merc Tide. Right. Del- Delver's Delver's yes, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Dragon. Right. Delver's bad. Sorry. When I say Delver, that's what I mean because that's right, like the, the show. legacy. Right. The yeah. Show. Well, even even in modern, you still go like the, the quote unquote Delver deck is. Um, is the the sheet's deck. empty for you. It should be. I have not clicked that link. Is anyone else? So, we can get that one figured out. Yeah. Let quick. us know if anyone else is having trouble. Uh, that's an early show and tell from James. Oh, okay. But it's all artifacts. You can't. But not anymore. You can't show in the card. Yeah, but you can show in an Emrakul. Oh, that's a hundred percent. Or a Bristlebrand, or a Draxa, right, or something. Yeah, there, or an Elish Norn. Mike, so I have drafted Urza more than anybody. I have come to decide that Urza is a trap card most of the time, but I do like it in Mike's deck. If Mike Mike's deck looks okay with it, because you're, you're taking all the turns, so you can keep right. activating right. Urza. It, like, I wonder if James had Urza on his list because you have all this artifact models. No, so I thought like, more than yeah. one. T- yeah, more it was than definitely one turn. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I have drafted Urza about twelve times. Yeah, yeah, like, you're, you're, it's, it's you are a ridiculous amount. Of times. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Mason taking the vampiric uh, over the demonic does slow Nick down a little bit, right? Yep. Obviously, Nick would like both tutors. But you, um, yeah. All right, uh, Cody here. I'm going to call. He's going to take the other white initiative person. He's going to take. Uh, I honestly don't know the name of that, but I yeah, the, I the, can picture it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he's going to take the other white initiative one and. Thalia is gone, which is something I thought you might have wanted in that deck, just to no, add a little bit of a struggle. So. You're trying to... um, I'll, eventually, I think he'll take a Spell Queller. I think he's just going to rerun some of his White Blue from last time, okay. but with some better cards, because okay. he gets Ancestral. Got it. So this is, um, you're thinking Cody's just going to go like Azor good stuff, effectively. It, well, so a lot of what he had was, like, he had a... So he had, like, Spell Queller, and he had... Uh, Ali, oh, he's just going to show the fetch train. Um, he's had Elite... With the best fetch. Um, yeah. Elite Spellbinder, he had, uh, or he oh. wanted, he didn't get Invasion of Gal- Gobacan. Yeah. yeah. But then we talking about that. things that would stop people from playing that. Oh, so he it's actually, Magic got Street. it. So he, he actually wants to enter the combat step and, like, have an honest game of Magic. Well, like, he, yeah, well, he had it where, like, I, okay. take this card from your, I take this card from your hand in exile. Yep. But you can't cast that because Strain of the Magistrate. Yep. Yeah. And then we go with Esper yeah. Sentinel, which I think it's is just a solid value. I'm yep. just going to draw cards and. Yeah. You're the only one on the initiative plan unless Jake takes the other side of it, but it seems a little weird to want to split. It's it's good enough to split. It's good enough to split. Well, right now, Jake has got Thalia, Stoneforge Mystic, and Solitude, and that yeah. seems like you're just trying to stay low to the ground in that seat, and four seems well, like a big I'll ass. tell you, and Cody knows this is my tech for it. Like The thing that uh, Brandon and I figured out was that um, the best thing for initiative... One of the best cards is Phyrexian Metamorph. Oh, because you just copy? Because, not only that, but if you're splitting initiative, you can take copy initiative theirs. back. Copy theirs, got it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And otherwise, you just, you're copying it in yep. your own initiative. And okay. And, and for Metamorph's just a really good card that doesn't see In general, enough. yeah. In general, that doesn't see enough. This, like, would Spark Double be good enough, too? Uh, uh, Spark Double, no. That only copies your stuff? It only copies Walkers, and only your stuff. Okay, only your stuff, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you could take the... Like, okay, got it. Does it copy creatures, too? But yeah, it only yeah. copies your stuff. It has to, because it's it was four. part of the Garuda combo. Right, right. It, it's four. 
Not I, I thought Metamorph- Sparkle Blood 2. Metamorph's 4, but it's 3 because it's Phyrexian. It's Phyrexian Mana. So, no, Sparkle Blood's 4. It's, it's Blood 3. I played a lot of them. Okay, got it. Right. I knew it was even casting cost because right. it was part of the Garuda combo deck. Right. I thought it was 2, but that's only Phantasm. So Mason takes the whole Breacher. Yep. Which is fine. Vince, I, I don't think you... There's the shop, which is kind of expected. Like, the show-and-tell just seems super early. Like, nobody was on that plan. I don't know why you take show-and-tell there. Like, you can float show and workshop forever. Again, big, powerful card that you want to make sure you have. A newer player doesn't, you know, if you've not studied up on, like, kind of how the orders go, yeah. what's going to float. But you can see if the sneak deck is happening, too. If somebody yeah. else was, like, dedicated to the sneak deck or the right. show deck or whatever you want to call it in, in BRD, you would, you, you would see that. And nobody's showing that. Like, Nick is not going to take show and tell or sneak attack with no. Underworld Breach as a second pick. You know, no. that's like... Yeah. yeah that's that's not the direction. Yeah. Ashiok, okay. Vince loves some Ashiok. I do, too. It, Ashiok Dream Renderer, I think, is a, an underserved card, but I think that is... It's a way high Ashiok. Yeah. But it also costs three. So in most constructed formats, it's a, a little too much, a little too late. Um, it, it's good in VRD. Like, it has been v- a very, very, very solid card. I, yeah. was, I was the first person to draft it in VRD. Um, um, Vince is looking to build the archetype that in Commander we like to call Group Slug. <laughs> and without the wheel, right. or, or like, like any of the additional right. wheels, it is very difficult to kind of figure out what you're trying to do. Like, what's you take Toxrill and there's, just like there's, literally. There's no Twister yet. Uh, that's what I mean. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, when I say wheel, that's what oh, I mean. Yeah. We have Twister, Twister, Twister right here. <laughs> twister. Twister, Twister. Unfortunately, no, chat so we can see. Yeah, unfortunately, see if everybody else is chanting Twister along with yeah. us. Yeah, we can't just stick our heads out the door and yell Twister. Yeah, we yeah. would love to, but we can't. Vince, I do like Vince Jake's w- draft. Just staying honest, right down the pike. Vince wants. Oh wow! Vince weird. wants second piss a fast bond and then not take strip mine. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 Wait, I'll hold on. Right All right, can you can you top me off? Yeah, yeah. Coffee. Yes, please. So it just it does actually look like Vince's. Just hanging out in Demir. I want to say good stuff. This is just trying to slow down the game. And yeah, uh, whiskey happens later. We go from coffee to mimosas to Bud Heavy to whiskey in the end of the uh, the end of the event once people start picking prices. So we'll see that later. But Mason could definitely take the twister, and then that puts. Mason on the the Leovold kind of plan with Hall Breacher. Um, GSZ value package that opens up everything um, and allows Mason to kind of stick with this deck that we talked about earlier, which was, um, it started out with the, the Leovold package, like I mentioned, eventually turned into Elves in one draft and eventually, and in another draft it was just pure Sultai value. We have James with the Entomb, which is interesting. So that puts anything in the graveyard. Um, a lot of people just assume Entomb does creatures, and that is fine because you usually see it in the Reanimator deck, but Entomb does a lot more. Uh, Entomb works in the land shells because you can put life from the loam in your graveyard. It works in a lot of... Entomb on the show and tell with the Karn, huh? And the workshop, yeah. So we, he's going to go to tracks at some point, maybe? I There is a lot going on in James's list right now, so it's very difficult for me to kind of right. figure out. Let me move down a little bit. So... Um, we know what's coming from Nick. It is Will, Yogmoths. Okay. So Nick is way early. Pull up Yogmoths. Will it often even goes undrafted? Um, maybe wrong, but like you know the redundancy here. Um, I think he would have been fine. Yogmoths. Will. Usually around fourteen. So this is a little early. Right. Um, but also thirteen and thirty-two. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, th- that speaks to storm falling, mm-hmm. right? And just beep, plummet. You don't. It's not like storms got or received any new tech. Good tech after breach right but you have like all the tenants of storm right. you just need to draft the middling stuff and once you have all this though you can pick any way you want to go you can finish people off any way you want aside yeah. from crow storm because that is not legal. <laughs> you can you can take out your 10 drills and just show people some drills grape shot is usually a long shot unless you have remand or reprieve to do some goofiness sending it back uh, brain freeze is brain generally freeze. the optimal yeah. with breach, right. um, but because everything is open and out here in front of you, the the world is your oyster, and I like right. I'm excited to just take a back seat to Nick in this. We did see Kyle take Pyroblast into Reb, yeah. which is I saw it. Some of the red deck yeah. can do. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think like so. Our interesting notes here: we have nothing red green yet, so we have a currently completely open. Um, 
Welcome to Main Skin Boo. Yeah. Also, Moloch. That's something I thought. That's is that how you... Moloch's been drafted a couple times. Yeah. Uh, it super underperformed for me. It did well for Eric, uh, but it's a late, late pick. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it did well for Eric. It's just something that I think goes in that deck because it's a little bit of removal. Mm -hmm. You know, it just comes in and punches something in the, the noggin um... and continues on. Mark did want to point out that there's no Mox Diamond yet. Right. There's also no Comet. Yeah, yeah. I I have a love hate relationship with Comet. That's so good. Oh, it absolutely is. I got ranched by it in that release. Like in three games, oh, my God. opponent cast it twice. Um, Ponder Lutre. Okay. Yeah, no Mox Diamond is really weird. No Twister. Nope, not yet. It's a weird float on Twister. Mason uh, did pick up Green Sun Zenith, which is kind of leaning into that more, like, I'm going to play Soul Tie. We right. might see a Leobold kind of thing. You got Hull Breacher in front of you. We could see, um, uh, what's the the black one that everybody hates? Uh, Agent. I can't Agent. Uh, opposition. opposition Agent. Yeah, Opposition Agent is pretty subpar, honestly. I would like, think so, because it, it works so. great in a control -y shell with a lot of counter spells, yep. where you're holding up mana anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, it's it's a flash creature, so yeah. in my mind it just kind of plays well. But I I do appreciate the fact I, that search. No, is I like, picked it like third or fourth pick the first draft it was available in. Yeah, thinking it was gonna be amazing. Yeah, and then it was just not. I, it, it plays worse than I think Bowmaster yeah. plays because in my mind it had it would hold suffer three, from the same hold issue. Three is harder to hold up to. Yeah, but in my mind it's because all the cantrips are just kind of spread out. Where in, all the fetches are spread out. Yeah, exactly. Right. But in reality, Bowmasters offers a little bit oh, more in two bodies. Mason with a nice tenth picture at nine. Yeah, and but no, Fast Bomb's still out there. Yep. Uh, and we have Reanimate coming from James. So James is just taking a lot. Now we're on a Reanimator package. Right, we got a Swiss Spear here. We got to fix it. Yeah, Kyle's just going to go mono red. Yeah, and I think... I mean... I don't like There's it. still the opportunity for an is it tempo could. style deck, but there's no reason to take Swiss Spear. Nobody else is showing right. that they want to yeah. be no, no one this deck. There. Yeah. But in all honesty, like... I Just start taking fetches from people. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you're... You could take some of your other... Bolt is still available, right. which can go in no, a number of... Did, did you take Bolt? Third pick Bolt. Third pick Bolt, yeah, okay. There's still some other odds and ends in regards to the red spells that are available to you, so you could take you could prioritize them over other people. And, and there goes the Tomb. I was like, Tomb's yep. still out there right now. Yeah, so is City. And so is Crystal Vein. City goes but... a little later just because of the downside, but Tomb, yep. Tomb's been up there. Tomb's been going like second through fourth sometimes lately. Like Yeah, I would assume you pair it with uh, the Initiative. Like the Karn deck. deck oh, yeah, yeah. The, deck. But, which is what I asked about before, but then yeah. James seemed to pivot to something that I don't quite understand yeah. yet. Um, there is an issue with the image sheet where uh, that's he, he he messed up the thing. Like um, we might have to have. Uh, so sometimes when you cut and paste, the sheet will cut off the underlying mechanics. Oh, and that's okay. why I have to white cell. Got it. Yeah. Um, so someone's got to fix. Yeah. That. The the text version is correct. Monastery Swiss was just a uh, yeah. was just floated down. James's pick has also disappeared and it is coming back, but it is reanimate. Yeah. Yeah. They fixed um, it. Yep. Yeah, there was an issue where, like, when you cut and paste, that it um, will strip out the language that runs, like, the yep. duplicates and things like that. Yeah, so Mike took Channel, by the way. We we kind of missed that one after Git Probe, trying to figure out what James is doing with Reanimate in right. his all artifact mono deck. Right. Um, so Mike has Time Walk, Time Vault, Tinker, Drain, Channel, and then a little bit of Soup. Yeah. So That's interesting stuff, though. Yeah, Mike, it's definitely still wide open. Um, the channel, you, you have Time Walk and Time Vault. I line of the Void. There's the helm. Okay. I was wondering, if you take Leyline yeah. that high, you got to take helm next. I think Vince is just on Demir good stuff. Yeah. He's but, my soul. Yeah, but I think Mike might be fighting James now for some high-end colorless yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 for uh, sure. So, like I was saying, you have Time Walk, Time Vault, Tinker, right? So, what are you going to do? You're going to... Channel out Blightsteel, channel out Emrakul, channel out uh, Ulamog, the Ceaseless Jungerer. Uh, well, you you could also have some interesting value, like um, you can channel out um, Portal Phyrexia. Um, yep. Now, that one's nice, but I don't. is it good if your opponent isn't really playing creatures? I mean, your opponent's not playing creatures, but I mean, right now, these decks look like they're going to be a decent amount of creatures. And it also reanimates every turn. Yes. So it depends. It's, it's draft dependent, but yeah, like, you, we can see that floated. Uh, traditionally, we've seen it go. I've only got a couple. Like, it, yeah, it's seven possible drafts have been picked four times, right. and it's been floated down. And two of those have been me. <laughs> All right. Well, now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Jake's just still sticking around, sticking with this plan. Yeah. Jake uh, just sticking with the the white weenie deck that yeah. you would draft in Vintage Cube, and it. If Jake stays the course, this 
could do well. Um, yeah, it's it's a solid list. Uh, you know, the Stone Forge right now is the strongest. Oh, there's Min's gonna do for Mason. Okay. Yeah. Mace, Mason's gonna Mason's steal it. Mason's willing to audible. He's willing to. Oh, it's also willing to go some four color craziness. Yeah, I think Minsk and Boo is something. That it's just you too can good. Like, it's just too good not. to... Yeah, there's also something I want to bring up because either people miss it or I'm wrong, and I'm willing to be wrong here. Okay, so when you go to throw something, sacrifice mm-hmm. a creature. When it doesn't you do, 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 if the sacrifice creature was a hamster, you draw X cards. I thought you had to throw a creature. Okay, it's the plus. The plus requires a creature with trample or haste. Right. I thought the minus required a no. creature. Okay. No. But it does allow so you to... So there's the attraction from James. Yep. But it does allow you to actually just kind of pump up another creature that you you have with trample right. or haste. Right. So it is bound. Okay, so James is now kind of swapping over to the Atraxa plan. I mean, I guess he's, if he's just planning on entombing it, yeah. then... Maybe picks three through three through five are just kind of not happening anymore. I doubt it. That's a lot of power there, but you never know. It is, but like, you don't. No, everything has so many colors now. Right, right. Or, well, you, you're just not planning on a casting tracks. He's he's planning on a bin in it. Yeah, but like how to like grim monolith and basalt monolith. Like right. they don't really help that plan. That's kind of like what I'm talking about. Like right. Karn the Great Creator is a good card in and of itself, but right. you don't need the two monoliths to power out Karn. The I workshop mean, is a value land. You can use right. that for whatever. I'm not too worried about yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. There's the brain. Uh, so noble Hayek from Mike. Okay. That's solid. Just going to sl- start shoring up some man. Yeah. You we get still, it. You know, what's interesting, though... Uh, oh, so here's the balance to Fairy's Protection plan. Okay, so this is an interesting one. So... So the balance to Fairy's Protection, of course, is you... You disappear from the game. You cast balance. Everyone... in response, you disappear from the game. Everybody out and of the universe. you have zero lands. Yes. Now, you have zero lands, and they have to sack all the Everything. Yep. Yeah. So... Because you have disappeared from the game. And there's the LED from Nick. Okay. It's a very quick and easy combo to execute. Great. So now, here's the fun thing. We have probably two of the most powerful spells that give a player protection. Right. Or can't take damage. And Teferi's protection from Cody. Right. And the One Ring Mm -hmm. from Mike. Mike. Now, Kyle has the opportunity... To draft two different red spells. Yeah. Let's say damage cannot be prevented this turn. To punch through to Fairy's right. protection as just a responsive, like, I gotta stay alive. Right. And the one ring fog. Right. In uh, Stomp on Bone Crusher Giant. And. There's the Immortal. Not Searing Pain. Um, Which is Skull Crack. Right. Skull Crack. Right. So we, I'm hoping we or see that from. The, the best one's actually in green. Questing beast. <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> which is now apparently all over the Pro Tour because of the One Ring. Right? Okay, nice. Yeah. So without... So Mason just like, you know what, which is weird because we haven't really seen a super run on fetches yet. Mm-mm. Mason's just like, colors? What are Who colors? Who needs colors? <laughs> I don't... I... I've got Mox Jet. That's all I need to know. He, Mason takes Dothy Voidwalker with Helm picked up by Vince. There's but no... But Dothy is just good. It is. It's yeah, a great it's value card. We're not looking to combo it. There's Mother of Runes. Figure Destiny from Kyle. Yeah, he already had Mom. Now he's got Giver. Yep. Figure's almost undrafted. So I would yeah, assume so, is. yeah. I've thought about drafting it. Like, I think it's solid. I think it's playable. Um, there are a bunch of Figure of Destiny-style cards. Yeah. That, and they all pretty much go... They don't. Yeah. You know. No, I was going to say undrafted right. was the next word, yeah. Two yeah. of 32 drafts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's playable, but yeah. it's not... Um, it's nothing to write home about. Yeah, no. Swifty, all the colors. Oh, Mason. Yeah. Just, you know, I, Mason will end up with a Dryad uh, and maybe like a Ren and Realm Breaker that can help with the colors. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ren, Rel, Ren and Realm Breaker does so much more than Chromatic, Chromatic Lantern will ever do. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, Dryad and Ren are your, uh, going to be the yeah. ones that you want there. The Dryad of the Elysian Grove, for those yeah. who are curious. Um, I, now I'm very curious to see where Mike is going to end up. Because we have Urza, we have some mana. It's gonna be a blue green t- triangle bolt there. I mean, yeah, yeah, like the it's just the channel that kind of is like interesting because it's you out. can't use a channel mana for Urza activations, and your Emrakul was just. Working. I thought you, it was only for spells. I thought it was bound to that. I I did have to check. Sure. Okay. So Tasha's is good. It's, now a, it's early, but it's good. Now we're kind of milling. Okay. Nope. Okay, you can use the mana for anything. Okay, yeah. so you can spend it. You can 
You can spend Urza a bunch with Channel. Okay. I weep if there is no time for this right now. I, I do think Vince is just sticking with like Demir good stuff. Um, yeah, but you still need to you still need to pay off for your your pick two and three Bowmaster and Sheldred, right? Like, other yes. than I'm gonna try to stop the ancestral, right? Like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. And like, you have to fuel your good stuff. You fuel your good stuff by playing out your hand. One, and time two. Okay, right. so you have Bowmaster, Sheldred, Grief, and Subtlety. As of right now, those are and like those are your three clearest ways to right. win the game. Just entering combat and being a fair deck. Yeah. Relying on Leyline and Helm right. is kind yeah, of a wing and a prayer. It's two-piece combo. I mean, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, why not bet? money. Exactly. It t takes up two slots, but it's not something right. I would just sit there... Dark Red away from Nick. That's nice, yeah. though. Like, the Dark Red's good here. That's actually the card I was thinking of. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Like, you only have those three. What are yeah. you going to do next, right? I like that. I like the Dark Red pick, especially because yep. it doesn't give it to Nick. Yeah. And it, it helps just... And it helps you. It helps you get yeah. sheltered out quick. Yep. And so I'm just curious, like where Vince is going to end up. There's a lot of opportunity for us. Yeah. Um, I don't. Maybe Nick is just staking his claim on Twister and waiting for somebody else to pull a trigger. Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, Twister. Do it. All right, what do we have? So we've had Prismatic Vista, Polluted Delta. I think that's it. That's it. So yeah, that's injury. No, no one bought into the the choo choo train yet. Nope, we have I don't think we've seen a single duel either. Nope, not a duel. Okay, yet. there's Palace Jailer. Jake is actually just staying the course yeah. with. The Vintage Cube. Jailer's good. Yep. Underdrafted. Uh, very, very solid. Rift Bolt has a bit of utility over Lava Spike, but this is like... This is why the Red Dex is so miserable. This I'm is not... not even fun to watch. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> as a commentator, I just like... I, I, I could tell you the ins and the outs of like the Tier 2 and 3 spells of, the yeah. bur of like Modern Burn. Yeah. Like, but yeah. I don't yeah. want to for exactly that reason. Man, I would rather have seen Kyle take Pyrostatic Pillar here and then on the wheel take Eidolon and just say, well, okay, I, yeah, I, cast that, one and two mana spells like there. Picks. Those yeah. are far better picks. And then... Because uh, if the red deck is there, I think the better red deck is the Punisher deck. Yeah. Oh, there's there's Mox Diamond for yeah. Mason. Okay, I I thought Mason might pull the trigger on, not Crucible, but um, Ramming Up Excavator at some point. Yeah, I mean, he's got the strip, strip mine. mine. He's got the Mox yeah. Diamond. So I wouldn't just be surprised to see a red... He's, he's already in Multicolor Madness. Um, if, oh. if Kyle pulls out this beauty, Sulfuric Vortex, yeah. I'll give it to him. I'll, I I'll applaud the draft. I wouldn't be shocked to see Mason say, I'm not going to do the Oko, yeah. and I'm going to end up in a Jund shell mm. at this point. With the Minskin Boo. Yeah, like the Oko and Breacher are just I'm taking those away from people, Yep, and no one else is taking these other cards. But like looking at the Mox Dime and the Strip Mine, like I wouldn't be surprised to see him say, you know, four colors is going to be a lot. I'm not going to do the Oko and the whole Breacher. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I got them out of out of play, and I'm going to end up in a Jundi shell. Oh, Meddling Mage himself shows up. Chris Pakula in chat. Hey, welcome, Chris. Oh uh, yeah, just our regular regular VRD. Regular VRD. No no bands, just aside from the standard. Yeah. This... Okay, so James is now. That's a super. Like, Gorios doesn't really pop up again. It's gonna it's good with the stuff. So he's uh, yeah. Again, I... I think we see that that. That first first timer, you know, focus of these are things that, now brazen borrower. That's a good borrower there. Borrowers weird. Borrowers so good. Sometimes it goes in like the fifth sixth range. Yeah. And other times it gets really forgotten. Okay. Like, let's let's take a look. Um, I I am familiar with borrower, but mainly from the the side of like I play one, and if I've got a cast it, it's probably the end of days for somebody. Right. Usually around 14. Okay, yeah. so we're right, right, so in right, space. right on space. But there are signs where, as I said, you see a 27 out of 29. Yeah. I've gotten it in like the 30s a couple times. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just some reason it gets forgotten, but it's, it's just such a strong card. It's, it's, I, people might lump it in with the tempo plays. You're yeah. like, oh, if I'm not going to try and tempo people out, I don't, I don't need to buy a little bit of time. That's the first dueling. Solid then. containment priest. Yeah. So the thing about containment priest in his deck is it could be a sideboard card, but with um, other. With James on the reanimation plan and Mason showing Green Sun Zenith. Yeah. You have some opportunity in front of you to ranch somebody with a containment priest right. in the main. Well, yeah, and he, he, there are other things, that, other combos he might go that might end up being main. But it could just be just a very, very solid sideboard card. And it is one of the best sideboard cards. Yeah. Like, it's a 2-1 beater. And, you know, it flashes in if you need to steal the it's just so good. Or it's just so good at shutting down some decks. Yeah, 100%. The... So just a, a nice value pick overall. It forwards the plan. Uh, um, so we had a C go. It's not showing up on Nick. For, there it is. There it is. Now we now we see the run on duels. Yeah, but still not as much of a run on fetches. Uh, nope, just still... a duel. I guess people are just kind of. I mean, look, if nobody else really commits. Duels before the fetches is interesting. Normally yeah. the fetches are. Uh... Yep. 
So the other, the other thing I was curious about coming into this is if anybody would try and pull off like the three card Samwise Gamgee combo. It was on one of Cody's lists. Okay. He had a he had a list because you can. Um, Let's see if I can find that one here. Uh, uh, Sam Cat, right? Yep. Uh, it was on one of Cody's possible lists. I know uh, because you can get it with Hulk. Ah, okay. So you can viscerous ear bubble Hulk basically. Yeah, you can just yep. get it with Hulk, Flash yep. Hulk, and it's just... also like it's the same thing as the birthing pod right. combo, right? You're you're just looking to effectively birthing pod somebody out of the game um, yeah. with with Samwise. This time it just uses the more familiar set of cards that you would see inside the cat oven combo from right. Standard, Pioneer, and now Modern. Archon, um, one of the best reanimator targets. Ha- half a cruel ultimatum. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, an unpleasant ultimatum. Yeah, it is a. It's also a good card to cast. The games go along. Like yeah. you don't always have to worry about sneaking it. You can't Goryeo's Vengeance because it's not legendary, so that one's a little bit of a, a right, rub. No war boss. Now there we go. There's red okay. cards. Now yeah. still this, the Layla, which I don't know with Kyle. I mean, Kyle's been logistics enough. He's yeah. seen Layla printed. Like, okay. He, he's pulled it and put it in deck, so I know he knows the card exists. Yeah. My question was going to be like. If you're not familiar with VRD or Vintage Cube enough, have you seen right. Layla be played? But he's and been, so he's been be... our logistics guy, so yeah. he, he knows the card exists. Yeah, right. exactly. He's pulled it, he's printed it, like right. you said. All right, where there is Rip. Rest in Peace, yeah. just yeah. another value play. Especially with James out there. Yeah, right. the, helm, like, the helm combo is gone, so now you're just looking yeah. at it as a sideboard option. And, all right, so big big player still out. Uh, Comet, which I imagine might go undrafted, because I don't see anyone really in red-white, unless Kyle audibles. Or I mean, Mason's uh, got... Maybe, Mason could. Mason ends up in five car shenanigans. Yeah. You never know. Um, uh, the thing with Walkers is Mason could do a Brandon and take uh, Oath of Nyssa and just be like, I don't care about my Walker mana. I'll, I'll, I'll figure Nyssa. it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'll I'll you also have delight, like, we, I talked about Delighted Halfling earlier. Yeah. So you can float that down. It like, makes five Mason cards. took Delighted and a recent uh, MRD, too. Yeah. So, you know, it's well on you're, you're looking at Cody, who took back to back forces. Right. You got. Cody got both forces on the wheel. If you're Mason and you want to pivot to Planeswalker shenanigans, Oath of Nyssa and Delighted Halfling are probably some of the best cards that you can take to ensure that you're able to cast your Planeswalker. Yeah. And against Cody with the Delighted Halfling, make sure they do not get countered. Yeah. Because uh, they are very difficult to get back from the graveyard. Vince should take a tackle here. Uh, Vince did not. Vince is taking Painter Servant, whatever it shows up. So he's going to take a Painter combo. He'll grab the stone. He'll, he's just going to do both on the wheel. And yeah. That's the power of the wheel sometimes, and that's fine. Yeah. Again... Without the tutors, yep, and there's grindstone right after. Yeah. Without the tutors, I don't love playing two card money. He doesn't have the extra card draws, um, but you know it will steal you a lot of games. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm looking at the list that we are basically just mono. You have Narset, which is like solidly your only blue Digger, card. Right. So you're basically in mono black, right? You took Sapphire and pick yeah. one subtlety. Boom, masters. Okay, yeah. So you can pick. You can pitch Narset to subtlety. Yeah. <laughs> That's the play. Um, all right. There's still some options available to you, though. So Prismatic is not good for Jake here because he's mono white so far. Though he does have a green. Well, Prismatic have... Vista was taken. No, Prismatic or ending. Uh, ending. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you you, uh, you can't. March, I think, should be Jake's pick here. Mar- March. March of Other World Delight. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, it's the. I mean, he's got the swords. He's got the yeah. solitude. Oh, recruiter oh, of the guard. That's a fine pick, though. That's good. Yeah. So I'll bring March up, um, which. Is it March of... Oh, yeah. So this is one of those picks that just got, like, if you play older formats, immediately outclassed by Prismatic Vista and Modern Horizons 2 well, and then Leyline Binding. Vista just depends on... In this format, Vista is going to heavily depend on how many colors you're running. Right? Yeah, what was I say? Like, so you look at this, you're like, oh, this, this is, like, the next coming, a path to exile in these older right. formats. It's amazing, blah, blah, blah. And then you immediately pivot away from this because right. they printed better cards for those formats. But right. in particular here, when you can just play the mono white deck... I think Vista is often it. better. Yeah. But... Or prismatic ending, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and it's often better, but yes. like otherworldly line, uh, if you... It's fantastic when you're in right. the monocolor deck. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Like, the, the reason I wanted to bring it up is because, like I said... Right. And you have a death and taxes deck in modern. It's not that great, so people don't have a lot of experience seeing March. This right. card didn't True. really see standard play. This is just kind of that, that refresher. Yeah. Yep, we I are seeing more from the Black March recently. I think it was the one. It's been not really drafted, but it's a solid removal. I play the blue one in Hinata in Commander yeah. because it's X. X straight card. X is often zero. Somewhere Brandon's pouring Wait, one out. Okay. The best green card in the format. Hundred percent. Okay, that's interesting for Mike to take. You can channel into it, so you can power it up you real quick. You can channel it. You can. Turn, yeah. You can channel it. That's so ridiculous. I, I didn't mention it because it just kind of slipped my mind. It's so fair. It just doesn't like. It's so fair, resonate. but it just like when you chant when you get it up to quick, it yep. just 
It it literally says answer me or die. Yep. I was. <laughs> uh, the reason I, didn't, I just didn't click was because I thought Mason just had that one earmarked and would have taken yeah. it by now, especially with Green Sun Zenith. So there, there, Hexdrinker is one of those things. It's got believers, and yep. then it's got it got heretics. Okay. And then like there are those of us that swear by the mm-hmm. card, and then there are others that are just like, no, it's just not good. Yeah. No. It, yeah. I. If you're not going to try and combo somebody out quickly, the idea of presenting the threat that says yeah. no you, yeah, uh, you know, I I love I love that ability. It's one of the reasons why I like pivoting the sneaky show and, and legacy is good for me. I okay is out there. Unmask or... targets yourself. Okay. So we're looking okay. at we're looking at the bottom end of reanimator and like that is actually what seals the deal. I think okay. we are moving now moving away from some of our like muddy stuff. So kind yeah. of a mud reanimator, or maybe we're just kind of actually going to do a mud reanimator. Yeah, I I, but the. I'm pretty sure we will see the first three picks, maybe even four going down to... Yeah, I mean, the workshop. That's an early workshop. And then, oh, there's the other white, yeah, white season engineer. There's that's the, the one. Initiative. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about, like, going back to Vince, though. Vince still has in front of him the ability to take Goblin Welder and Goblin Engineer. So you mentioned there, Vince is out of tutors. There's not mm-hmm. a lot left if you don't go red. Right. If you go red, you have options in front of you, and you are you are basically base black, so you also get Chaos Defiler. So this is something I talked to to Mark about last night when we were looking at cards to print, and we were right. going through and making sure I asked specifically, do you have Chaos Defiler? Because it's been talked a lot, but no one's pulled the trigger. Yep, but like, and one of the things that you can do that is technically incorrect in VRD is to port over a strategy from a constructed format. Right. But Painter's combo is kind of wide. It, there's a large breadth in elements in front of you, so you can port that over. That's and a lot of blue for Mike. I don't is. like that cryptic. That cryptic can hold forever. I mean, cryptic's amazing in the mono blue deck. That's a lot of blue for Mike. You have drop. That's all I. Uh, and noble. Yeah, that's um, a lot of blue. I mean, he's already got Urza, so he's going to end up with more blue, and that's yeah. fine. But it still just seems like like counter spells out there. Like he has spell pierce, but yeah, he's got spell pierce manager. I mean, he's going to be a heavy, heavy blue commander. Yeah, I but. Mean, the breath of one drops in the painter's deck in Legacy allows you to basically port over the majority of the good pieces. Okay. So it is... I don't think Vince is going to do that, though. But that, that, that's the only reason I bring up Chaos the Father. It's a one of in the deck. Right. It makes sense. It's an artifact. You can weld it back in. There are shenanigans to be yeah. played, but you have to know how to pivot into red at some point away from, like, your blue picks. Right. I think you just... I mean, and red's really open here. Well, it's... especially that side of red. Yeah. There's really no artifact destruction out yet. I wouldn't expect it until you start making picks like this, as Vince. Right. And now you're going to say, I will kill you with Painter, Painter Grindstone. I have everything I need to do that. So adapt or die. And I think that's fine. Frantic Search from Nick. Like, just staying in his lane. I wonder... There's no way we see a High Tide. No. Tide's... I think it, muddy, I think it muddies the, the Brain Freeze combo does, a little bit. It, um, it is an it, optional... It's win more. Yeah, exactly. Or it becomes an optional package if you want to do something goofy. You, with, like... See, Trash, I don't know. Cryptics, it's so good when it's good, but at that at the three mint blue, it's just inconsistent. She says that because of her name. Oh, okay. I thought that was, I thought her, that was Trash Boat. Sorry. No, no, no. Like, that, that, is, okay. that is... No, I love Cryptic as a spell. Yeah, it's, that is, it's that's like... my, my darling wife who plays Roller Derby. Her derby <laughs> name is Cryptic Kablam, and her number is technically CMC4. <laughs> nice, nice. Ask that's... her if she's ever casted one or what that spell does without reading it. <laughs> Hey, it's because she only has the text list from the uh, player awards. You're not wrong, but because it's mine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, so, Mason, so Mason's... So the thing about Mason, Mason's very good at what he does, and he's like, all right, this is a read I could see Mason making. Earlier on, he's looking. He's seeing that this land drum's not happening. Yep. No one's running hard. He's like, I can go. I mean, I end up going four colors because the land drum's not happening, and I'm going to rattle off Mox Diamond three fetches. Yep, like and I'm, just like do no it. one's even playing this yep. game, and I'm going to do crazy stuff. Yep. I like James Persist. Yeah, Persist oh, is good. Really good. Uh, you don't have grief, so you can't do like scammy shenanigans. We right. haven't seen Fable yet, but Fable does copy Archon and some other odds and ends, so we could see the rest of that like the constructed package kind of come together as a value Fable, engine. A card that Kyle should have taken. Fable also be good for well, Nick. Kyle has now pivoted away from like the tier two, tier three burn spells, and we're now seeing some very high impact cards with Legion War Boss, Goblin Rabble no, Master, are... and now Beaumont Courier. Yeah, but Layla's still better. <laughs> I, I'm not in disagreement, but if nobody's in the deck, we could just see right. Layla yeah. be floated. That's true. Uh, or Mason could grab it. Yeah. I think what, like, if I'm Kyle and I'm in that seat and I see Jake not taking a second color, mm-hmm. my concern is that Jake might step into. Red for Legion of War Boss and Goblin Rabble Master right. because those are very good cards in now a Boros aggressive deck. Um, because Jake hasn't shown a second color, Jake has the ability to flex like 
into anything at this point, even yeah. green. Yeah, and he's got the he's got the, he has emeralds. So the green is the easiest, obviously. Yeah. But like, at this point, I mean, it, I'm Jake at this point. I'm actually flexing into the red. Um, I would think so too. For that, the comet. It's, yeah, I, I, there there's also some very good options in red too in regards to the spells that are still open and available to you. Yeah. I like that better than going blue and trying to be like ticky tacky with like Geist of Saint Draft and like Vapor yeah. Action Adigans yeah. and that I mean, kind of green thing. Green just doesn't seem to do too much for them. No, not right now. You would have like you have a graveyard deck, two graveyard or two graveyard decks in front of you in Nick and James, so like Dryad Militant is endurance. okay. Yeah. And endurance. I mean he's got rip. I mean he's got Yeah. It just shore, it shores up a oh, little bit if you like the green. Now I do like this pick from Vince. They're a little early. Back to back crabs. The, the, the crabs. Vince, yeah. Vince but got crabs. Again, he let the fetch run go by him for yep. some stuff they should do. Like but the crabs are uh, So we're just looking to put cards in the graveyard of Vince. We just want to put our opponent's deck in the graveyard. Oh, there's Layla. Finally. There's Layla. Okay. Yeah. Thank thank Christ. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh think think the blade reforged. Uh Red Wing yep. there is not good. Yep. So if he points out that Jake did take uh, Ancient Tomb, so there is the opportunity to take Eldrazi as well. Yes, you could see Thought, not, uh, Thought not Seer come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Displacer seems uh, a little too far fetched. There's not a lot you're doing. Uh, you have one piece of equipment, so you're not really looking to take. You lost containment priest for the combo. Yeah. Um, so, so no dryad taxes, but uh, displays are actually like resetting like Stoneforge. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like you have a little bit a of few. Like, um, that ticky tacky play in front of you. Yeah, I thought the, resetting palace jailer is hot. Yes. Because Pal don't forget, Palace Jailer, you don't, they don't get the creatures back until they take Monarch. Yep. So, like, so. so there, there is that. I thought we might have seen Jake takes uh, Season Dungeon Era cost four. You have the Tomb, so it makes it a turn three play. Um, right. We haven't seen Crow Mox. We've just seen Mox Diamond, which is traditionally part of this. Now, one of the cards I have on my list that we mentioned why like, Jake going into Boros is for Fourth Ear Lingus. Yeah, so this card um, this is was a hum brought up by one of the it's online people. To me. No, the card's amazing. I don't know if we have it. It's not been drafted yet. Um, you'll have to type the whole thing in because it won't come up. Um, Ask me how to spell it. I'm going to tell you no. Um, it's right. yeah. It's like fourth of Cunnilingus. Is now this is a card from the Lord of the Rings Commander set, which is fantastic, and I. I was sworn to secrecy on this card, but you brought it up, so now I can say it. But so, so someone brought this card up to me from online. Yeah, it's, there it is. Uh, fourth. I just want to bring e it up so everybody can see it. E O. Oh, E O R. L I N G A S. Exclamation point. Because they like to make it. There it is. Yeah, no, like that would be a beautiful thing to go into white red for that card. Actually, so I, I talked about the draft I recently drafted Moloch in. I said it under yep. the I should have drafted that card. Yeah, <laughs> in that Moloch yeah. spot. Yeah, you, you Minsk and Boo in this, and that's it. You're set. Yeah. Oh, there's, uh, there's Gobicon. The yeah, we have Fluster Storm from Nick. Another good one mana counter spell with spell up yours taken. So yeah. you you look for what you got. So the fourth Eerlingus is open for both Kyle and Jake right now, yeah. and both of them have the ability to flex into Boros, and I don't think that is a bad decision for either of them. This card is. Extremely powerful. It does a number of great things. When you read the reading the card, almost sort of kind of explains the card, but there's some hidden power here when you recognize that you don't actually have to pay anything into X. Are we doing interviews or not? Yeah, we can do an interview. Right. Um, Who do we want for an interview, chat? Yeah, if we, uh, Mark, if we have the ability to put up a poll, that'd be fantastic. I want to talk about Fourth Year Lingus. So, okay. Fourth Year Lingus, X. Red, white, you create X2-2 two, two red human knight creature tokens with trample and haste. Awesome. So there's some value up front starting with three mana onward. Now, uh, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to one or more players, this turn you become the monarch. So this card can also bring in just, the monarchy. Yeah, right? for two minutes. No, no guys, I'm just going to take yeah. the monarch. Yep. And, uh, that's, that's part of the hidden power. You don't actually have to pay into X. Uh, X. It could be zero, and then you just attack with the creatures that you have on turn two. Like, this is a, a, a legacy play, right? Delver right. on one, Darcy on one, this on two. Activate the monarchy. Right. Take it. Now, the hidden power here is that if you don't want the monarchy, if you don't think you I've can defend it... I've been told Close that down. Okay. Okay. All right. Come on in. All right. All right. We'll get back to that card after the interview. Aw, oh, snaps. It's actual oh, pictures okay. of cards. Yeah. All right. You do that. I'm going to walk. All right, you got you. Yeah, come over towards me. We got to get you in here. Seems like fine. So how are things going? 
Uh, things are going pretty well. Um, I'm pretty much unopposed in what I want to do. Okay. Which is fun. All right. Uh, and what do you want to be doing? Let's tell the viewers so, out here. So, uh, it's just a straight mono red aggro burn deck. Okay. Like, the goal is to not let you do what you want to do. All right. The goal is for you to not have fun and me to have fun while you're not having fun. All right. That is perfect. Okay. So, you know, we're just talking to the viewers out here. So, if you, yep. you can go in depth. Like, uh, so... Th there's definitely some spice coming up. Um, have some options for more. going going the long run. Yep. Um, few few cards that uh to look forward to. Okay. Um, one is a mono red board wipe. Have fun with figuring that one out. There's not that many of them. Um, okay. And I do mean full board wipe, not damage based. Are you gonna play a blood rate or something? No, I'm not that mean. All right. All right. You said full uh, board wipe, so to me, that is the that's board. That's fair. That's fair. I just mean destroy all creatures. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We, 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 um, we, we will wait. Uh, we also have my my answer to Patless Jeweler of getting myself the Monarch so I can still draw cards. Okay. Well, one of the things we were, we were talking about early on is the initiative and the power, and that is Caves of Chaos Adventure on yes. your radar. It is on my radar. Um, that is on the list. Mm -hmm. Um... My Monarch card will be enchantment base. Okay. Um, for sustain versus just eh, get a creature out there. There's plenty of them for it, but I'm gonna go for Quartz of Ire. Uh, wait. It from the Quartz cycle from. Uh, I think it was. Was it Commander Legends? One of the Commander I know it was sets, right? Commander Legends. Right. That, yeah, that's the one that gives you the, like um, it does a thing in your upkeep. Up, if you have the Monarch, yeah, he does it something does, cooler. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, two damage and upkeep, or seven if I'm seven. Matter. Okay. Okay. I thought it was five. Yep. Okay. Yep. Makes Five sense. more. All right, fair enough. Um, so, how do you feel about the drafters around you? You said you're unopposed, so obviously you can float things differently. Like yeah, you feel like, like nobody's really gonna jump into your lane. Yeah, like uh, that lately I was late as all get out, which Mark of course pointed out out there. He's like, yeah. he saw me pick that. He's like, I, you, how? You are killing Steven. I will say, <laughs> like we were looking at, at the like we were. We were looking at the picks, and we were joking around. We were saying, like, when you got to Rift Bolt, I was like, I can tell you all the benefits of picking the Tier 2 and Tier 3 burn spells in Modern, but as we watched the draft, we saw things change into Legion War Boss and Gobble Ra yep, Rabble, yep. It, Rabble Masters, and then Bomac Hurts. Like, okay, yeah, you, are getting, the... yep, you are getting to the point now where you realize you are unopposed. Yeah, and, you... and I'm just picking the things that are on my list. Yep. Like, it's just like, okay, like... I, I grabbed the things that I thought could be opposed, like Red Elemental Blast, Pyro Blast, I like those. We thought those were really good, just sneaking them out. Because, also, yeah. because you have Blue Drafter, Blue Drafter, Blue Drafter, Blue mm -hmm. Drafter, Gap, Gap, Blue Drafter, right? Like, yeah, super so, powerful. One, very powerful, because there are a lot of Blue Drafters. Two, it's like, okay, what cards that I, do I have on my list that people might actually want, even though it's pretty solid, that like I'm going to get the Mono Red Aggro Burn style deck? Yep. What cards do I need to take that someone else might take in the future? So it's yep. like, I'm just going to take these now. Okay, yeah. no, Because, like, yeah. other people aren't going to take, like, no one's going to take that Bone Mac Carrier. Like, by the time I was solidified in Mono Red, no one was going to take Lavia. Yep. Like. We we thought there was opportunity, and there might still be for Jake to move out of Mono White into two yeah. colors, which is pretty prevalent when you have that deck. Yeah. I, I definitely see that, but I think at this point, like, He's going to be hard pressed to do so just with the things that I've already taken. Yep. Um, especially because like I've been focusing more on the creatures so far, and yes. he's got the nice tax effects, but that's going to tax him too. Yeah, you're getting your feet so, underneath you with your so bases. exactly, and so he he'd have to pivot in to get the spells, but like the. I don't think it's worth it for him to go into red just for the spells. Not anymore. So what, yeah. what I was, what we were saying before is we were watching you basically float Lelia, Le, 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 yep. the Legion of War boss, the Goblin Rabble Master, and it seemed like when you were ready to truly stake your claim that you were going to be mono red and Jake was not going to be was when you took, in particular, those two cards back yep. to back because those are some of the easiest flexes for the mono white deck and they are yeah. very powerful cards. Exactly. Like they, they definitely are the kind of like, okay... This is this is my claim. Have fun, you guys. You can have whatever else you want. Yep. You you can have your persist. You can have your mills. You can have your blight seals. I'm gonna be over here, and you better hope you survive long enough. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're just trying to get get underneath and get him dead. Yep. Right. Pretty okay. much. And then there are some options that will be either coming up later, like the court, or some yep. other things that are just like, 
okay, well, if I didn't get you dead, now you have to deal with this or you will be dead. Yeah, exactly. And there's, like, you're mono red, or you might flex later, whatever happens, happens. There's always some great options in front of you for whatever is happening. Like, well, mm -hmm. in James, we thought we were going to see an artifact deck, and like, okay, if that pans out, you have in front of you Brotherhoods, is it Brotherhoods yep. End? You have Meltdown, yep. you have Shatterstorm. Shatterstorm. Right? Yeah. Uh, Shatter Shatter Spree. That also gets there, too. Yeah. Like, Shatter Spree, Shatterstorm. Yep. You have some great options in front of you. Oh, yeah. There's definitely a lot of options. Like, there's a lot of stuff on my list that's like, okay, this is here for if people do X. Like, yep. if there was, like... You get to be responsible. We, we have, like, Nick doing Storm stuff. Yep. And, like, okay, I have, like, Roiling Vortexes on my list. Yes. Yeah. If someone's doing free stuff, I'm going to pick it. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's just destroy someone who's doing free stuff. Yep, I, I mentioned while we were watching you float, uh, it was the riff ball pick. I was like, I almost would rather you see, knowing that you have some some certain types of drafters in front of you, these other two cards. Um, uh, we'll get to that in a moment, Creeper. Uh, and so, like, because I was going to be responsive in, in your seat. I'm like, oh, yeah. if I'm you, I'm watching what's happening in the draft. I'm like, okay, yep. you, you guys want to go in this particular direction. You want to play this, this type of game? Here you go. And I'm just gonna like come yep. right for you with, with some. Yeah, brightness. that's that's kind of gonna be the late game pit idea of, okay, I have my main deck now. I'm picking my sideboard and I'm going to be picking it faster than other people. Yeah. By a few rounds because I've got a few lands I'm gonna grab because there's just our mono red utility lands. Yep. But like. Like den of the bugbear kind of stuff. Den soakins on and. Oh yeah. Uh, I was going to get the uh, Castle and Birth too, because why not? I got enough creatures to support it. That's just plus one, plus O to your team? Plus one, plus O to your team, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. So, yeah. Get in there, get aggro. Yeah. Get, get them dead. Yeah, 100%. So, the, but this, like, I don't have to pick the fetches, I don't have to pick the shocks, I don't have to pick the dual lands. Like, yeah, like, it's a 40 card format, so it could help to do some of that, just to, to shave out, like, your percentage yeah. points go up when you start playing fetches in the 40 card format in terms exactly. of the 60 your percentages go up but at the same time if you don't think something like Grim Lava Mancer is something that's going to interact with your graveyard favorably for you is the yeah. way to go then yeah you can back down on that stuff too yeah like the only thing that I was really sad about is I did have Lutri on the list and it was like oh, really, that got, well, really yeah I mean Lutri is the it's kind good. of card that goes it's early good. especially in that deck or if we have like the Is It Spells deck yeah. uh, is it Tempo deck it goes pretty early there now the one thing I do want to know before uh, we trade you out for Steven is so you're drafting mono red here um do you do you come to vrd from vintage cube or constructed uh, no i've just always been on the support side of the vrd here okay so it's just like okay well i'll play and you know what i like burn it's fun it's fast i i get to be the controller of the fun yep. without being the controller the, like the control player yep because no one likes the blue player but they can't be angry at the mono red player it's even so, though it's the same thing yeah, you're not paying one to draw three cards you're you're paying one, one to, to deal three, three damage, damage. Yeah, exactly it's entirely fair yeah uh griever it's on the list is all i'm saying yep who's a, the strong proponent of robber of the rich is it uh, i mean griever just okay. posted about it well no there's also it's, oh. i wasn't sure if it was you or okay. if it was levine that's me yeah oh yeah 100 uh, percent. it is on the list awesome because I plan to be near empty-handed most of the time. All right. Unless I get Wheel of Fortune. And then I plan to be empty-handed until I play Wheel of Fortune. That's why you took it. Okay, we weren't sure if that was going to be a pick away from Nick or, if, like like Mr. Hagen said, just, I got no hand and now it's time to, to Yeah, fill I, up. I've got no hand, boss. That, that's what it was. <laughs> okay. Specifically Legion War Boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, Legion more boss. I got no hand. We, well, get one. We need help, boss. All right. All I'm going right. to trade you up for... You Mr. got it. Be gone with you, sir. Are we going... I shall be gone. Are we going right back into... Yeah, they should be going right back in. Let's Alrighty. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So, let us cut back over to the draft. Oh, All right. Um, oh, uh... Yeah. Griever. So, we made... Two or four of these MTG Cabal cast shirts uh, to wear out to events. There has not been a huge ask for them because we go to so many varied events yeah. and our fans are spread that we have not made them available for sale. But you might be able to find them on Cafe Press because once you make a shirt there, it is stays forever. Yeah, or cu uh, custom ink actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And in both places, once you make a shirt, it is there forever. For uh, next time we have an interview, we want to bring chat down though for interviews. Oh, okay. Because like stuff like the, it's proper, which was on his list. Got it. Yeah. But I mean, I, obviously, Robert was. Uh... All right. Uh, so this uh, hearing about uh, Vince was like, I heard you're talking shit about me. I said, No, I wasn't talking shit about anyone that didn't deserve it. Yep. <laughs> there it is. Uh, but uh, Mike is so Mike 
expect a pretty hard shift in the green for Mike. So Mike said he, he had my, some ideas coming in, yep. but he, he saw the green was very open. Yep. So he kind of awed a little hard into green. Got it. He's not sure what to do with the tinker. He, he, he had, tink, had the tinker, and he was like, well, I'm going to tinker away the one ring. He's not even sure he's going to end up running it, though he may end up running a value tinker. We'll see. Yeah, it all depends on what you're able to get, because yeah. you have like half of one plan, yeah. and you're solidly I mean, you can in the, the ball, plan. Right, yeah. but, but I expect him to be a, a little more green. Yep. Um, so that, that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Yeah, it's, it also becomes an interesting sideboard card when you have both Kyle and Jake being extremely aggressive, and if neither right. of them have that, like, anti-protection right. stuff that I mentioned I heard, earlier. Right, you like a poor old man. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You can just, well, you can leave the one ring on the board for those matches yeah. or, or whatever. Like, it's difficult to imagine that the reanimator plan works well with the one ring plan. Right. Like, because you want to be quick with the reanimator and the one ring kind of bloats it at four. So it's like yeah, interesting. So, the, so he's going to expect more green out of Mike. Yep. Uh, didn't hear, you know, didn't get much else out there from people. Um, we did overlook the Sensei's Divining Top that Mike has. Yeah, it's uh, just solid value. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, I think Top's at its best with like a Monastery Mentor. Um, yeah, keep but, playing it. Read by Valley. You know, especially being interesting because he didn't really go into any of the fetch train there. I nope. mean, he's got the trot, but he didn't get any of the fetches, so... No, it looked like it was kind of a part of that Tinker plan. Mm -hmm. Like, where you have Urza into SDT, Spell right. Pierce, right? That kind of speaks to the artifact plan that we were talking right. about. Like, oh, you just tinker away the top when you're ready for... Get your, your vault or your... Yeah. your so wizard. it sounds like Kyle's going to stay in just the mono red plan then. Yep. I do like the time walk, time vault stuff from Mike still. Like, all yeah. you need is that one extra turn with your... Hex drinker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With your with your reanimation, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, that's Mike. That's James is on the reanimator. Yeah, you like. We'll see. Um, so notable cards that are out not out right now: Twister, obviously. Still, so, um, Vendillion Click. Uh, oh, Caracas. Caracas is probably something like I would expect. Jake James, or Cody. Jake or Cody. Yep, but I, I mean, you can float it for a bit. Yeah, it's a, Caracas is a weird one. So there's yeah. certain cards uh, that I, I, I Caracas and. Um, Walking Ballista are very weird cards. Uh, Lavinia is a favorite of Cody's. Uh, yeah. He he likes to, especially with the like invasion and stuff like that. He likes that kind of disruption. Uh, so Caracas and Walking Ballista are ones that either go super super early. Yep. Like when someone wants them, they're hard to replace. And yes. they go. Yeah. Like Ballista. Like if you want Ballista, you can't replace it, so you can't risk it going. This is round seventeen. Or 18? Yeah. Oh, Snap hasn't gone. Thank you. That is... that is ooh, Pull up Snap. I want to see that is going to be... Well, well, this is Snap. They're talking about Snap Caster Mage. Do you want to see Snap or no, Snap Caster Mage? No, I want to see Snap I mean, yeah. okay. I don't care about Snap. <laughs> the real Snap. Snap Caster. I mean, look. If you're going to combo out, Snap, snap is not a no, bad way no. to go. So, yeah. Snap usually goes in five. Wow. So okay. That is... That is. Uh, I down shift. A, oh. An o oversight. Yep. So, we've got the Blight Steel. We've got the Exhume. So, we're... we're we are solidly on the I'm taking all the really good targets. Yeah. And it takes taking Blight Steel away from Mike is an interesting play when you can only you can't Gorio's it back. You need shallow grave. Or Mason's just like, I'm gonna land. Yeah. There's the fable. Fastbond's still out there. Yeah, so Fastbond's, Fastbond's the there. other. So Snapcaster, Fastbond, and Twister are the other normally like top five, six round picks. Without are, Yeah, with Vince drafting the way he did like it changes the dynamic on fast bond because that's where I've seen it go is in the eighth seed a lot. You take I mean, Emerald into fast bond. Yeah. Mike or Mason, it would actually do, yeah, be traditionally, right now. yeah, yeah. Mike or Mason could want it here. Yeah, Mason could could go back to back fast bond into Excavator or Crucible. Hey, you can just let those go. Yeah. You're going to get one or the other, or even the new four mana one, which is yeah. That's so oh, Jake, yeah, yeah. Jake is very. I was hoping to see some flex into a second color here. We have a lot of time to do that, and I think we sticking with do, mono white. But like over a hush, there's cards that would go better now that have been wing mare, which all often end up in your board, and a hushbringer, which end up in your board. Oh, yeah, which, which aren't going to yeah. do much, right? Yeah, you're staying focused, not disciplined, and not always right. the same. It's like, like the pl like the if you're going to go into red, you want the plat and the yeah. The, like the last two should be plat and Aaron Mason. Yeah, right? it's like, like accuracy versus consistency. Those are right. two different things. Being like those are those are, are both mediocre board cards. I've drafted Vryn Wing there, yeah. and it's set in the board and never came in. Okay, right? like uh, I've not drafted hushbringer. I actually am a big fan of Strict Proctor. Um, because Strict Proctor will shut down lands coming into play. Oh. Okay. So it's good against Rune Crab. Um, Strict Proctor, yes, I did. So Strict oh, Proctor, okay. they can pay for, but like it consumes their mana then, and they only get a few of them. Got it. But it will also shut down lands. So yeah, Strict yeah. Proctor is used in the Lotus Field deck in yep. Pioneer. 
because you don't pay your own, you pay Lotus Field, it goes, oh, oh, yeah. sack lands, I'm not going to pay, I can't sack the lands. Yep. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, op agent fine. Uh, this, like you uh, op that agent earlier. Does, yeah, it does what Vince's deck wants to do. Yep. I particularly do like it with the Dark Ritual because mm-hmm. <laughs> you can get them turn one off. Yeah. Cash turn and then yeah. they go fetch and you go boom, boom, boom. Right. boom. But I, I it's it, like it does what Vince's deck wants to do. But is up uh, borrower here? We have our first red pick, so it, it's gone. He'll yep. That all the, that flags the, the sheet. The, the sheet flags and says, "Hey, do do that." And Vince whenever, goes, what do you mean it's gone? I'm like, nope, that was taken by Mike. Yeah. So I wonder what, we're, what we are going to see in that spot. But yeah, we talked about op, so, op agent before. And now we have the run on fetches a little bit. Yeah. We see it coming into play, but I think yeah, we're it's still... It's really good against Mason. Um, so the bar pick, like, the problem, like, I could see it being a Vendillion here, but he has no, other than the Dark Ritual, he's got no ramp. And he's so, like, all this cost is like three, yeah. three fours. And he's just going to have a big clog three, four spot. Yeah, Vince is, like... Vince is doing something in Demir that I haven't really seen, which is kind of playing this weird squeeze plan. Like, it's I've kind tr- of I've tried like this. Taxes? It okay. wasn't good. All right. <laughs> but I had more counter magic. I had like mana drain. I had some counter spells. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. Have that. Not yet, at least. Yeah, yeah. We we've lost actual factual counter spell. Mana drain and spell pierce are both off the board. Both the, of the forces. The best off counter the board. magic's off the board. There's yeah. now we're getting into the which angle of bad counter magic. Do you want yeah, to a lot. Most of it's conditional. At this right. Point. Arcane denials and uh, you know your missed it. arcane denial is actually pretty good for him. Okay. Because yeah. children and or, or Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight, take four <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the draw. Right, because you draw one, they draw two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I was thinking more along the lines of, like, days. What the... Did he just take... What is this card? Dreams of Steel and Oil. Why do you don't know random cards from uh, March no, of the Machine? No, I don't know this random card from March of the Machine. Dreams of Steel and Oil. Is this an oil counter card? You should use Discard. Yeah, artifact of Fear, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. You choose an artifact, free card from it, then choose... Oh, so you get two. One from the hand, one from the graveyard. Oh, okay. So, that's, that's a solid card. Yeah, it's generally good against everybody, really yeah. good against James. Yeah, that card's good. Yeah. Go, go Vince. I like that card. Thank yeah. you for pointing me out a good, very good card. Yeah. Lion Sash from Jake. That's our second piece of... Our third piece of equipment because we have Batter Skull Go. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we missed... Caldra, I mean, you probably take Cauldra. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I like Batter Skull over Cauldra, but it's... I... It's torn. Like, uh, there are times where I like Batter Skull better. You're going to get it, so it's just like, eh. Right. Like, I, I really like Cauldra with Kitty, <laughs> where you're like, they, they, like, they, they, uh, swords it. Yeah. And then you just blink it and <laughs> read Okay, yeah, and with the yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Lava Spike. Oh, whatever. I get it. Mike's just staying the chorus with Mono Red. You know, this is yeah, what he Kyle's said he wanted gonna, to do. He's going to do his thing. Oh, sorry, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but again, the red, the red interesting stuff's in the hate cards, right? It's yes. Like, it's in the, like, I, I have had a yeah. There's a red W six. So now we're solidly flexing in the red. Yes, match against Mono Red because I had to beat Sulfuric Vortex yep. and I and Eidolon and like I was like I can have to cast these many spells. I'm gonna die. What order do I? And I figured it out. Yeah, yeah. But it took me. It was like a twenty minute turn. Yeah. They're trying yeah, yeah, to figure yeah. out like which order do I do to live? On Mark four. Yep. On Mark Grave additional reanimation. But right now it's it's only for Archon. So right now. You can only get Archon back because right. Blight Seal is your other non-legendary, but it, the trigger shuffles. This is sorcery speed. Ooh, that's need... a late misstep. Yes. We, mm. That got floated down. I mean... Mm. It's, I mean, let's pull it up. I think that's late. I, I agree. I'm just trying to think of the context of the draft. Like, we had... Misstep's always good in VRD. I mean, it's just... Oops. Did I mean that? Yes. Nine. So Nine? Yeah, twice ten, as long. Ten rounds yeah. late, yeah. We also have... St- uh, so we just with Stern, Scalding, or whatever, the, the yeah, game counter spell. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing with James' draft is I think James is too all-in on the reanimator. I think reanimator often needs to go with something else. And maybe he is in the Karn. Mm-hmm. If, if he doesn't all ball the Karn, I like that. Okay. Because reanimator is so easily hateable. Yep. It often feels like it wants something attached to it. A lot yeah, of people you... try to attach Storm to it, and I think that's mm-hmm. a mistake. Yeah. But I do think there are things like reanimator wheels. Yep. I play around that, and that felt really good. Yeah, right. You're like, entirely off game. Going on. Oh, yeah. or, oh, I didn't know we were even on. I thought we were. Oh, no, we have a little, little window. We just oh, have okay. to be. We, sweet. we can hug if you want to. Oh, but we don't have. Oh, it's. Oh, look at this sweet. Look at this sweet yeah. shirt. We talked about it earlier. I want. I need him. <laughs> so, I, All right. Hey, by the way, let's have a quick update. Uh, this is Saint Lotus Twelve. Well, uh, I am Stephen Hagen. I am Peter Kritzberger. And we are here in St. Louis. Uh, it is 11.30, so we have moved from the Mimosa to the Budweiser because it is St. Louis. It's about heavy o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it's always uh, always Bud o'clock in St. Louis. 
Um, for our people joining from Chicago, yes, the Cubs are, are did kick teeth in, but you know, beating the Cardinals now is like uh, beating up on a small handicapped child. So don't feel too proud about that. You're still the Cubs. Uh, but you know, the it, this is uh, the Arch City, and we are here for this our twelfth of our stream St. Lotuses. Yes. Um, we have four people that have, or five people that have experience, uh, one that's not experienced with St. Louis, but experienced with a very good Chicago group, mm-hmm. and then three absolute first-timers. Um, and then the five that have the experience have varying levels of experience. So, um, interesting draft shaping out here. Cody, um, Cody's my favorite deck so far. Okay, yeah. Um, this deck is just got all sorts of interesting gas and is doing interesting things. Very controlly tempo with an initiative plan. I think we, we can effectively now call this deck uh, as our Cheons. This is uh, yeah. the LSV coins term where you're just playing blue white flyers with a little bit of control. Yeah. And he, but like what he really does well with this is stuck cards like uh, Lavinia and Dranith Magistrate because he's going to take cards out of your hand and make it where you're not going to be able to recast them. Yeah. You yeah. Know, just squeeze, like squeeze you without Thalia. Yeah. It's, you still have the ability to squeeze. Very good braid here from Nick. Yeah. Uh, it's just a solid removal. 100%. Flexible. It's like, there are, there are a lot of nice flexible cards now where you can take it and you don't feel bad. It's like, oh, I have to I have to take an effect like this. Yeah. But now that it's stapled onto something modal, it feels a lot better. It's just like a... I love modal spells in yeah. this format. We were talking about cast into the fire last night. It exiles an artifact, which means you can get rid of the ring okay. if that was going to be a very powerful Cast is planet. good. Cast is good. Yeah. yeah. But because it's Especially modal, with the mono white. Yep. Yeah. Because now it's modal, it feels a lot better to have to play an effect like that. Right. Uh, boom. Mike with the Nissa, Nissa leaning into the Simic plan. Who runs the world? Nissa. Nissa. Who runs Divest. the world? Divest. Target player reveals their hand. You choose an I, artifact or creature card from it. So you're targeting yourself again. Yeah. I was gonna, I, okay, still out there, but if you're targeting yourself, again, he's going all in on the yeah. I, I need to know what else Unmarked Grave is going to target because for me, taking these spells that aren't instant speed is uh, kind of... Right. Uh, befuddling. I would want Necromancy and I would want Shallow Grave to get back my Blight Steel. Right. Because right now, Unmarked, Unmarked Grave. Oof, there it is. Yep. Doesn't do that. Searing Blaze, a card that wrecked my soul in standard and modern many a day. But Now, we have seen a run on fetches, so without some of those in the list overall, triggering the landfall on that's going to be a little interesting. Um, yeah, he's and we not, have that's that's I think that's a little questionable. And even just with fetches, not. we have seen that card kind of rot in a player's hand. I think it's a it feels like a necessary evil. All right, this is Glow Rider again, it, like Ren Ring Mirror. Yeah, it's most likely it's just not enough of a threat, and it's so easy to blow out. It's probably just going to rot in your board. Yeah, the and it's a three drop. It's just a card. Blue, Glow Rider was a, was a stud a thousand years ago, mm-hmm. and they're just outclassed. You know. Yep. I thought Blight still was okay. So Blight Steel is not a trigger. Fair enough. The my being mono white effectively taxes taxing your own equipment when you have to play it always seems like a little antithetical to the yeah. plan, you know. I, and I think there's just some better mono white stuff out there uh, yeah. that you can lean into. Yeah, um, like Lion Sash and Gite, perfectly fine. Right. Um, especially when you have both the mock tomb, two Moxen, Pearl Emerald, and Ancient Tomb. Great. But if you have to actually run out Batter Skull. Yeah. Like you got to hard cast that, locking yourself out of that seems like you're you're asking for a tough time. But again, I think this is just one of those necessary evils that you right. have to you've got to figure out. It's you know. What are some other mono white? Do it live. We'll do it in sideboarding, basically. All right, Vince with Marsh Flats. That's, that's a solid. You can't can't and can't hate that. No, no. Um, I'm trying to think. We saw C go Man, I already. Need, I needed to shave my head today. <laughs> <laughs> I need to wear shave a hat. my. Well, I, did, I took it off. I right. Put that back on. Rip my mountain goats. There we go. Ugh. So C is gone. I think Scrubland is also gone. Let me scrub. I don't think so. Nope. Scrubland is still here. Uh, Fable Passage. That's an awkward one. That's an awkward pony. Um. If we're only staying Demir, then these do make sense. You're just fetching your basics, so you're just right. rotating. But it still comes up by tapped. I mean, that's at that point. I'm not in disagreement, but yeah. like I talked with Kyle about, you start shaving, or sorry, you start adding percentage points to your draws right. unlimited when you start fetching. So there is that bit of give and take. Oh, there's Robert the Rich coming mm-hmm. through. Hong Kong. 
All right. Um, white cards he should be considered. Well, if he's not going straight humans, then... No, this is not a humans list. Uh, he got Archon. Yes, he did. Uh, Sarah Paragon at four. Okay. Um, I think it's very solid. Adeline. Did Mason enter I okay into the wrong slot, or did James jump the gun? Uh, that... Because I just heard Mason... Right bemoan that pick from the other room that is a valid question one of the two um okay so yeah so that, that's the thing with jake's with, with this kind of taxes list is like i don't know how he kills right i do like the spellbinder the yeah. spellbinder is good i think you just attack with a bunch of two and three power creatures and like you okay gta is a very powerful card sure if you right. get a gta right but if you it's also enough that it can you know a, a toxic deluge i'm running this on a modern a similar to modern right now and yeah, i, 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 I had more saying. pumps I got blown up by a nightclubber. <laughs> Someone. <did it. laughs> we are like we mentioned all the hate cards available. Red, but Brotherhood's End. A, Brotherhood a, End. A fantastic right, right. modal spell that will yeah. blow you out. Yeah. It just there just seems to be there needs to be something bigger. Yeah. Uh, I, I I'm not a fan of weenie unless you're pumping those weenies very big. I've ran blue white humans and that was good because you had enough disruption in things like metally mage yeah. and mariner. Uh, but mono white just doesn't. I don't. I don't think the taxes do as much as you think they do. Yeah, I think it's too early to say that James is going to be mono white without Legion of Warboss and Goblin Rabble Master flexing into Boros is probably a hard ask, even though we talked about fourth ear yeah. lingus. Uh, so yeah, there's the opportunity to still go blue or green in front of you. Yeah, but yeah. I don't I think he's not. he looks very dedicated. Yeah. So you've lost all the good black cards already, well, besides Vindicate. And what's funny is the one with a mono white and mono red. Here's the issue with the, mono, the other issue with the mono deck, I think, and I don't think this is an untalked issue in the format with the mono deck, particularly when you end up in two mono decks, yep. is that the uh, six other seats mm -hmm. reap the benefits, right? Okay, yeah. Like you're you're not challenging anything, so like yeah, you're, yeah. you're in this mono white taxes list. People are like, cool, okay, I lost solitude, I lost swords, those are the things I really wanted, you know, like I lost tomb, they, yeah, GT maybe, but after that, we're just going to reap the benefits, right? Yeah, I see what you're saying. You. Everybody gets to refocus basically on what they're doing. Yeah, and you get to be dedicated. It's like you, you can have that stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna draft some hate cards to blow you out anyway. I'm gonna take gloom. I'm gonna take you know yeah something yeah, else. And we're gonna be over here getting more powerful stuff. Yeah, the, the same thing happens though in cube draft when you look at this too. When you have the mono red deck and you have the mono white deck in in vintage cube traditionally everybody else continues to reap the benefits but you're still just a very strong deck it's just but you're not as strong because in the, in the cube it's the set exactly right? the, yeah, the, it's yeah. the set issue it's like I'm doing what's been given to me um, instead of this format where you're reaching into anything you want right. like how often in a cube draft will you see as the Thoracle deck breach and Thoracle and consultation right. and spoils of the vault and 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 right exactly and 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 the yeah. <laughs> vrd is a format of and 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 yeah you know that's why i talked about that time vault deck earlier where yeah. it was like they had oswald and they had emory and yeah. they had exactly. loris yeah. yeah by the way another card undrafted loris right now uh loris, that would be yeah. good for jake uh not even if he had his main deck oh, in it. okay let me i'm gonna i'm gonna bring up loris because this is a conversation i seem to have to have every couple of weeks which one of these two cats is loris because there are two cats in this image. Uh, I, I like to think that's the small cat, and that the big cat's the dream. Okay. I, I, I could agree with that, because that's the, the kind of conversation I have about this card every now and again. Cody loves some spell quiller. You mentioned this going in the deck earlier. Yeah. yeah. And this is just kind of, I think, that just blue-white Geon's deck. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, okay. There are the drills. So we have our storm option. So Nick might flex into storm, which I think is fine because all the red rituals are still available. You've only yeah, lost dark. I don't think you even have to go all in on it. No, like, you have will. I. So storm's habitually been bad, but recently we did have it win. A, we had it win ten, I think. No, mm -hmm. eleven. We had it win eleven. Um, uh oh, here comes Mike with Uro. I don't know if that takes it out from underneath Mason or if Mason had I, abandoned the. If, if Mason was going to take it, he's okay with that. Yeah. I, mean, it's not... I do like Mike staking his claim on the card in the text version of the sheet. Yeah. Uro, something, something. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Bless you. Um, you know, like, I, I think that in 11, we had the Storm uh, slash... Like, if you're going to make Storm work, it's got to be this. It's got to be the Breach Storm that has... That it's really not a Storm deck. Yep. It's a Thassa's Oracle deck. Yeah. With Storm as a side. Yes. And, and that's... And so Nick is on that. He yep. is on the right version. Yes, it is the um, kind of the way to go. You yeah. you could try and... He needs to grab Imp Seal. Is this Pioneer illegal? I mean, 
Some this of the is, cards are legal in Pioneer. Yeah, this is Vintage Rotisserie Draft. So, uh, technically, every card that is legal in Vintage is available. Mm -hmm. um, our Bat Hat for sets that have been fully spoiled. So, right. we are just able to draft the Commander Masters Commander decks. Yeah, there, is no, there is no ban list because there is no... Uh, uh, the ban cards in Vintage are all things like... Um, Dexterity cards. Dexterity cards, Chaos, Chaos Orb, Orb. So uh, stuff like star, that. Yeah. Falling Star. And, uh, Silver Border. Silver Border. Um, the, uh, some of the weird stuff from uh, Conspiracy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, I guess, yeah, Crusade. The, the racist cards uh, yeah. as well. Uh, quote, unquote, racist cards. Uh, Crusade, probably okay. But definitely uh, blue racist card. Bad. Yep. Burn in hell. Um, the, we did at one point allow... Um, some of the draft matters cards, uh, but it kind of broke the form. Yeah, they they impacted in such a weird way. Um, also of note, there was a rules change between ten and eleven, or eleven and twelve for. No, not we are at pick twenty one. Um, so first pick, we started with an ancestral, and then kind of went from there. Yeah. Mark, you want to share the draft sheet again for the chat for new people? All right, there's the Endurance from okay. Mason, yeah. which we thought Jake might be able to pick up if Jake yeah. decided to flex green. Um, perfectly crimulent pick here, especially when Mason is in all the colors besides white. So, Sokazan before any of the good ones. <laughs> uh, interesting that Biseju has not gone yet. Uh, Biseju Who is... endures... This is the first uh, channel line we've seen Yeah, today. Yeah. Biseju yep. has been a top 10-ish pick most of the time or something. Right. Yeah, we can... Uh, is, it, is there a comma in there? Biseju comma? Yeah, yeah. Seiju who endures. Yeah. Yeah, usually yeah. around 11, so we yeah. are well past that. Yeah, so Biseju. So normally it's uh, Biseju, Ottawara, Ottawara, and then the white one. And then Takamara uh, very occasionally, depending That's on... That's the black one. Yeah. yeah, and then the red one's al is Iganjo's almost undrafted. the white one, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I... Well, I, the red one goes undrafted because I, it's been like two drafts since we've had like the true, the true red deck. It's always been... Blue X or Red X. Right. It's never just been this dedicated. Uh, white Blue, yeah. Bowmasters is new and splashy. We'll see if it stays at two, but it, it's been very powerful. Yes. Uh, initiative is one of the most powerful things you can do in the format right mm -hmm. now. So um, just like in Vintage and Legacy, when in, in a one-on-one, -on -one, it's pretty broken. Yep. Um, so White Plume started the first draft it was drafted. It didn't get drafted immediately after it came out. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first draft that it was drafted, it was drafted around 11. Yep. And then it's habitually just kind of moved up to there and gone into that like two hey, three range. There's Odawara and Watery yeah, Grave yeah, yeah. for Vince. So now we have uh, a, our fetchable yeah. duel. Sanctifier, in fact, very good. Core Firewalker. He's like, hey, I'm going to double hate on. Yeah, I think. I. That's fine. I, yeah. I don't want to say Jake is solidly taking claim to mono white, but I think we yeah. are getting to a point. I love where the I'm... Sanctifier's pick. I don't love the Core Firewalker's yeah. pick. The Sanctifier's pick I love because it's good, really good against two decks. Yeah, you don't have any fetches on Jake's side. So no. going splashing into a second color is going to be very difficult, especially yeah. when Mars Flats has been taken from you now. So yeah. you're you're effectively out of Mace black. Mace is, I think, the only one that's still out there. Yeah. So yeah. I I love the Sanctum Fire pick. It's great against James, and it's great against Vince, and uh, it's good against Vince. It's good against Kyle. It's good against James. It might be good against Nick. It can be decent against Nick. Yeah. yeah we need to see I don't love the Firewalkers pick that you. I mean, there's other think cards that do that, and you can do that later. Um, Mason still yeah. just I, Mason Mason loves some lands and he if people are gonna so the th one of the things that's interesting in the face to face versus the online yep. is in the online lands typically we people go with the land runs lands are yeah, not yeah. this available uh, but I've seen over time that Mason will very happily if you let him play with lands yep. he's just gonna take them take them yeah. why not like they're your bread and butter for the for yeah. you need lands to play this yeah. game so just move in when you can especially if any of the high prior targets you still have just seem to not be on anybody else's radar. Like, so we keep with, mentioning Comet. That could very well be in Mason's list, but it doesn't look like anybody's going to flex in. So with looting, we're now in it's blue, black, of red, Grixis? Yeah, Grixis Reanimator. So is. I just, again, I wonder with the with those early, first five picks, is he going to oh, run yeah. those or not? You know? I, I Will they tell on if, he runs Karn, if he's going to run Karn? Is if he ends up grabbing Lattice at some point? Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Chrome Mock. Oh, nice. Grab on the Chrome Mock. Oh, yeah, that, that the, takes it away from Jake. That's something yeah. I mentioned earlier. And then right? the Metamorph that I mentioned. Yep. <laughs> I said Cody knows my love for Metamorph yep. with the uh, initiative. I think and if Jake was going to effectively be a Boros deck, 
something like Chroma could have taken earlier and we would have started to see some of the weird flex picks like wear tear that allow you to yeah. make one of two colored mana from being being underneath the Chrome Mox to cast fourth year lingus. Right. So I think that we're entirely out of the realm of possibility there. Yeah, no, we we've got two mono decks. Okay. So remand from my yeah, value remand. Nothing. Yeah, it's the next best hard counter, yeah. I guess. Does, does Jake take Reprieve? Based on a Taiga? I would hope so. That might not be on, on his radar yeah. just because it's a new card from Lord of the Rings. It hasn't really made a splash anywhere. So I can see Cody it. taking it, though. It's a really solid tempo play. Yeah, it is. Uh, with my Cody okay, There we go. Bone Crusher. Again. Yep, we saw that. Bone cru- like Monetary Swiss Bear drop later. Bone Crusher. That's one another red card that if someone else was going to grab a pick, yep. they might grab Bone Crusher. Okay, it's yeah, so yeah. Good. Yep. Like, Absolutely. Probably the third or fourth best red card in the format. Yep. You know? Does him feel late? I feel like it does. Usually we see it go. I feel like him's hit or miss. Is, I think the double black. I could easily see Vince grabbing him here. Yep. Um, well, it, Nick took it. Oh, Nick took it. Okay. Yeah, him's hit or miss. Uh, it it gets drafted decent and sometimes even early. Okay. Because if you want it, you want it. Yeah. But like uh, a lot of like Nick's got Lotus. There's Loris. Okay. Nick's got Lotus. Mm-hmm. Mind twist would have been better. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, because yep. if you're gonna like turn one, it you're gonna go, like land Lotus Mind Twist. Gotcha. Yep. I think Lotus Mind Twist would have been better than yep. him. Yeah. The reason why I asked about him in particular is because there doesn't seem like there's the kind of deck that really wants to play him here. You could make an argument that Vince could have taken him early on when Vince was showing that kind right. of like squeeze you with the Ash Shock Narsa stuff there. I would have liked it in Vince's deck. Yeah. Uh, right. It could have still been on Vince's list too, and Nick just like pulled the trigger on it first. I do like Hyde. I, I'm waking up Hyde. It hasn't really been drafted, but I have no idea what this card does. Um, it's just a man land. It's got menace. And then it exiles a card from the graveyard. If you control two or more, oh yeah, yeah. add a black, three and a black until end of turn. Hive my hive the eye turn becomes a three three menace. menace whenever. Okay, so it's just a more. It's a less effective, bajuka bog, mm-hmm. but more practical. Yeah. Card. Yep. Three three minutes ain't bad. Yeah, Barrington Forge Tender. Again, like the, the you have a spelling. Lay, right okay. like, ooh, I do like the Herber. I, don't, I don't think interesting that like. Now I'm interested. This is the one that flips into the saga. Yeah, but I don't think he's ever, he's not going to ever trigger it. He needs more creatures. Yeah, or he has too many creatures to trigger it. Well, for um, now, I I drafted it in a deck built for it, and I never flipped it, but it was still good. If I do this, no, yeah, that's what I thought. I wouldn't just get Urbrask. Okay. Yeah, you have to. Uh, you can if you hit the thing, like it should bring up all. Like there's a way to bring up all of them, but it's weird. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, if we scroll down, not enough. To, yeah. That's fine. Know. Okay. Okay. There's Mox Opal from James. Oh, so we my, are sticking oh with the artifact plan. Mason, love that late Veil of Summer. Oh, yeah. so good. Archmage Charm. So Mike, Mike definitely is like, okay, if I'm doing Cryptic, I might yeah. as well do Archmage Charm. Yeah. But yeah. Like you're seeing a very light green from Mike. Archmage like, Charm is one of the best less drafted cards because kind of, kind of Cryptic because the triple yeah, blue. Yep, yep, but yep, oh yep. my God, is it so it's so good. useful. All right. I love Cryptic and, Arch- and Archmage's Charm just from a gameplay standpoint because it's like, what do either card do? If you ask somebody, and they might not know all the modes, but they'll give you some blue modes. Right. Like, they're just both cards just do blue stuff. Um, good cards we're not going to see this time. We're not going to see a Dak Faden. I don't think, because Nick's the only one in blue-red enough. I don't think James is going to want it. Though, actually, James could take it because it loots. Yes, he it does. He can target himself. Draw two discards, yep. too. Yeah. Like, James should take Dak Faden. Dak Faden would be really that good. Would, I could, it might be a float. I don't know. I, I just think he's over not thinking. D- Dak was a t- Dak's fallen off recently. I think people kind of forgot about it. Yeah, I, there's a point. I don't want to say there's a point in time where Dak just seems to be not like underpowered, but Dak is one of those that he's either amazing or miserable. Yes. in my experience. Yeah. Like I, I drop it, I steal your soul ring. Yeah, I'm doing a strut and a thrust. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, but it's just like, do you want that or do you want daring, uh, daring skydiver or merfolk skydiver, Demon whichever skydiver, one that yeah. is? Demon skydiver. Woo. All, All right. right, boy, this arrived. It has arrived. Um, it is wider <laughs> than, than us. ER. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so the the point of Soros, If you're ever in St. Louis and you want to get a five hundred dollar reward and you can eat the world's largest delivery pizza, go for it. Uh, but this just means that our point of Soros half arrived, which they will be starting to snack as we slowly yes. approach the pack two break here. Yeah, uh, defense grid from Nick. Solid which, defense yeah. grid. Yeah. Good you, sideboard. You you know what you're doing. The rest of your cards can probably be floated, so now you want to take your protection. This is a range for good sideboard cards. I mean, this is a, a time where you're just like, where you're a heads-up drafter, you're 
And that's good. That shows that Nick's thinking about that. Like, you know what? I don't have to focus completely on my main deck. So a lot of people, newer players, it's just all main deck and then sideboard. This is the difference between focused and disciplined. Jake right. is being focused and focusing on the plan. Nick right. is being disciplined and now noting that it's time to well, shift into think, taking some protection. I think Jake is actually disciplined a little bit. So he's, he's really correct. He's not main decking for Chinder. He's not mage decking any of a Sanctifier or Core. He might be like main deck Sanctifier, mm -hmm. but not Core Firewalker. Yep. So Jake's doing it. He's still just doing it within the focus. He's in that yeah. middle ground. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's not reading the table enough, I think. Yeah. And that's fine. That's something that comes with experience. Like right. when we were talking to Kyle, when I was talking to Kyle, we thought Kyle was not reading the table, but in fact, Kyle was reading the table. And that swap over to Legion War Boss mm -hmm. and Goblin Rabble Master was when Kyle knew that he was going to be the red drafter at the table, and right. he wanted to put his stamp on that. Okay. Now it was time to say, I'm here in red, right. get out of my lane, if you were thinking about it. So instead of doing that a little earlier and possibly throwing people, um, he wanted to kind of ease in with the defensive spells. Heading out to a barbecue... Again, if you want to visit oh, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, if you want to visit St. Louis, that is something we have in spades. It's a good barbecue. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. So we have no ramp from Andy into the five mana Teferi aside from Chromox. From Cody, yeah. Sorry, from Cody, yeah. Hey, wow, but, I mean, he, but he's controlling the game. He don't. He doesn't need to ramp no. that hard. Ooh, scheming fence. And he might have ramp when he's scheming fences your, your mana crypt. Yep. <laughs> That's an interesting yeah, So there's the high tide. That's... Uh, so Scheme Defense is interesting. It does do interesting things like uh, randomly steal a vault, uh, shut off a vault. Um, but it's pretty solid. It just shuts off mana rocks and takes it. It can shut off combo pieces as well. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we have High Tide from Nick, so we are going to be casting some spells. This leads into the Tendrils portion of things. Yeah. So the issue with High Tide from Nick... Well, he's, got the vault, he's got the Volcanic and Sea. Like, does yep. he have enough duels... Because I think this deck, if you're not mono blue, mm -hmm. you just need to make sure you have enough duels to make the high tide really work. Exactly. Because you, you're, you are in three colors. Yeah. But you have will, so you can do some weird things where with a minimal amount of cards in graveyard, but a maximum amount of cards like Frantic Search that untap lands, mm -hmm. you can high t you can cantrip a little bit, high tide, will, high tide, right. and now your island's are making three right, right. instead of two, right? So there's there's some interesting value plays. I still think high tide's a little win more. I'm not in I'm not in disagreement. It's just There, there definitely are some plays, especially yeah. with the breach and the Yeah, it could also be a flex plan at the sideboard stuff. Like oh, there's you, the stern skull. Nice. Hey, there we go. Like if we wanted like we see a lot of graveyard hate, so if we wanted to step away from underworld breach combo, high tide allows you to go from hand. Right. Right? So it's just a same thing with tendrils, right? You're gonna go from hand or maybe from sideboard if you take what like is English. the new mental misstep? I like Stern Scalding, but what is the new? That is, is from like two sets ago. I know what you're yeah, talking about. It's like about. one and blue and one. Um, it counters. It can counter zeros as well. Yes, it's one it's, or less. It is something misstep. Yeah, I believe. Um, so what's it really? Minor misstep. Minor misstep. There, thank, thank you, you. weirdo. Oh. James takes the Torment of Hailfire. So Torment suggests he's going to stick with his big mana in there. Uh, the Opal, yeah. Now, like the, uh, I thought the Opal right. did it, but we didn't know where we were yeah. going with big mana, and now we have it. Yeah. There's minor misstep. Just a blue. Yeah. One or less. So it's not free, isn't no. it? That's why I think a blue one. It's so fixed. I knew it was, yeah. You it's can't, fixed. You, you, can't, can't, you can't cheat it. You can't play it in Goblins. Right. So it's fixed. I knew there was something that was different. Yeah. Than, <laughs> That's how they patched up that card. But it hits zero. Yeah. Uh, the moment a card like Mental Misstep is playable in Goblins, you have released a card that needs to be patched. <laughs> yes. And here we go. You have patched it. Just took a long time. Mason's so, still just like Land City. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how James' deck shapes up because if we leaned into Big Mana and... Okay, well, the Urbrask with the Young Pyro is interesting. Yeah. So he... A card that Kyle wants that's still out. We'll see if it's on his list of Seasoned Pyro. Seasoned, yep, the next yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Just allows you to keep going. Uh, you know, you... you you came back in the room when he mentioned the wheel. Yeah. Uh, at Man, least he is four colors. Super hating on the red, the red. It's just like Kyle. Yeah. I will not lose to Kyle. Is what he's saying. Creature. Yeah, it's weird because you get protection from black as well, which right. is a good chunk of what's going on here. Yeah, so, like, but the, the protection on that one's not going to matter that much. You know, I think this, the last three picks are just protection from Kyle. Yeah, yeah, and that seems a little much. You know. But. That's what I'm saying. That's why I thought this is more. This is more focused and less right. More about focus and less about discipline because you are focusing yeah. on what you need. Right? I agree with that. I agree with that now. I, I agree with your yeah. I I I want to check season to Pyromancer because it's a very good card. 
it just doesn't see a lot of play. Yeah, it's it's your miss. Like, it, it, it's in like instructed format. People yeah. are just here. It's yeah. As I said, it's about right. Eleven out of thirty. Yeah. Okay. Dress down. Like, I don't want to say an easy to answer thing, but right. it is a a nice answer to a lot of options. It also cycles, so not a big deal overall. Drown in the lock. Okay. Drown in the lock. <laughs> he yep. doesn't have the fetches. Drown in the lock habitually underperforms. Uh, like. It's one of those cards that it's like super, super high ceiling and then drops off really fast. But we have crabs. This is true, but he's not targeting himself with those crabs. We have, well, what if he is? He's not. Like, well, maybe. I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Vince does have crabs. That's right here. Yeah, that's like, exactly. That's what his ex told me. There's a, there's a lot of opportunity when you have crabs. Yeah. So, I wonder... There's, we wouldn't see like some kind of Death Shadow. Thing, no, right? no. I draw the lock. Just draw the lock is often. It's drafted a decent amount. It looks yeah. really good, but it's yeah. just like I, every time I have it, it's stuck in my hand. I'm a card short of what mm. I wanted to do. You know, Soltari Priest <laughs> protection from red. Hey, it's got first part relevant, second part more relevant. It's got the keyword yeah, shadow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You well, want to know wanna, how we're winning a he, game? He is not losing to Kyle. Jake just decided that. I, I, I wonder if he just stared Kyle down as he typed that in. <laughs> <laughs> he's just eye fucking him in there yeah. it's ridiculous uh, yeah I think Mason's gonna go four cards at this point like, at, at least like he's got the lands I mean he'll, he'll have a baby splash for something I mean it looks like that the blue will be the baby splash maybe even just splashing just for uh, the Oko yep that's um, it right now we have I mean, he's the, the old preacher that wants it but oh yeah that I could see him going on. just for the Oko yep so the the only thing that's missing would be Comet if Mason really did, did want to yeah. just go with like some Planeswalker shenanigans. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have a feeling there's going to be some ridiculous big hit coming up that we did not foresee from Mason. Yeah. Like, like, he's going to have... like Because his list kind of looks like he would have wanted the Nissa if he wanted to go Walkers, because that gives you that, that oh, yeah. kill. Oh, yep. yep. So yep. like I just imagine some massive... There's going to be some creature that we're just like, oh my god. How did we not? Yeah, yeah. no, I get that. So I like... James still a deck of two plans, and I did like the Opal into Torment of Hailfire pick because that tells us we are going to be playing the artifacts that we have. Right. Now the reanimation package is just kind of muddying the waters. So unless we're trying to do the the rare, I have two decks in this sealed deck event. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, don't know I, exactly what I, I, I think reanimator wants to be mashed with something else. I don't think this is what to mash it with because it just doesn't... Torment of Hailfire, however... Okay. This actually... He picks Animate Dead in round 20. And in my mind, I'm going, Dragon, Dragon. Right. Right. Torment of Hellfire does require a lot of mana to win the game. It does. And if there are two cards that make a lot of mana, it's Animate Dead and World of Gorgeous Dragon. Wow, oh, Bernie. Oh, nope, there's a Snapcaster. The, oh, my. Mike, Mike finally, someone finally realizes that that Snapcaster and, uh, is, is out there. You get enough blue cards that draw, that draw like, yeah. yeah. And I think Cody's Listen. probably. I feel like Cody's. I mean, Cody's got the, uh, you know, the, uh, the ancestral. So I feel yes. like Cody's probably like, oh my god, how did I, how did I see not? Yeah. That, that was out there still? Yeah, mystical tutor from Nick. I wonder if we'll get a merchant scroll in time. That gets instance, right? Or is it just sorceries? Yeah. It just gets merchant sorceries scroll. Just pass. sorcery. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. we'll probably pass it, on it. That. It's a far bigger, um, you know, reach. Yep. Uh, it gets will. Oh no, it only gets blue sorcery. Yeah, we can't even get will. Yeah. What do we need? Oh, chat. Uh, I keep not doing this. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, do. I should just give you the mouse. <laughs> hmm. All right. So we're in Cody's seat. We have both our Teferis. We have both forces. We can start trying to pick people's game plans apart with a little bit of creature removal because we've only seen swords go. We haven't seen march and we haven't seen path. Right, right. Um, well, he's got Skyclave uh, for removal. Yep. Um, there's, there's that. So, but definitely could use you know something more here. I think while we're waiting for Cody, I'm gonna run out and use the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely, I will be back. All right, so let's see what we got going here. So we wait for Cody. So we've got um, this blue white mid rangey control. Um, we've got Storm Nick on Storm Thoracle, Mike on blue green. Time Vault ish. Um, James on some kind of hybrid of artifact mana slash uh, 
reanimator. So we had a Rafine's Tower here, which is going to be interesting. Let's see, is he going to splash a little bit of black, or is he just trying to shore up some mana, and he's not really worried about the tapped? Um, that one, that one's interesting, from Cody. I don't know if that one's which way that's going to go. My gut says he's just shoring up mana, and he's okay because he doesn't have a lot of one drops. He's okay with it being tapped. Um, but I could be wrong, and he could have some kind of black splash plan. All right. Well, again, welcome to St. Lotus 12. We are in round 28. Um, we are about four stops from the break. Yeah, I, that's what I was saying. I, I agree, Wandering. Like, I don't... I'm guessing he's got to go for a black at some point in there but uh wizard or weirdo uh mike it doesn't have to be tez like there's so many untappers that you don't need the five mana tez is definitely a good one um there are the issue is there's there's two keys there's the guy that does the same thing as the key like um you know you can float your keys pretty late the the chance that somebody hate picks it is so small um, and if they do hate pick it, okay, you just take a different key. Uh, so yep. the, the, the thing of the key is, is like hate picking it, people often talk about, but it's really just a bad play. Um, yeah, because there's Tez, as you mentioned, uh, one that he's not going to go into because he's not in the white, but like my favorite key on Tamper actually is Teferi, who uh, sets the, does the Slow. sunset, slows the sunset. Slow. Like, that guy as a key on Tamper is awesome. Oh, that's a nice dismember. Which member? Dismember. Dis Teferi who slows the sunset, I believe. Yeah, Teferi who slows is really solid as a key untapper. There's just so many key untappers. Uh, Teferi just does an untap key. It's also useful in Pioneer where you untap your Nykthos. Yeah, uh, or untap your ring yeah. and you get to draw again. Yeah. Or uh, I don't think he's going to go into white for it, but I'm just saying that uh, it, you know it, there's just so many versions of untap for, mm -hmm. for the vault that you don't. Know. Yep, that you can figure it out later. You uh, take do, the vault and then you figure I it out. I do like the later. spirit guide. Uh, we got Lotus Petal at home. Mm -hmm. uh, but never underestimate. I've, I've drafted spirit guide a lot. A lot. And I have won many a game because I had I cast that spirit guide and sacked it to a Liliana or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. carried a uh, you know, carried a GTA. Yep. You know? Oh yeah. I, I've, I've cast a Simeon spirit guide or, or yeah. two. Um, yeah, I won a game the other day where it literally was I won because I cashed Elder Spirit Guide because it gave me the creature I needed to sack to some effect. Yep. <laughs> and, you know. Yep. Uh, Brought Decay, super super solid. Yeah, Mason uh, flexing more than Jund, like you mentioned. You know, I would also if he does the blue, Mason does love some Leable, and he has the whole yeah. creature. So then I nobody would else is really not there be right shocked now. for if he stays four color. I would not be shocked to see Leable, and he doesn't have to pick it. He can grab that last because exactly. no one's going to grab. Nobody's in that lane. There's yet. the Cauldra. Okay, we, which uh, we expected. Yeah, and the Calder's fine. Like, the Calder is actually Ooh, good here. Very mastermind. Uh, because James could pick the Calder, right? Yes. Like, with the amount of fast mana James has, yep. like, a Calder's actually just a decent, like, oh, I'm just going to cast this Calder. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's also, so I mentioned earlier that I like taking Calder over Batter Skull if I was right. Jake early on. Had I done that, there's the opportunity that if Cody's going to be playing a mid to late game, that he actually takes Batter Skull from me later in the draft. Right. So yeah, no library, no library yet. I I don't know. I've had bad luck with library of late. Like it just as everything seems more aggressive, it just doesn't seem to what I want to be doing on turn two. But I still think it's amazing. Uh, I like the Urtai. That's uh, that's solid. Um, this does work. I really like the Fairy Mastermind though. The yeah, Fairy, Fairy Mastermind's, Mastermind's really very good. good pick there. This Urtai is actually really good with bowmaster. Urtai draws him a card when mm -hmm. it does its ability. So with the shoulder to the bowmaster. It's actually oh yeah yeah there you dude. go. I'm gonna remove your dude. Oh and I'm gonna make my bowmaster guy. Yep. So, these two picks from Vince get my thumbs up. So when you're watching the coverage, Vince, these two picks, Great. thumbs up. Yep. The fact that you didn't draft Time Twister, fingers up. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Cemetery Gatekeeper from Kyle. Yeah. Right. Card's weird, but I saw it. I'm okay yeah. with that. No, uh, library is slow in this format. It's also <laughs> slow in Vintage Keep, too. If you don't land it on turn one or two and your plan isn't to play draw go over those first few turns, it's kind of dead. So, yeah. I mean, Plum knows the Naya deck that I'm 5-1 and one with currently, and I don't think the 6-1 is going to happen because I don't think that the other players are actually going to play his games. I cited out... I had Library. I cited it out almost every game. Yeah. Like, it was just... I was doing fast mana uh, initiative and means can boost stuff, yep. and wasting my mana on Library seemed bad. Yeah. So. Uh, no clamp is an oversight. Nope, yeah. So, and by the way, Plum, I didn't notice you in chat. Welcome. 
Yeah. I don't, Clamp is something that can be floated. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to take it besides Jake. Yeah, yeah there's, no, no, there's not a clamp threat here. That's what it is. So. Right, like there's not a Sam who obviously wants it, a Bitter Blossom player. Yep. Like, um, there's no way Nick is going to empty the Warrens and then clamp through them. Yeah. Nobody's clamp playing solid for, Clamp can be solid for Vince, actually. Yeah, you have some options as Vince to clamp through your stuff, but a lot of it's just better on board. Yeah, I mean, it just values. So yeah, there's the key. Like, just, we got a Grizzle Daddy, we got a Scooze. Yeah, it's like ancillary value as Vince if you were worried about your threats being picked apart one right. by one. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Um, we could see, I don't know if Mason will do this or not, but he has one tutor. We could see Witherbloom combo out, okay. of, out of Mason Ooh. as a side combo. Yep. Like All the Collective right. Brutality from Collective Nick. Brute. Like yeah. that a lot. Yeah, it's really good for you. You, It's an additional discard effect, but yeah. your ability to es escalate, what is the... Escalate, escalate yeah. Escalate, yeah. yeah. To escalate to discard yeah. one of your cards that Would is been good, for good James in Graveyard. Too. Another Cody favorite, Draneth Magistrate. Stops more shenanigans than yep. you think it does. Which is something we talked about for Jake's deck. It's the opportunity there. Cody, it's also yeah. very high. Uh, yeah. Low en low entry. Yeah, Cody loves it. Uh, it stops any of the impulse effects. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, casting from exile. Yeah. No one's cascading yet, so. Yep. Um, I don't think. Uh, as I said, Comet's going to go undrafted by the colors um, for the big players. Mason has the opportunity to still move into, into I don't think he's, a, I don't, he's not going to go that hardcore. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, he could. If anyone's going to do it, he, he could. He, all right, there's the Aganja. Yeah. Okay, we have double key now. Double key. He's just like, going all, yeah. He's like, I'm going to make sure I got it. Yeah. I probably would have taken the Tezzeret over the second key because I think it's it's more versatile. Uh, yeah. But he might go all three. It would be a lot. I, I would want something more to do. Yeah, I, I don't key. think I want all three, you know. Yeah. Unless the idea was to just try and keep James off of all that mana. Um, yeah. We are in draft round 29. Yeah, we're approaching the second break. Yes. We got end of this round, and at the end of 30, we take the next break. Yep. Ah, Kroxa. Ah, Kroxa's bad. Okay, I was going to ask that when we were talking about Uro. Card is bad. I was going to say it when we were talking about Uro, and then we got sidetracked. Yeah. Uh, unless you were running... Um, I don't know. I have... Every time I draft this card, I regret drafting this card. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're running Loris and you get it with Loris, yep. it just feels so miserable. I, I, I mean, as I said, I lost to it the other day. But I mean, like, it just, I'm almost never happy to see it in my opening hand. Yep. I would rather be doing something else. This I just, is, I feel the card vastly underperformed. This is another target for Gorio's Vengeance. Right. And that's really about... But then you still have to sack it, because it doesn't stay. Correct. It, matter, it comes into play. So, like, you're going to Gorio's Vengeance to make me discard a card? Like if you could reanimate it, the card would, and it would stay. The card would be way better. Way better. Yeah. But the fact is, is like you it's can't reanimate it, right? Yeah. Other than the the escape. Escape. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, the card I regret it every time I draft it. Mm -hmm. No, it it makes sense. Like you don't have you're not really feeding this thing yet. You have um, the random discard. You have burning inquiry, right? And you have faithless looting. Yeah. And and tomb. Uh, I haven't it's a much more constructed card where you yeah. are consistently filling your graveyard. Yep, you know. that's the problem. Is we're just not feeding the beast here with Crook, so we're just kind of letting it go. Yeah. Um, yeah, twenty eight to twenty nine seems is fine for keys yeah, because like yeah. we talked about, there's a lot of op again low opportunity cost. Right. Who's got? Who's got we're the saga? Him. Mason. Mason. Mason picked it up. Um. I thought he did. Yeah, he did. What's wrong? Saga for Soul Ring, Saga for Jet. Saga Wait, for Diamond. Maybe he didn't. Wait. No, it is. It's round four. Oh, there it is. I was just yeah. completely re over reading it. Yeah, he's got he's got I mean, he's got he's got Diamond, Jet, Soul Ring, Saga mm -hmm. targets. So that's solid. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Comet's not gonna emoting. go. It, Comet's not gonna go. It's it's there's just not a red white deck. Nope. I don't think it wants it. Um I, I don't think Mason's going to go a fifth color for it, so Comet's just going to go to the no ones in that color combination. Mm -hmm. I, I, in my mind, Kyle or Jake should have gone into the second color, and it's just too good to not, not have there, especially Jake with the tomb. Yep. Um, because then you can turn to Comet. Uh, but unless he surprises us, uh, uh, Yogg's Will's gone, weirdo. Uh, Nick, yes. Nick took it very early. Very then. early. Uh, earlier than it should have gone, probably. Eighth, round eight. eight. Yeah, because it doesn't go that often. But again, that's a card that, like, if you play a lot of Vintage Old French, like, this card's going to go really high. Yep. And then you realize it doesn't. And, you know, yeah, but, you can flip it down. Yeah. Yeah. It, yep. 
And even if for, for whatever reason somebody else took the well out from underneath you as Nick, you have all the red rituals in front of you, so you could still just play a path. Right. All right, what's the next interview that's up to the chat here the as Mason's in the tank? So chat, start calling out people, and we'll make a decision based around that, mm -hmm. of who I'm going to interview. Yeah, no. yeah. See, go. I thought he'd float it longer, but yeah, you know, he's just like, nope, I'm gonna take my boy. Oh, well, maybe he's worried that Vince is no, maybe he's gonna take the twister now. Maybe oh he's yeah, gonna, yeah, he's yeah. gonna be like, pick forty-five time twister. <laughs> oh, oh, we're getting there. Can we look over the deck list real quick? We don't have their deck list yet. Um, until I think they went that screen. I was gonna just dump this in yeah. the chat, right? Want to yeah. dump the the link? Yeah. Boop. There you go. There you go. So that is the spreadsheet. So you can follow along. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know why Mason wouldn't play Sylvan Library. We'll see it. Caves of Chaos Adventure is a card that Kyle yeah. mentioned. Yeah, okay. um, that's a good one. It's coming in. I mean, it just it steals. He's not speeding it out, but nope. you know, it steals the initiative, or it, and it, it introduces it to the game. Both are very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fast Bond, the big one that's not out there. Twister's the big one that's not out there. If we're not. We have opal, we have chrome, we have diamond. Yes, yeah, so they're all gone. Century. You have hexproof. Each opponent can't venture into the dungeon more than once each <laughs> that's, turn. That's a, that's a saucy hate card. You know, or more than once each turn. Though, yeah. So. First, Jake was looking at Kyle. Now yeah. he's looking at Cody. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Cody's probably going to venture once anyway. So we well, got the two. So. Yeah, but I mean, you're, but you're not going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're mostly comes into play. So. Exactly. What are you going to do? Like ephemerated as Cody? It's better. This is better against the traditional venture where you're doing it multiple times a turn. Yeah. Where initiatives more not always, but more often just at the start of the turn. I still like it. Yeah. So there's a bit of both. Tendrils and brain freeze do both target. Those right. those are options. Yeah. Uh Cabal Rachel's kinda of spicy. I didn't I've Thieves Guild Enforcer, not a clamp to go with the bitter blossom. Not yet. You can still be floated. Yeah, no, for sure. What does Thieves, Thieves Guild Enforcer do? That's the mill. Whenever a rogue ETBs. Oh, it's not bad for Bitter Blossom. Damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your Bitter Blossom comes in, it's going to mill for every rogue that comes into play. Oh, I had it. Court of Iron, that is the card I, that Kyle mentioned. I don't like Court of Iron because it's five. I do like the courts in general. Yes. Like I the white really court good. in particular. Yeah, uh, I, thought it, I thought it cost three, not five, but if you're looking to play a longer game, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't like it because it's five. Uh, but I do think that the gr the blue court's good. I think the green court hasn't been explored enough yet. I think that that's interesting. That's like that's definitely to me like a very fast bond explore mana bonds yeah. kind of card because well, you're just it, like looking to dump for yeah. field of the dead basically. Right, but it also it, like when you have everything at show and tells basically, right? Like you can put a creature into play instead of the land. Oh, that's what. So when I, you have okay, monarch, I thought, I thought it was two when you had the monarch. Okay, yeah. no, yeah. it's it's like a put a creature into play. Yep, yep, yep. So that's why I think it should be explored. Yeah. No, Spirit of the Lab is uh, like another like that. That's another pick that sits squarely between God. focus and discipline, yeah. where Jake is just kind of now riding this line of like sideboard cards. I mean, I think Spirit's main deckable. Uh, he's still like he's just a pyroclasm away from just like yeah. crying. Uh, but if we're still in that problem area. Yeah. Of all these creatures have like one or two toughness. We saw pyroclasm go. We have bowmasters out here. Delu the best Delu sleeper yeah. is Deluge. Yep. He, Mason. Ma Ma Brotherhood, eyes Brotherhood end is still open to oh, a handful yeah, of people yeah, too. Yeah. Like a lot of your picks are very like. And he's got no lords to make the puppet. I, I think the deck wants lords. Yes, in some way. A Gobacon was taken from you. Yeah, Gobacon. Right, so that could have just been that's a free, uh, yeah. free lord. Yeah, it's a good lord too. Yeah, because <laughs> it's counters. <laughs> yes. Yeah, wicked good. All we, right. I want. There's no like. Okay, so we're still missing. We have the strip mine. We're still missing fast bond. We are still missing uh, a land recursion right. engine in a crucible style. You can, you got, I, no one else is grabbing those. You can grab either of those. So we're there's the ast ast trophy. ast trophy. So we're still m kind of swinging a miss on the opportunity to have or you depth a combo. Value strip mine. Yeah, I don't. I, I, depth combo is too. I think too much. I don't see him going depth combo here. With nobody else would either. Yeah, this is, it's fine, and that yeah. happens sometimes. Okay. It's just. Uh, the like hex mage is a, is a powerful card on its own right i would kind of that. i would expect hex, hex mage, mage is actually under drafted and under explored i think so yeah and plum did not have good luck with lands in yeah. his last round. no self was Spir time spiral but not we have high tide okay but we don't have twister yet <laughs> but it, yeah, yeah 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 i know the re the re untap the untap you're right 
We have frantic surge it makes, too, right? It makes sense to that deck. Yeah. Now we're going off from hand. Yeah. That's what that's what this is. We are going off from hand. Yeah. We want to be uh, Bryant Cook here. We don't want to have to rely on our graveyard. We want to go direct <laughs> from hand and sideboard. Right. Okay. That that makes more sense. I mean, right. the infinite gyre because it reshuffles, so we're insulated against Vince. Nick a little bit if yeah. he decides to go brain freeze. Or Vince. Um, yep, Vince. Except for Vince does have the Ashiok, which is... But it is also channelable. And the right? Twister. Oh, finally. Cody, all Somebody right. Gets it. All Who right. picked up channel? Let me take a look at this. Yeah, let me go back real quick, and then I'm yeah. going to call in Mason. You can start, then we'll double up the interview. All right. Mason? Oof. You're on camera. I'm going to switch over here. We'll just warm this seat up for Mason. It's a lovely seat for Mason. So, um, there's there's the opportunity for selfless spirit by a couple of people, but yeah, not by many. Yo, yo, yo. All right, sit down, sir. What is up? Nothing. We're just we're just All talking right. about uh, your four C deck right now. We we thought yeah. you would have flitted leave a little further. You seem um, kind of open. Yeah, you know, I, honestly, I think I'm in a spot where uh, I've got most of my cards pretty open at this point. I, yep. I don't. Just the way the draft is shaken out, it's a very, very green light. Only Nick, right? Is it Nick? No, no, no. Mike. Only Mike's really touched any green cards. Yep. So, pretty safe. I, all, almost everything that I want to take is green touching at this point. Yep. It's either shitter creatures for green sun zenith, green black removal spells, stuff okay. like that. So. I thought there might have been an opportunity where Vince started flexing more into blue, showing that he was going to be more blue. So, Leovold might have been a grab from Vince, who mm. was still open to a third color, but really wasn't showing blue after the first couple picks, but okay, that makes sense that you were... Yeah, you know, Vince has kind of been a little bit all over the place. He he scared me off of drafting more black cards, I want to okay. say. Um, but I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I missed out on too much, you know? Yeah. Orcish uh, Bowmasters is nice, Shieldred's nice. Yeah, but, no, Vince is... You know, yeah, there's a, too crazy. No, there's a lot to like in all these seats. We're, we're like, mm -hmm. everything's kind of taking shape um, between the last break and now like we were kind of curious where kyle was going to go and then like all of a sudden he just like staked the claim on mono red so that's very clear yeah um kyle's all about it yeah and uh jake has been very mono white mono yeah. white and it's pretty easy yeah like, and when you've got two decks that are one color and most people aren't really touching that color too much kind of makes the rest of it you know that's what opens things up for everybody else that's what steven was saying he's like yeah. it doesn't just benefit two those two drafters opening up for everybody else yeah, yeah. yeah that's right yeah. that's what i said yeah. uh -huh. i said there's a cost thing that you know you basically made everyone else's draft better mm -hmm. yeah now i wanted to play goblins today i really I thought wanted to play was, goblins. i called my bit <laughs> <laughs> based on our conversation i said earlier after some of your first picks i was like yeah. i feel he's gonna go yeah. goblins and then you took cold breacher yeah. i took picked Oka. the uh i picked the vampiric tutor i am a big vampiric tutor hater i always pick demonic tutor first yep but Vamp Tutor is specifically better with Goblins. Because it sets the up the Snoop. Top of the deck. Yep. So I picked it, and then when I saw, like, Mono Black player, Mono Red player, I was like, ah, fuck this. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Okay, gonna do so I do want to come back to Goblins. In a, yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah, go ahead. I want to ask one other question. So Uro was taken by somebody else. Does that, yeah. that hurt? Um, or was that Uro was, not really in the plan? I think I could have gotten it if I wanted it. I was thinking about it early enough, and yep. it was on the table, but... I think Uro just, you need to pick what you're going to do with your graveyard. Yep. Um, and Uro certainly takes up some of that space. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to do other stuff. Okay, uh, that's fine. Is basically we, we weren't sure what the, 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 the sum total picture of this draft is going to be for you. So when we saw Uro go, we thought that might impact because you already had Oko. Mm -hmm. with like those two, you know. Yeah, no, the, those two DFS. are definitely best buddies. Yeah. And I think it would make a lot of sense in my deck. I was thinking about some different things like... You know, Dragon Rage Channeler, it was obviously, like, third picked or whatever, yeah. so I wasn't going to get it anyway. Nope. But that makes the deck look a little different. Yep. Uh, a card like, you know, Lutria Luris might make the deck look a little different. A mm -hmm. card like Uro would probably make the deck look a little different. If I was more interested in a card like Fast Bond, I think Uro probably would have found its way into Okay, that. which makes sense. Like, we were we were talking about this before, where it's like, if, any, if the opportunity cost to take Death Stage wasn't as high as it is, mm. we could see it sliding into your deck, and based on what you've shown already... Mm -hmm. Like, it might still be on the table. We don't know that, but... Yeah, it, it could make like... some amount of sense. I'm not the biggest fan of the 2020. I think it's just... You can make it, and you can either die on your opponent's turn, or uh, your opponent can just come up with a removal spell for it. Yep. It's okay, but it's not usually the the approach that I'm going to take, I okay. think. Yeah. Um, certainly on the table, though. All right, so going back to goblins. Oh, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. talked about this uh, up top. Goblins are great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, when we talk about how fluid you are with, with goblins, because not a lot of people get to experience 
the full swath of what goblins has to them because a card like ringleader no sorry not ringleader uh recruiter, recruiter. is not available outside of commander True. and vintage yeah so one of the things i do want to know before mm-hmm. you just go off here is sure. your experience with snoop combo and recruiter yeah does that come from commander and vintage uh, or is... no it comes just from this format this is the only format where you can play recruiter and muxus together yep Oh, let, me, let me bring Goblin Recruiter up. Absolutely this is the second time we talk about this. Yep. You know, Modern Goblins is playing with Snoop, and it's like not a super good deck or anything. Yep. It's probably a little underrated, but it's not super good. Um, but Snoop makes for great combos, uh, and the rest of the Goblins deck makes for a really nice sort of attrition-y, you sack all your stuff, you make mana, you deal them damage combo yep. package. Uh, and cards like Muxus, cards like Goblin Recruiter, cards like uh, Vampiric Tutor, Bogart Harbinger, they all let you play around on the top of your deck. Uh, Bogart do... Harbinger being the tutor from Sh- not Lorwin. Shadow, Lorwin. Mm-hmm. That tutors a goblin to the top of the library. Yes, yeah. sir. Which, you know, like Matron, you know, they're both puts it to mana, hand. grabs yep. it. Yeah. Matron puts it in your hand, Bogart puts it on top. So normally you're going to want Matron. But when you're setting up cards like, I mean, and, and all your fair lines are great too. You're when you put Goblin Recruiter on top of your deck, and you're short on mana, you grab Recruiter, it draws you four cards, and you're off to the races. Yep. You grab your Skirt Prospector, you start sacking your uh, Putrid Goblin, and not Putrid Goblin, um, the one that has Undying or, yeah. or Persist. The persist one. Yeah. Or the Persist yeah. Goblin, whatever it's called. Yep. Um, and you grab your Mog War Marshal. There. They printed Goblin uh, Arachnomancer, Ar- Arcanomancer. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, the one that reduces all your red spells by one, uh, and red and green spells by one. You've got Frog Tosser Banneret, which is another card that reduces all your goblins by yeah. one. You've got all these cost reducers. You've got all these mana guys. They printed Ignoble Hierarch. Now you have a mana guy for your mm-hmm. goblin stack. Like, you can make a lot of mana. You can draw a lot of cards. And yeah. You can combo people from there. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. All the small ball creature tribal decks, especially the ones touching black, where you can draft hand disruption and a lot of nice sideboard removal spells, like those are all great. Yeah. The, the the biggest thing, uh, drafting any like aggro deck or any um, any small ball creature deck, is you have to figure out what your disruption is going to be. Yeah. And in yeah. some colors like blue, that's easy. You draft little shitter creatures. You draft yeah. When you spells, draft, when you're playing you know, merfolk or wizards, they basically take care of it for you. It's, it's yeah. Just baked in into fact, it's a good one. You know. Like, oh yeah. Um, the white deck, the red deck. Yeah. Um, the most important thing when you draft red is trying to figure out what your disruption is because you have you know nearly the fastest goldfish. You yeah. know you're gonna have as fast of goldfish on average as anybody else. Um, the question is if your opponent has a faster goldfish if you're in seat number two like nick yeah he's got the really really fast you know turn one to your turn turn two kills can you find some piece of disruption that's going to let your turn three or four you know roll through and kill okay white is really nice in that sense because almost all the creatures do it for you they've got two or three power and they either sphere of resistance your opponent or they make it so they can't draw cards they make it so they can't put the squeeze on your resources Yeah. Yeah, yeah and any of that that helps you just push your opponent back a little bit gives your creatures time which is the consistency of having your creatures yeah like will win you a whole bunch of which doesn't really happen when you're looking at a tribe like elves or goblins they aren't that element is baked into the creatures you have to reach outside now for black like you said yeah yeah you need to like look elsewhere for your interaction typically i mean some things are good you're good at interacting with goblins interact with creatures pretty okay yes they've got some removal spells some jump home incinerators and some munitions experts yep elves do the same thing they naturalize pretty well yeah like goblins also gets into the library too because you have earwig squad yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can you can pick apart some people's like combo decks and stuff. Yep. Like, um, elves does a decent job removing non creature permanents for the most part. Okay. Like even even messing with some lands. And yeah, you got like, like that, Rexage so. and some other. Yeah, yeah. That, that So work. it's kind of like anytime if you want to draft those kinds of decks, those those uh, creature type type of decks, um, you want to just kind of look at what the combo decks are and how you're gonna fit some disruption in there to to work on them. Yeah. But, Instead, I just drafted Saga and Oko because I thought they were really busted and people didn't pick them up. So yeah, we noticed that, that you took Saga very uh, very high in the draft and then oh, figured it out. Okay, fair enough. Mm-hmm. And then figured it out later. Like, well, you already had the yeah, Ring, right? Yeah, And the Mox. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with those. They they open up some sideboard picks later. I can pick up a Pithy Needle or an Engineer. Exactly, Explosive that's what I mean. Like you that. figure out the rest later. Yeah, you know? yeah. It doesn't take a lot for that card to be very good. No, you know? not and at all. And I've got Renin 6, so I'm just rebuy it. Rebuy it, yeah, tokens. if you can for whatever reason. Yeah, no. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah, and everything's just kind of... No, no problem. All right, we're going to get some pizza. You want to step out and grab some pizza? And I'll chat for a few while we do this, and then... (laughs) Are you sending in another interview? What? No, no, we're good. Yeah.
All right. So that was Mason Lane uh, talking about his four color shenanigans. Let me move this window down so I can see chat again. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a hate twister or not, right? Like, oh, coming out of my. Okay. We are being joined by Mr. Viviano. All right, sir. So, how are we? So, this is Mike Viviano uh, in the C3 seat here. How are we feeling about our draft? Um, I have mixed feelings about the draft. Mm -hmm. I kind of floundered around early on, but I feel like I eventually found something that was open. Okay. Like, not nobody's really taking green, and nobody's really loading up on counter spells, and I just figured I'll just do the boring old counter spell, counter spell, counter spell, and eventually take infinite turns with time, time vault and, you know, figure right. out how to win from there. I mean, once you get infinite turns, you generally figure out how to win. Um, it doesn't take much, you know. Um... We're also trying to maybe sneak in the ability to just, like, channel people out okay. or something. Yeah, you've got, like, Hex Drinker is a, yeah. is a pretty solid, you know, channel. <laughs> um, like, Tinker is in the deck. Um, it's not... It's... It, I, I'm, I'm not as... I'm not... I, I think... I feel like a lot of the payoffs got taken by a few other people, mm -hmm. but I still think I'm going to play it just because... It kind of has the ability to sneak up on people and just accidentally win the game. Yeah. Plus, also, is big, pretty relevant. Is is the way to get rid of the one ring if it's in play. Okay. Because the one ring will kill you. Right. Eventually, so having ways to get that off the battlefield. That's why I took Cryptic Command because I can like counter bounce okay. it. Okay. So I took Brazen Borrower because I can. Can Brazen target? Hand. Brazen can only target their stuff, right? Oh no! Is that right? Yeah, uh, well, I think you might fun. be off on that one. Okay. But, well, but, I mean, it's still a good creature. But yeah, no, it's still amazing. I mean, the card's still nuts. Uh, yeah, Petty Theft could only target okay. their, well, their stuff. That, so. um, that's not going to work. But but it was a smart idea, and it's still I mean, it's still just a bonkers card. I mean, the card, especially in a time vault world, right, where you're <laughs> a three one, you know, is a well, pretty effective way to do that. Well, just returning it to hand, right? Like getting the pseudo time walk because you have protection from everything. Right. Seems good. how happy are you with a twenty sixth pick Snapcaster Mage? I was pretty happy. Um, I typed it up in the system that you, you and that saw was like on average pick five or yeah, something. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. Um, and I also was looking at a lot of my spells and I was like, you know, Snapcaster would work really well here. Even just like the boring old time walk, Snapcaster time walk is like, you know, just getting me closer to the combo. So. Um, and then I took the Ulamog because I wanted some, I, so my, I wanted to have the option to just go channel oops i win mm -hmm. but also i noticed vince had committed pretty hard to the milling out Some plan milk. or at least the painter servant combo right and so like just having a silver bullet at least for that one matchup would be pretty good and plus it's not that hard to cast in the deck with nissa it's not right. that hard to get to 11 yeah, this is really good or, or mana drain and of course channel itself just generates anything that you're anything you missed that you or that someone else grabbed that you really wanted Oko, big okay one. yeah i i literally like the Right before it got picked, I realized nobody had taken it. I was like, oh, wow, nobody's taken Oko. Seems like nobody else is in blue-green, so I'm going to take Oko. Plus, it turns off the one ring. Right. So I was yeah. very excited about taking Oko. And then and Mason kind of just it. realized at that point, it's like, hey, no one's taking Oko. It's really good. I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah. had, I, had I been paying attention, what? Let me, I'm trying to find where it got picked. You, it got picked in right. six. Okay. Yeah. So it was the comeback. Yeah, or so, so, one, so it was two, coming this way. Yeah, it was coming this way. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, going like one ring into Oko would, would have been pretty sweet. but right. Oko into one ring might have been better. <laughs> Uh, well, it could, I mean, with, I mean the, with the crit vault, with the crit vault monolith, like the one ring, like that one ring would make sense there too. So that's a hard right. call. Yeah. So the thing is, like, all a lot of the fast mana cards, like crypt mana vault, got taken. Mm -hmm. So the whole like game plan of Tinker kind of started to fall through the cracks. But I don't know. Last night I just made a decision. I'm gonna take man the one ring really high and just see how good we can make it. Okay. And it might not be great, but I'm gonna try to make it great. All right. We'll see how it goes. Um. What cards can we expect coming up from you? Uh, just a lot of sideboard cards. Okay. A couple of pieces of Graveyard Hate, some blue Elemental Blasts, uh, uh, Artifact Hate, just 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 sideboard cards right. mainly. I feel like the main the deck itself, like there's not much more I can add okay. to it. Like the idea is pretty clear. Counter spells, take infinite turns, right. and and try to just cheese people out, okay. which is the, the the basic idea of the deck. I mean, I took right. Hex Drinker because it's like. 
sometimes that just wins the game by itself. Oh, yeah. I mean, a turn one hex drink or a turn two channel will you know, do ridiculous things. Yeah. You know? um, there was some other card that... Oh, Jace the Mind Sculptor hasn't been taken yet. Yeah, Jace, I mean, Jace was once you know, clearly the best walker in the format, and it's fallen off quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, in I, this draft, I don't know. The, I think it might well, be decent. What I'd like is to have some way to filter cards out of my hand, because uh-huh. I'm going to have a few like two-card Monty-type effects, right. but uh, it'll be awkward if I draw them individually. Right. So Jace seemed like a good idea. Or maybe Charter Course, just like draw two, bin one. Mm-hmm. It's not like powerful, but it just does what I want very cleanly. Okay. So that's that's probably... I'll probably take that like really late. And then I'm going to take a last pick... Uh, uh, laboratory maniac it's like just a hedge against how do I win if I have infinite turns but right m- that that might not happen we'll see okay all right all right sounds good anything else no man that's it thanks right. for coming in yeah I don't know how many people are in the chat but hello everybody <laughs> how many how many people do we get uh, I don't know right now I, I, I cover the chat when people are in so they don't sh- shout, shouting cards and everything um me... no it was right there wasn't it Tell you. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, quite a few. Looks about 20, 25 ish. Cool. Thanks, bud. All right. Later, Mike. All right. Chat is back uncovered, so I can read. I, uh, I cover chat when people are in here, so you don't accidentally uh, throw out card, pick, card ideas for them and everything. All right. So who do y'all like? Look at these. Like, what are you? Who are you all? Who do you think the favorite is? Hey, Jason. How's sports show world? Oh, it's okay. You're off doing. You're off working. Selling selling uh, baseball cards to the and basketball cards to the kiddies and the adults because I don't think kids actually collect them anymore. I don't even know what that is. All right. So Mark says. Uh, Oh, like Warhol original painting. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree, Mark. Like, as I said earlier, and Mason kind of backed my backed my thought on that, that when there's two mono drafters, it just leaves the world open. And Mason uh, saw that and, and reaped that, right? Like, he... he as I say, this bun's for you, but you already have a natty light, so... I don't know I don't know if you want to be double fisted. Oh, well, we'll do that eventually. It's now, folks. It's now a natter day. <laughs> Every day. Every day. It's a natter day. It's a natter day. The Church of Jesus Christ of Natter Day Saints. <laughs> There's the ephemerate! I, what, I said that earlier. I was in jest. Like, what are you going to yeah. do? Ephemerate your thing? Like, Yeah. <laughs> it's also good with spell power. Yes. <laughs> no, no. That's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a lot of good ephemerate targets. But no, yeah. it was uh, in response to something that Jake was yeah. doing. The, uh, it was in response to the Kenai Sentry. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? Ephemerate your creatures? Yes. Yes, we are. Oh, Nick with the Toxic Deluge. I thought Mason might grab that. Uh, that's a good if one. you're going to lose to a deck as Nick, you're going to lose to a deck that beats you before you can storm off. Okay, right? Toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cage, solid out of mic here. Ooh, I love the Keen Duelist. So Keen Duelist is like Bob at home. Uh, <laughs> but the interesting thing about Keen Duelist is that it. Does some extra stuff, right? We need like, a swap, by the way. Oh, okay. Oh, just say cut. Cut, 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 cut. There we go. Cut. All right, yeah. So Keen Duelist is Bob at home. Um, so the thing about the Keen is that both players, at the beginning of your upkeep, they get to draw a card too, but they're also taking damage. So... That's actually I don't like this at James' deck because he's taking what? Is he's running Bob with Grizzlebrand and <laughs> like Atraxa and some big juicy I don't know. I like King Duelist. I don't think that that's the pick for that deck. But but I could be wrong. Like so when it comes to James's deck, we are looking at it uh, that does a lot of things. No. Uh that does have a lot of high mana values. Yeah. Um do they uh, each player lose like the mana value of the card? The other player. Oh, never mind. Okay, never mind. I misread. I thought it re- I took it took mana value from what you revealed. Same. But they take damage from what you revealed. So you reveal. Oh, that's actually really good then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They take the big hit. Of all, yeah, of yeah. all the bobs at home, yeah. this is technically the best one when you want to play Emerald okay. in your deck. Yeah. Maelstrom Pulse, Mason just sticking to his guns. Vexing Devil, no you. Vexing Devil, much better in a world with an animate, but. Uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, like I said, I'm Cody's gonna, been a big advocate for Keen Duelist for a while, but I had not quite read the card in the same way. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense in James's deck, right? right. Like traditionally, you don't want to be doing this. There was that vintage deck for a while, like take eight or whatever, where right. you were revealing World Gorge or Dragon to your Dark Confidant sometimes, and right. you just live that life because you're going to win off the Animate Dead. But here, like you know, you're probably taking two off what yeah. they reveal, and you know. this is Suicide Black. Yeah, but for you. Yeah. <laughs> I like Vexing Devil. Uh, I, I I think you need to be have recursion for Vexing Devil to make it worthwhile, right? It, like, it turns it into a Punisher card, and like of the options, not like Browbeat, but the ones from Guilds of New Rad. It's the it's best probably, Punisher card. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like to really get the value out of it, like you want to be getting it back. Somehow. Kyle said he was very familiar with burn strategies, and I did not get the opportunity to ask him what format. The more, but the more we watch Kyle's draft, the more I get the sense that it's modern, and so this yeah. makes a lot of sense. And there's not a lot of difference between modern and legacy burn, except in legacy you get a lot more spells afforded to you than creatures. So it's funny. There's um, um, it, it, both are judge. So Kyle is a judge and a scorekeeper. Wait. And how many judge levels do we have? Did we break eleven this time? Oh no, no, not without Eric. With Eric being gone. Oh, okay. Uh, Mark and I are two. I'm one. You're one. And Kyle's a one. Just a paltry six. Cody's a one. Seven. Just so, a paltry six. Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 that three bump hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We lost the three bump. Fewer <laughs> levels than people in the yeah, room. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, I do like the Myr- Myral pick here. Myral solid at four. It's a little a bit of a pain, but he's got the tomb. We okay. makes that better manageable. Uh, I actually like the Jace, the Perfected Mind. Uh, so these are some... I mean, I, I, some of his early picks are kind of become questionable, but I do like these picks for the mill strategy. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's too, like several of these drafts. The early picks are just going to be questionable, and then people realize whatever lane they actually right. wanted was really open, and now they're just like running down the highway. And I, that's perfectly fine, because you don't get to play all the cards anyway. Sometimes right. they just don't make sense in your draft. It doesn't work out. Um, but you hate to pass up those early picks, and, yeah. and that often makes for... When you end up that strategy, it takes a lot of focus and dedication because you're saying like, "Oh, I have this really powerful card, yeah. and I'm going to cut it." And a lot of people don't want to do that. Right? Yep. No, I get it. I think that's like the perfect example here is James Crypt Vault Model with Monolith, right. right? Workshop. Are we going to see James try and tie a bow around both of these strategies, the reanimator strategy and like the big artifact mono strategy? Right. Like maybe, and that'll be really interesting well, to see. When and, our... and James is at that point right now where he doesn't have a lot of. I mean, he's got. He doesn't have a lot of sideboard cards right yet. So, like, he can't run all of these. We're, we say that, but the sideboard deck, like I mentioned right, earlier... Right, maybe, really like... right, maybe. Swift reconfiguration. It's removal or it's a combo piece. In this case, it's most likely removal. Yep. And, now you mm, have a vehicle. Poof. Yeah. Uh, Swift reconfiguration. It got a lot of hype for a commander uh, as removal, as the new swords, but also the combo piece, and then it dropped pretty significantly. Yeah, it dropped yeah. pretty quick. You know? Legacy players also have a really low threshold for... S- one mono value white removal it seems yeah. but nobody wants to admit that path to exile is probably one of the best pieces of removal in legacy because who runs a basic not many skewer the critics all right i like it i wonder if we're gonna get a light at the stage too that's a really good redraw light for this would be deck. Good. yeah light would be yeah. good you need some light um there's kyle spoiled roiling vortex as well when we were talking but i okay. did, did not add i like i didn't want to point him in any direction so i did right. not ask about um so uh, pyrostatic pillar or right alarm um Nope, there's Wasteland for Mason. We got it. Had a Crucible effect. Okay. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent, right? So that's all the right, free spells. Right, right, That's good. Yep. And then, so it's basically like a weird pyro, uh, Sulfuric Vortex, Roiling Vortex. It's kind of like homage to that without being Breach the same. the multiverse. <laughs> oh, this is one hell of a card if you watch the standard Pro Tour. Everybody reveals six, and then you just cast a card from those six or those ten. Okay, but for seven mana. Hey, he's got the good mana. He's got all the artifact mana. What are you doing? Um, this is the this is kind of like the payoff for that part. I just don't know how it's going to tie the room together. Yeah, this will be the one. Soren's that, or Saruman's ransom or yeah, whatever it is. I want to see if it gets picked or whatever. And a couple of these decks, it could actually work. Like the blue black deck, it could work. It and you are giving them some. Um, Soren. I'll tell you, this card is a lot better to cast on Moto than it is in paper because apparently the two uh, options of face up versus face down are not labeled. Okay. So if you cast it against me, I've got no idea which pile is which, and I just have to best guess my way through it. So it's like <laughs> very good on Moto. I don't think it's that. <laughs> it might not be that good on paper. Um, the ring tempts you, though, is something that we talked about. We haven't seen much, if I don't think we've seen any temptation go on yet. So this would be, I believe, our first foray into that. Right. Um, I was curious how popular. 
the ring temps you would be. Um, We've seen one card drafted in, in the online so far with it, other than the, the ring, obviously. Does the ring have the ring? No, it does not okay. tempt you. So uh, the 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 Sam that buys stuff that gets a. Uh, something back. Yep. Popularly, also, Nazgul will tempt you. Okay. And Nazgul would fall under the same rule as seven dwarves for VRD. Uh, and I, that rule is you have to draft all seven. I think I have a judge assist call coming in. So I, I'm there. Uh, I'm off their call. Photo you friend. judge on call? Yeah. I'm that's that's an interesting one. Yeah. All right. So the missing pick for Mike is actually missing. This is not a spelling error like, we, uh, like we've seen traditionally. Um... So, Surge of Salvation is, you know, protection, Chain of Vapor, protection, Hydro Blast, protection. So, that's kind of where we are right now. We're just sitting in this land of, I want to make sure that I can do what I'm going to do uh, fairly well. Um, Cabal Coffers, no Urborg, a little interesting. So... I, I suspect we'll see an Ouroboros pick come around from James, but that will just lead us down the path of Cobalt Coffers and all this additional mana for Torment of Hellfire, and then it still just kind of leaves us at a question mark of what are you doing with the reanimation pile? Um, they didn't answer back, so I'm guessing they got it resolved. <laughs> okay, easy enough. Ooh, thank you. I was just not going to eat water doing this. Tear asunder. Oh, Mason. Here's so, good. yeah. First, we exile an enchantment or an artifact, and then if we kick it, because can we kick it? Yeah. Yes, we can. For four, it becomes Vindicate. Right. Or not, uh, uh Utter End. <laughs> I like that, sense. uh, Nick's just like, I don't, no one's taking this library before <laughs> I do it. I'm I didn't do it. Just out there. <laughs> Stamped. Yeah, I know. It's, it's called an accident, but it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, library, of course, is the most, uh, win, winner, uh, card in, you know, in his deck. Uh, it's probably all right. Yeah. Deck. You know, it's just how, how often are you going to have the full hand? Um, I feel like Nick is trying to win in the first hand, handful of turns in a game, in the game, right? Aside from Twist, right. from Mind Twist, which right. we just took, right? So set that aside. So for the first two or three turns, if you open up on Library, opportunity cost again, right. very low, but its ceiling is not infinite because you're just going to sit there, you're going to take a couple points of damage, drawing an extra card every right. turn, making hopefully making your land drops and just allow you to go off by turn three or turn right. four. You know, like Mason predicts, and I think rightfully so, that Nick has a very, has an increasing chance of going off uh, starting on turn one. Okay, we got another Lord of the Rings card here with Boromir. Boromir! Also stops free spells. Yes, uh, we just saw this at the Pro Tour, if you're paying attention. Uh, Ely Cassis played this one, but I forget exactly what it does. It uh, stops free spells, very similar to like Muriel or whoever he just had. I thought and it then, did. And uh, then can make something indestructible. Ah, there we go. Oh, you counter it. That's okay. Right. Just straight counters. Right. Okay. Shock over play with fire. For right now, yes. Yeah, or anyone. <laughs> yeah, we're just kind of floating down the list. I think from Kyle of opportunity cost. And again, he's not going to be able to play them all at this point. So it's just which ones is he going to go have more creatures or more burn in any given game? Or uh, trying to pick stuff up from other people too. Right. Like shock is a very arcane low barrier entry for a lot of people. Arcane denial, very good. Very, and very late. I deck. feel like. No, it's fine there, but in particular in that deck where with he's got the bowmaster, bowmaster and children. Which you mentioned. The, oh, there's the, the V click. Yeah, no, that is a late V click. I like this from Vince. Get you, get you with this. Just yeah. dropping bowmasters in underneath that <laughs> by accident. That's good, up, Vince. Yeah, very, very good ones there. Uh, Mark, can you make sure it's the shock from Onslaught? <laughs> because it never kills Psychotog. Uh, um, Croc is still out there. Yes, Croc is still out there. Pretty good. No, Mono Red has traditionally not been good. Um. It, it yeah, it's just e easy enough to stop, and it's not yeah. fast enough over the combo. Um, there are the right drafts for it to do well, and it's all it's always worth at least the look. But right. if you need to pivot, you should pivot. And right. I think this might have been one of those drafts where this should have possibly been a pivot into um, Merc Tide or something right. of, of that. Look, um, somebody mentioned Selfless Spirit earlier as possibly not being drafted. I thought Cody would have picked it up. That make, made sense to yeah. me. Um, Jake getting it, also fine. So I have a feeling, I'm not going to spoil his Christmas, but this is something that I had been talking about. 
I have a feeling Cody's going to do something really cute with his last pick. Okay. Yeah. Didn't... Was Cody's last... The last few picks of the attraction draft, all the attractions? Yes. Like, Every bang, 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 bang. Yeah. I hope it's stickers this time. It plays... Something that plays well with uh, a card he already picked. I heard them talking about the card <laughs> earlier. <laughs> So, okay. With that, I, I would not be surprised to see Cody take Chronotog with his last pick. Okay. Uh, to to Fairy's protection, Chronotog, where you yeah, you just, just don't come back. You unless they have um, uh, Questing Beast. Yep, you're just unless they have Questing Beast or something like that. They, they will your Chronotog. Now the problem with the Fairy's protection Chronotog is that there is a problem. You can only do it for turn because you have to use Chronotog on it's only once per turn. Yep. And once it's phased out. So this doesn't really kind of bomb us. I got something for you. That we've talked about that. The problem is they can just you have to you need a third piece for that. Got it. Because you need a uh, great abolisher. Yeah, this is okay for this one. Yeah, is it? Make... there we go. Yeah, you need great abolisher to make that one work because otherwise I take I activate it. You respond. Times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You respond by five hundred. Yeah, it becomes a so, it becomes a standoff. I don't know if you will realize that the current talk we talked about doesn't really work because once it's phased out, you can't keep doing it. Because we also talked about it with the one ring. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't is know if he'll do it or not. Deep Root Wayfinder. This is just an explorer? Nope. No, this card's good. Like, oh, yes. All right. Um, yeah, he thinks you can, but but I told him, and I don't think he listened, that we figured out that I, you can't, because once it's phased out, you can't keep. So, he, when this card got spoiled, he was all about it. And I was excited, I too. Other people were like, oh, whatever, I don't know. But uh, I think this card's really good. Whenever Deep Root Wayfinder deals combat damage to a player or a battle, surveil one. Then you may return a land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Oh, so it's a, a different... Uh, what am I thinking of? Crucible. Right. Without fast bonds. Right. And it's got to do damage, but it's a 2-3 yeah. for 2. Yes, Wizard of Oz, there really are some Magic the Gathering cards out here. And that's one of the benefits of the Oh, he's draft. going to just make him have the removal. He's going to cast Protection Floating 2, then cast Tog, and then say have removal for it. Or, or not. Or yeah, not. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, Weirdo of Oz. So that's actually one of the best parts about any rotisserie draft. So rotisserie actually defines the format, and that says uh, in whatever rule set you are using, in this case Vintage, in front of you, theoretically, is every single card that is legal in the format. Yeah. So we go by Vintage rules because that gives us access to every card ever printed. That's technically in, fr technically in front of you. So you do get to go very deep on your strategy, and then oddly, I mean, and you know, what you quickly find is that they're because of the way that they publish cards now and the power level, there is a skew towards newer cards. Yes, I've had so many decks that were like four vintage cards. You know, it's like my mocks yeah, and uh, something else. There's the joke about legacy. If you go back, it's say made somewhere in the heydays of the Star City circuit, which is just legacy was a format because that's what they were playing. Right, yeah. the joke is made the same about vintage, where. It is the spells from the first three years of Magic and the creatures from the last three years of Magic. Yeah. And the weird part is is that that three years of Magic for creatures is always rolling. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. No, 100%. Aether Gust into Vandal Blast, which again is just protection. Oh, cool. Glad you've watched them, Weirdo. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Appreciate the views. Yeah. Um, we were talking about pushing this from Twitch to YouTube as well, so it's nice to know that there are people engaging yeah, yeah, over there. Yeah, well. we always upload them. Yeah. So. Counter targets. Right, so we tried an Ottawara, but it's been picked. So yep. he mentioned Charter Course. He said that sometimes he just wants to dump cards that aren't relevant at the time. Oh, you have Uro, so you gotta feed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So this seems like a good way to do it. But he said most other than that, he's mostly gonna be picking sideboard cards at this point. So okay. he's kind of settled in on just, I'm gonna counter spell as many things as I can and try to get to infinite turns. Oh, we're taking infinite. Well, well I mean with Vault. With Vault, yeah. So we, that's why, okay, maybe Urza into Ulamog to just try and hit it that way. Just Natty. Yeah. Phyrexian Arena, that's a pick. Mmm, that's slow and tedious. I don't like it, but okay. I mean, when Bob's out there... Oh, you're James, that's right. Sorry. You don't want Bob. You, you can't Bob. Yeah. You, you can't... You could. You could <laughs> Bob yourself to death. With I, I mean, cool. I've seen their animator with Bob in this format, and then they flipped Iona, and... Yep. You, know. you don't have SDT. That went to Mike, so you can't even, like... Right. ...feign that you're going to muddle with the top of your, your library. All right. The new art for what? Uh, the Phyrexian, Phyrexian Arena. Arena? Yeah. I mean, it speaks to what's going on between Jason and Phyrexian. It speaks to the story point. Like, you reprint it into a standard set. It's got. To, it's going to be relevant. 
and we're just coming out of the Phyrexian era. The, so, the yeah. printed version will not be the new art. Our, as a general rule, our printed version are almost always oh, the original. Uh, the original. There's the play with fire that was mentioned earlier. Yep. Pithing needle, like uh, Mason very mentioned good in his interview. Star, right. Mm -hmm. Very good brutal star here. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had. He had some good removal oh. earlier, but he hasn't had any for a while. Note: March of Otherworldly Dreams is still Otherworldly Light. Otherworldly Light. Dreams. Yeah. Still, both of them yeah. actually are still there. Uh, the card I was thinking of, not Adele. That's she's a musician. Um, Adele would be good for him too. Though. It's the card wins games. That's the the mono white one, right? Is it? It's the mono white one that makes tokens when it attacks. It attacks. Yeah. yeah. And his power is equal to the tokens. Yeah. And so hero. like we're we're getting towards the end. We're Jake. We're we're staying the course on mono white. That seems kind or of Adeline. Yeah. Adeline. That's Adele. Adeline. Yeah. Adeline close enough. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> that is your. Uh, Lelia, effectively, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe just it, it. interesting. I mean, so Cody could do... Any, now, oh, you know what? Cody does have the black... Wait, open. how did we get Bowmasters in here twice? Wasn't that pick? Yeah, I think it's a glitch. It's not supposed to be... Yes, right. okay. So, that is supposed to be Slither Wisp. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, Vince did not pick Bowmasters. Vince picked Slither Wisp, so that needs to be updated on the image sheet. Mark, I don't know what's doing with the image sheet there, but... Uh, Jake pick anointed peacekeeper. Peacekeeper. Yep, that's just a spelling error that we are addressing. It'll be in there shortly. Yeah, I like Slither Wisp actually as a flash deck. I think it's a, it's a pretty interesting card. Um, I need to bring it up because I know of it and I've seen it before, but I do not remember what it does. People were all about it when it was released, and then I immediately forgot it. Is it W H I S P Slither Wisp? Nope. Oh, yep. There it is. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of your stuff has flash. Why not? You're seeing a lot of other people with yeah. flash. Why not? Um, yeah, Kyle should grab. Wait. Cast into fire. Yes. Has this been? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, that, no, it is not. It is, no, no, rotted. It does. It does have flash. Yeah, it has flash. Because okay. that was a keyword that came out after Innistrad, right? Um, that was Evergreened. Oh, well, I think I did that before. Was it? Okay. I didn't think the original one. Yeah, no, Tiago Chan, I, I wasn't sure if that art had it. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. But. It's one of those weird things. It's like Exalted Angel and Loxodon and Warhammer do not have lifelink because they have like they not. They're, slightly they're, different. They're, they're the old lifelink. Yeah. Um. So they double work with lifelink. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, weird yeah, Ovas. Yeah. People were just going nuts. Okay, it did have flash. Okay, people were going nuts over Slither with Slither Wisp for that exact reason. Uh, I mean, Jake would be the vile deck. If anything, um, he should probably take it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody else is going to take it. You get to float that to forty six. And if somebody takes it in front of you, then it's just a dead draw on there, and right. like they wish claw poop themselves. That's fine. Ooh, man, that thirty seventh round besage you feels good. Yeah. Right. You just float that. Oh, Vale Summer can't do that one. Mason already got it. Wish claw talisman mm -hmm. going to James is interesting. You usually you would expect Nick to get that. And well, there's he, the seal. Nick. Oh, we said Nick. Yeah, Imperial seal. He, he wanted another tutor. Yep. Fairy Conclave is going to Mike. It's just a spelling error until we yeah. get in here. But Wishcall Talisman going to James is interesting. Picking up another Tutor, which would traditionally go to the Storm deck, because you want to finish the game on that turn so you don't right. give it to your opponent. So this, again, is kind of speaking to the fact that James might be trying to end the game on a singular turn, which means almost abandoning the reanimator element of the deck I don't know what he's doing. in favor of the in favor of torment of hellfire i think he's mashing and i don't i don't hold high hope for it but I, i've been proven wrong before i'm excited to see the mox field list now right. we have told every single player they have to in, do the mox yeah. in, yep so you, one of the reasons we started a little late was because everybody was told you have to have a mox field for this so right. sign up for your account now uh, oh here comes the hercules recall just a, another spelling error yeah Easy spelling error. It's two L still. I see the thing with the Caracas is this field is the Caracas is best against James. Yeah, like, I, and I think that's why you want it. Yeah, I don't think anyone's particularly. But Cody's got abusing. it. Abusing. Oh, he did. Did he take it? Cody Aether? took it. Yeah, we. Uh, he willed it. Uh, oh, okay, cool, good, good. Caracas good. into okay, Aether Gust. Okay, I missed it. Good, because I was like, that's what you particularly wanted is against James. Yep. Yeah, it's so good there. Why does Vince want Ouroboro Palace in the clouds? Oh, Vince wants Ouroboro for crabs. Yep, Vince has both crabs. Yeah, Vince has a case of the crabs. He got them from Dr. P.P. Poop Pants MD. Who is not here? Uh, who is not here. Do we but, have tokens? Uh, probably. Did you leave them? I don't know. I think we always have them here. Okay. Uh, but Vince wants a borrow because it does crabs. Yes. Which is an effective mill package. Okay, yeah. Echo of Eons going to Nick, who has, the, who has Black Lotus. So we have an easy flashback there. Yeah, he's got LED as well. Yep, and there's Thieving Skydiver before Dak Faden. So this right. is, this is the, what we were yeah. talking about before. Dak, Thieving Skydiver, who's going to want what? Um, Good Cody, sideboard. Yeah, Cody just telling both Nick and James, if you want this effect, mm -hmm. take Dak. 
Right. Um, I want my creature. Now, you can't steal a Moxon with this. You actually have to pay one. Right? It's not less than or equal to. It's equal to. X can't be zero. Correct. So you but cannot it, steal a Moxon. Right? But the ability is equal to. It's not less than or equal okay. to. Or less. Okay, never mind. So or you have zero. to pay one. Yeah. But you have to pay one. So at minimum, to steal, it costs three mana. Yep. Yep. <laughs> See, so people are trying to preload, but they keep hitting enter by accident. Yeah. So the key to the preload <laughs> is you don't hit enter. enter. <laughs> Uh, Flood of Grove, I, I think these are often the big slept on land. Uh, the filters. The yeah, filters. They're, they're I, not I, fetchable, so I, mean, I, I understand it. But I think out of all the duels, it is somewhat deck dependent. In Mike's case, he's got colorless enough that he's okay with the, that option. Yeah. Um, and he's only in two color. Yeah. But, you know, particularly in a world, uh, like I think Vince would be really good to take the blue black one because he has Liliana of the Veil. And, you know, so the ability to grab and he has Tasha's, yep. right? So he wants either. Uh, Sheldock is yeah, that's card's good. POV, you're James and you have a reanimator aspect to your deck. You yeah, Sheldock. Sheldock seems fine. Uh, or Vince because you're gonna mill somebody out and you just wanna hit something big off of it, also works. Yeah, Stee in the hey, uh, Skullcrack. Stee, Stee from England in uh the online drafts. He is a he drafts Sheldock. All, all the time. time. Yeah. Like there's just not a <laughs> Well I this is an effective card for a number of drafters. In my mind, it's going to go to James because you want to play some of those cards, some of those chunky yeah, boys. No, yeah, it's good, it's good for James. Yeah. yeah you, it, it lets you play for your Emrakul. Yep. There's my strict Proctor. So he does have the Proctor. I like, the, I like yep. Proctor a lot. Yeah. And like I said, we saw Kyle. But now Kyle has both Skullcrack and Stump. So two answers to the protection from the I, ring. I, I am interested. I like Siphon. Siphon's not really seen a lot of love yet, but I think it's interesting. The thing with Siphon is I've tried it in like um, histo or historic uh, brawl, and it's just not performed for me like I thought it would. Like it looks amazing on yep. paper. Look at the types of cards. Exile one of them face down, and you can cast it. It looks amazing on paper, but it just didn't perform as well as I thought. Uh, overall number of blue drafters, like solidly blue drafters, is a main color, I believe. So usually we put we feel like we push five, maybe six sometimes. It, it up and down. Depends. Ooh, I mean that's why Mason's yeah. been able to do mono blue a couple yep. times because he's been able to. I like his experimental frenzy, and I almost hope it's paired with Steamkin, but that is just speaking to my heart as a standard player in that era. <laughs> Steamkin's good. Steamkin should actually, should actually probably see play more. Yeah. It, it does a lot of weird things, and it like it could oddly be good for the Storm deck, where it's right. like spell, 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 free yeah. mana. Spell, 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 free mana. It just becomes this weird free ritual. But you need. I feel like for that, you also need the enablers in Electromancer and Baral, and like you gotta go that way for Storm. Right. I mean, it does have the Herbrask, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, nobody's tooting a horn yet. Right. Uh, the other side of Bergy. No, cast no. a spell and make a mind. And again, I think the problem with Kyle's deck for like with the Herbrask is like the am I gonna cast am I gonna go with these more creatures or am I gonna go with the more of the spells? And like it's just kinda of pulling in two directions. Yeah, well you say that, but when you play burn traditionally in both modern and legacy, you need your creatures to do at a minimum of six. Yeah. And like it's once you cross that threshold, you know the game is solidly in your favor unless the wheels fall off because now your hand's being yeah. picked apart. Oh, I mean, there's Rabble Master Math, you know what it yeah. is. It's a uh, one five dead or whatever yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly exactly yeah. right so you need you need your spells to do some lifting but you need your creatures to do like an unexpected amount of heavy listings lifting so having enough creatures to cross thrust th cross that threshold so your spells can deal six to nine damage is probably where you really need to be for a format like this all right, so my top three pick right now, unless something changes up here at the end, is I expect Cody, Mason, and Nick to be vying for the win. Okay. Yeah. We'll see how Nick's comes out. Like, in the end, like it's a power, he's got the powerful stuff. I don't know if it's going to be consistent enough compared to some of the other reasons when we've seen ritual interesting yeah the, that that had shaken my end is what we were trying to do with pyretic there's a relic of progenitus coming in for mike here we just got a typo issue yep like, i don't know i swear if james goes pyretic ritual into another red ritual into world gorger dragon hats off to you man that is <laughs> i'm still rooting for world gorger dragon with anime dead but we got some good spells out there to make that one work yeah do and do we see a bizarre I mean, Bazaar is legendary Bazaar. Right, yeah, Bazaar is tough, but James could make it work. I yeah. mean, the is the gonna... Bazaar tap for mana? No. No, yeah, it's gonna, that's the issue. I mean, yeah. Uh, we saw an Urborg go. We haven't seen Yavamaya go. Yavamaya would be good for Mike to go with his Nissa. 
Yep. Uh, I believe James has the Urborg. Yes, James yeah. has Urborg. I think uh, Yavimaya would be good for Mike or Mason. Yeah, either one. Either one. It's going to work out well. I like. Oh, I didn't see Mason took the. So Witherbloom Command. This oh, yeah. card, man. This card is low key amazing in this format. Yeah. And, okay. like, I have not been able to get many people on board with this thing yet. But. Uh, so, what this really reads is target player, which can often be yourself. Yep. Mills three and returns the land card from hand. So I've often like I strip mine somebody. I just milled three card myself and return my strip mine. Mm -hmm. Strip mine them again. Um, destroy a target non creature non land permanent with mana cost two or less. Super relevant. Yep. Um, target creature gets minus three minus one in a format of bobs and snapcasters and things like that. Super really relevant. Good. And then the worst one, but it's always the hey if I just I, I need to do one of these others but I have it is just the drain two. Yep. Like for two mana. Uh, now the down, only downfall of course is the sorcery. That's the only weakness of this card. But this card is massively Absolutely. slept on, and it's so good. Like every option is relevant. Yeah. Cody with back to basics. Yeah, Cody loves some back to basics. Hey, look, with one, with a tundra and a hollowed fountain, or a hollowed fountain rather. Yeah. Like that's and the Rafine's tower. You know, oh yeah, 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 perfectly, perfectly re relevant. Oh, and a, and a Deganjo. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's got it. And Caracas. It just keeps adding up. My bad. <laughs> what a bad back to basics. Okay. But against like Mason, it's just gonna you know shut you off. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the Teferi. Do you love the Teferi? Not where so, we expected it. We expected mm, it to go to. Uh, but Cody also speaks my language, and there's another card that he and I talk about a lot because it's a favorite of mine that also plays very well uh, <laughs> with the fairy slows the sunset. Maybe I don't know. Yep. Players skip their untap. <laughs> also plays well with back to basics. Yep. You, know? you can't uh, static orb stasis, right? Uh, I mean, oh, no, sorry, not static orb. Um, opposition. No, 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 stasis, no, right? no, okay. no. But yeah, so we could see that. I don't know if he will or not. Yeah, you could go down the prison route stasis and then pick up the uh, the zero sum cards. Winter yeah. orb, static orb. I mean, you know, the, the winter herb is good with my, for Mike, obviously, with the Urza. But, I mean, even if not, you're just slowing them down so much. Because yeah. also, the other thing about Teferi is Teferi untaps one of their lands. Oh, okay. So yeah, Teferi yeah. slows the sunset. There's three things. Three things. Yep. It, you, so it's, if you have enough mana, you can tap one of their lands. So you can tap their mana rocks, yep. for example. Uh, so you can tap their mana rock, yep. untap your land, yep. and then tap one of their creatures. Like, oh, you get to okay. pick three things. Got it. Um, so when I ran Teferi, I ran it with, like, Grim Monolith, so I was, like, untapping my Grim Monolith, yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. So I don't know if he'll go that way or not, but I think Teferi, again, he's at, right now he's got two Teferis. So he's on three Teferis. He's right. on Tribal Teferi right now. Uh, almost. We're missing Mage of Zaphir. Zaphir? Oh, yeah. Like, the mono blue one, and then the mono blue, at least one, the, no, two mono blue yeah. Planeswalkers. We haven't no, and there's another, picks left. And another new one. Oh, yeah. I mean, he could go. But it's still, Three Teferi yeah. makes a Tribal Teferi. You're, you're Tribal enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like Tribal Gideon. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what, we're not using Tribal anymore. What are we using now? I'm okay with this. I'm not making fun of it. It's, they, 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 Wizards is internally using a different word now. That's fine. Yeah. It always, like, it, it never made, Tribal as a, a, a thing, like, never quite made sense to me um, because people always considered soldiers a tribe, and that's right. not a tribe. That's a job. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. so, I get it. But yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. My back trip, yeah, like, that's solid. Mm -hmm. That's a solid, solid. Yeah, it's kind of like Opposition Agent. Typo, thank typo, you. Typo, yeah. I thought it was it. Typo, Wandering Wolf. Oh, thank you. Oh, so James with the Chain of Smog, so he... Or Wandering Wonder. He's going to go to the Rao version. The worst of the versions. Yeah. But it's still... So if he grabs the Rao Zarek. Or he can just target himself for the discard. Not even to go for the combo. He's just going to target himself. Chain of Smog, target myself, pitch two. Oh, you're going that Sorry, I see Chain of Smog, and I think uh, Professor Onyx and well, that, the Magecraft uh, stuff. Right, the Witherbloom. That's the good versions of the combo. Yeah. Rao Zarek uh, from War can also do it. Oh, I, that's the one I forgot about. I always think about the one from Return to Rav where you just flip coins for turns. Right, no, the Rao from War can also do it because it oh. copies it and pings them one. Got it. Time. Okay, just run but it. But I think he's just going chain because he can... Target player. Target <laughs> me. Yep. And pitch these things. And who has chain... Somebody has chain of vapor already too. We saw that go by. Chain of vapor went to Nick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense for Nick. And uh, totally... yeah, Mark, Ninjas is also a job. Yeah, Chain of Vapor is good for Nick. You you need ways to stop hate cards. And just like they've got the hate card, they've got the uh, Hush 
Hester, Hester drinker yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I am always a fan of the underused mode of Chain of Vapor, which is bounce my mox, sack of land, box, bounce my mox, sack of land, bounce my mox, sack of land, replay my moxes. Now I have a lot of Storm. Um, um, I am normally not a fan of Deathrite Shaman. I think it's really bad in this format. I think that Mason's deck is exceptionally good for Deathrite Shaman. Everybody else is also playing a lot of spells, so right. there's some options to nibble. Yeah. You're not but just it's, it's the it. land. It's just it's not consistent ramp. For sure. For uh, sure. But uh, Mason's got a lot. But, it, like, okay, people want to talk about how Deathrite Shaman is a one mana planeswalker, just yeah. like Umazawa's GTA is also a two mana planeswalker. Yeah. And these cards have a lot of modes, and the options are always viable, but never always viable at the same right. time. Arbiter's good pick. I yep. probably like even Mind Sensor more, but well, we just talked about the lack of lands, like yeah. um, an oppos- and how right. opposition agent is like a very like medium card. Right. So aside from it being a two one flyer, and you already have Archon and Vryn Wingmare. Man, I'll tell you what. I'll tell even Mind Sensor carries a Jeet very well. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything with evasion carries yeah. a Jeet really well. I, I have won many a game on a uh, small pokey sword. This was a card I was thinking about earlier, but I didn't want to say anything when we were just trying to figure out where Time Twister was going to go. I was like, first you take the Twister, then you take the Windfall. <laughs> no shit, Thief. All right, now we're back on the uh, He's got a lot of main the deck stuff cards. you plan with Narset. Yeah. Like, get it to he's phrase. got a lot of main deck cards. Maybe he's going a little audible on the, or a little uh, flexible side. There's a lot going on with a number of these decks, and I think the Mox Fields are going to be really exciting to see. And yeah. I like they will tell the tale. And for sure, and so will the tape, so, and it's yeah. going to be really interesting. I do love Car- Car Commando. The card's bonkers. Destroy target effect. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So two, three, one flash for two. Pay one, sacrifice it, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Oh wow. Are we? Oh. Four drop Chandra, I like. Six we, drop Chandra. We can't just pick all the Chandra. Oh, 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 Mason, Mason gives me wood. Swag tusk. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mark, can we get that as the proxy instead of actual Thrag tusk? Can we get swag tusk? Um, Cathar's Commando. What is it? There's another white card that I was just thinking. Oh, uh, oh, it, nope. He went with the Onyx. Yeah. He's, uh, okay. No, not Hero Blade Hold. Uh, Mirror and Crusader. That's the one I want to see. Oh, I do love some commit memory. That card's good. <laughs> this has not been played. Okay. okay. Now, here is a card that somebody should grab, in particular Mike, because it could actually be good at. Um, what is that little dude's name? Uh, the new artifact hater, the artifact, the, the green one. The yeah, co- it's They're, colorless, but it's okay. Oh, co- Haywire Mike. Haywire Mike. Yeah. Yep. We were talking about that last night when we were discussing cards to like. Yeah. In in the notes that I took, I uh, I figured that we would be seeing the one ring today, right. and as such, we would hopefully be seeing a cast into the fire. And Haywire might as really good ways to well, deal with the one Mike's ring. also looking for ways to deal with his own one ring. He said. And my, that's what he thought he yeah. could bounce it with Brazen Borrower. But Brazen Borrower only targets Them. their stuff. Got it. Okay. But Hey, Wired Might's good because it's versatile because I can deal with my own one ring if I have or to. Your, yeah. Or I can just deal with your thing. Yep. And Ka- he's, uh, Mike's in oh. red. There's the stasis. Oh. Oh, I love you, Cody. Magic is a zero sum game. Okay. Mike is not in red. That's right. So no. there's no opportunity for Cast into the Fire. So, yep. Yeah. Um, also, so there's that. And I think there's another underplayed card. Just let me. Uh, this is something I was thinking about the other day. Right? It's like, oh, no. They have one ring. Ah, it's destroyed. I thought it was exile. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just very. Yeah, hey, Hammer Might's good, though. Yes. Well, the, the word exile is a lot more powerful than the keyword yeah. buried, which is not a word we use anymore. We should use buried again. <laughs> it was concise. It was, you know, I know what it did. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Destroys can't be regenerated, but we don't regenerate anymore. We're just indestructible. Yeah, so we got to get around indestructible with exile. Regenerate's so. gone. And this is just two old men yelling at various clouds. Exactly. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Or a mountain goat song with less references to obscure European <laughs> literature. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay. So James all right, we got, got a little lull after the stasis. The, the room was like, what? Oh my god. Yeah, and a hush falls over the crowd. Hey, Path. Ooh, nice. Okay, it's about time. Yeah. I would have taken March over Path. You have enough white cards to do it, but I think they're all so high impact that you might not want to. Yeah, but even just X. I mean, a lot of times your target's just so low. Okay, yeah. I mean, I I rarely pitch a card to it. I do like the Fatal Push. Yeah. I like the Push there. Push is uh, super underrated. Real good. Ulamog, the Ceaseless Chungarur. He's like, I've got two Ulamogs now. I have Ulamog and Ulamog at home. Yep. Well, which one's the Ulamog at home? 
I, that's a good question. Uh, Umog at home is the one that only exiles one thing. Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> well, I was gonna say I'm a Tron player, so yeah. I, I, I I cap out a Chungerer. Um, yeah. Uh, Umog yeah. at home, I guess, is OG with uh, exiles, yeah. exiles one thing. <laughs> yeah, it just shuffles back in, yeah. which is the useful part. It is. It yeah. Is, it like, is. So that's a double up. He may only main deck one of them, but bring in, switch it up when he plays Vince or something. Yeah. yeah exactly. I. Because he, he wants to channel target, but... Yep, and the destroy, the destroy is a lot more impactful, or could be a lot more impactful than draw four off Kozilek yeah. if you wanted the the shuffle clause, right. like you said, against... I mean, Exile 2 is good, but also, the Umog at home also has... And I don't actually think either is at home, because one has Annihilator. So yep. they're both super relevant. Yes. I mean, it's just, yeah. I'm going to Exile two things, or I'm going to Annihilate you, and, you know... Yeah. Dead yeah. Dawn, interesting. I wonder, nobody's taken an Ember Cool yet. Yeah, uh, James has it. Did it? Did James get Emrakul? Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Long, long Aeon's Torn. Yeah. I can still remember. Yep. Yeah. 11. Okay, that's fine. But, so that's Aeon's Torn, but Emrakul, the promise end, is still available. Right, yeah. If, so if you want to channel out a card, it's a good one to channel. The one that also mind slavers your opponent seems pretty decent. Does Mason go? Now, I don't know info. This is purely an interesting, but I see a Thrag Tusk. Mm -hmm. I see this. I don't know if he has enough creatures. I started thinking about recurring nightmare. <laughs> oh man! Wait, what? Steam had been taken? Holy crap! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Are, oh wait, are, are we going to be on the planeswalker sneak attack card for Kyle? Mm. Is that where we're going to end? We're just going to have this really nice early. If he game? did, I changed my whole critique of his draft <laughs> to it's still bad, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Minister, it's nice. I like that. Okay, it's I don't a, know what that card does. Yeah, it draws your cards. <laughs> All right. If you have a legendary, I think. Okay. Like, no. Nope. Yeah, the new cards are always like an awkward. Yeah. In there. No, no. ETB is tapped unless you control a legendary creature, which you've got a lot of. And uh, tap to add a white. It looks like one and a white. Draw a card. Activate only if you attacked with one or more creatures this turn. Okay. Yeah. No attack. So yeah, yeah. No, make sure it's good. Yeah, uh, pretty rancid in the opening hand, but decent later. Um, some oh, I like the okay. small story there. Yeah, so, we have a, a mishmash of fairies. We have Mastermind, Bitter Blossom, V Click. So that's yeah, yeah. three. Some Gideon's would be so he's got, yeah. So oh, okay. for Jake, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Vince is now on three mash together decks. The flash deck. This kind of punish you for drawing deck, mm -hmm. and the mill deck. So. The mill deck and the flash deck actually kind of play well together because some of your fairies are rogues and oh. almost and the flash sorry the fl yeah the flash deck and the mill deck because a lot of your fairies are rogues right but almost all of your fairies have flash right right so it's like the, it's not a circle on the Venn diagram but it's also not like right that yeah. large Hazard of good. that card probably should see more more respect on its name in the format Hazard yep. uh, Shalai is the first appearance of another green pip. I don't actually think he's ever going to activate the ability. I don't think so. But the, the first ability is enough to play Shalai on its own. Yep, if memory serves, Savannah and Temple Garden are still available. Oh, he could. I mean, he's got the Mox. Yeah. There's almost no downside from it, other than consistency yep. of he's not going to draw the green consistently. Yep. Man, Mason's got more lands than anyone has anyway. ever had in a draft. Yep, and he's not even running lands. Like, it's just... Ooh, I like the Gearhawk. I like that. Now, Gearhulk can only cast instance, right? So it can't hit your time walk. Target instant card, yep. So you're But it can't hit your counter spells. Yeah. It can hit your cryptic and all your counter spells. So. Yep, it just allows it, you to it, play a longer game. It's just game. a threat, man. It, it's just like... It casts... Uh, wait, does it cast memory? Uh, the, was that it cast commit, going? not commit. Commit, okay. Yeah, yep. but I mean, it, it replays your cryptic and then just yep. like starts beating for fun. Yeah, I remember that's part of like the... That, Tail end of standard stuff yeah. was uh, Gear Hulk, your commit. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, Wandering Winder. We're seeing rogues. Uh, out. Oh, because of the weird. It's the uh, maybe half. it's a split card, yeah. So some cards that works on, some cards that doesn't. You know, and there so. was the rules change right around there when they released the Sorin, right. where you flip the top card and dome your opponent for the mana value of the card, where yeah, that's where you start no summating. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kyle doesn't have. I don't know. Sideboard cards are a worry for a lot of people here. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what's going on. So opposition agent is a rogue. That is rogue. Yeah. We have all we have the rogue payoff in Thieves Guild Enforcer. 
Yeah. And then we have... Turnabout's fair play. Yeah. With the high tide. Yeah. So we're on tap. Still, that's a lot of main deck cards. Tapping. Pyroclasm's board. Cyclonic Rift. So he's got Pyroclasm in the board. He's got Vandal Glass. No, board. nobody's taking chill. No, no one's taking chill yet. There's no chill. <laughs> this draft has no chill. And Kyle just will weep when it's taken. Unless Kyle takes it. He should. That's one of the things that you do. That's one of my favorite parts of the heads up red drafters. They like pick three chill. Nope. (laughs) Someone should also take gloom. Jake should take gloom. Gloom, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Imagine if Jake takes conversion. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, conversion. Conversion is like four mana, isn't it? Or is it only two? I think it's four with a community of upkeep. Yeah, it's double white. Yeah. There's a chronotalk. Oh, yeah. Now we're getting into like clown car o'clock. Kyle takes anarchy. So the thing about Cody's deck is, is he can clown car, but he can also decide clown car. Oh, there's the chill. There's the chill. Nick has chill. Kyle has to take Chaos Warp. You see chill? You, you're mono red? You have no other way to deal with this? You have to take Chaos Warp. There are better sideboard cards these days. Chill is... I uh, mean, there's a one mono red deck. Like, you turn... He's got Lotus. You turn one chill. That's where it is, though. You, you have just, to hit it by, like, turn two or turn three. Yeah, but you just turn two chill. You just shut him off. Yeah. Like, it's worth a sideboard. It's not Leyline. You're not going to mulligan the chill. Yeah. So the opportunity uh, the is very low. And it's actually possibly decent against James, too. But, yeah. like, it just shuts one deck completely down. I think it's definitely worth it. And in particular, so what we already talked about with Nick... You need time to do a little bit of setup. And what does Chill buy you? A little now, bit of time to set up against one of the most aggressive decks in this draft. Mark agrees with you, Plum. He thinks it's bad. Uh, I, I think it's still pretty good. Yeah. I do. Worm Coil, solid, solid. Yeah. Okay. Chill and a number of other effects, including Blood Moon, do not win games. They right. buy you time right. to win the game. Right. So if your if your plan was to open up chill, is really good against Mason. <laughs> yes, I was. That's yeah. one of the cards I was waiting for Kyle to pick Ooh, up too. Crystalline Giant. I that's like. the one that just adds counters. Yeah, but like I'm kind of high on some weird workshop shenanigans right now. Yeah. where you're playing like an aggro shops, where you're just like turn one shops Crystalline yeah. Giant. Okay, there were a lot of words at the beginning of the sentence that I was in on, and then we turned. I'm high on a lot of work for Mark to do printing out keyword tokens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm high on Natterday. Because it's a Natterday. <laughs> okay, Grist. Yep, we can... Oh, there's no way we Coco in Mason's deck. We're, do we have... Force? No, we don't have enough creatures. We don't yeah. have enough, he doesn't have enough density for Coco. Seeing Grist as a, end up being an insect means it's a creature. You can hit it off Coco. You can court right, for right. it. You can finale for it. It's just one of those things. The Godzilla Crystalline Giant being... Oh, boy. Book of Exalt. The Ember is a lot of mana for Kyle. I mean, he's... But he has a lot of creatures. Yeah, we noted this, right? Or does he? Because he's got to have a lot of burn spells. Which one is it? <laughs> I, ha- I opened two different decks for my sealed event, and I will sideboard into the other one. <laughs> yeah, it's never as good as you think it is in this format. Oh, I like Spectral Adversary. That's a fun one. That's uh, So Spectral Adversary oh, yeah. will... Uh, Phase out. By the way, uh, Jake should take the other, the white adversary, because that card's ridiculous. This is a cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a cycle. Is this from is this Midnight Hunt's Ask Crimson? Yeah. About? Okay. That those two sets and then AFR those set symbols just at a glance. So spectral is it phases uh, put that many one one counters on spectral adversary and it phases out uh, that many artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Oh, okay. So the the white one is a. 3-1 lifelink mm-hmm. that your creatures get plus 1 plus 1 for every counter on it. For every time you pay the kicker it gets a counter. Wow, that's ridiculous. And all your creatures get plus 1. They're not, they're not, they're not like plus 1 counters, they're yep. just a counter. Mm-hmm. And all your creatures get plus 1 plus 1 for every counter. On. Yep, okay. 3-1 lifelink, unbeatable by Kyle. He's got Skullcrack. Yeah, he's got, he's got that. He's got a wrapped. Blue Blast still there. available. Yep. Scroll. I drafted Scroll, and it underperformed for me. Actually, Scroll was better than Scroll. I grabbed his... The other way, scrolls hide. You're looking for, a, okay. I am very confused by this. Mm-hmm. You, this is not infect. Right. You deal poison one at a time. It's the protection. That is the only reason it makes sense when Isamaru, Hound of Konda, and Savannah Lions yeah, are still. It's the available. protection. It's gotta be the. Right. Protection. It's the protection. He's got mom and he's got uh, stepmom. Yep. 
and it's the protection. Um, you're, you don't have enough big creatures to, you know, that you really want to make unblockable. Yep. I mean, make something unblockable is nice, mm-hmm. but, like, it's not. I, I had it scroll. I tried it with an Urza, because it's, it's, it's an artifact, and yeah, it's yeah. a artifact, but it's still waterproof. Yeah. I cited it all the time. Yeah. Um, if this is, but this is one of those things where it's like, you have two other really right. good protection options. Is Skrelv the card you want when yeah. there are other one-drops with no, more no, power no, available? No. So, yeah, or Kythian. Um, oh yeah, because that flips into the Gideon, walker eventually. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the the reason I was looking at this compared to Isamara was that neither of those two cards can block, but one of them also has two toughness. Right. All right. So what's Mason gonna do here? I think I see just a removal sideboard card here or something. Got two picks, so you can mm-hmm. kind of. He's got three left after this one. Three. Because we cycle back. Okay. We have forty six because we don't want the eighth player to have the last pick twice. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, the the numbers on the sheet we're looking at start. Oddly, compared to the actual text sheet. Right, That's right, what right. throwing me off. Yeah, because the one column yep. on this is... Uh, Master Plum, that is actually something we talked about, not from Kyle's side, but from Jake's side, where was the, there was the opportunity for almost the entirety of the draft for Jake to play fourth Eerolingus because Chrome Ox was floated for so long. Right. And red is a very easy color for Jake to splash into and actually not play a lot of the same Aaron cards. Aaron and Kyle are still would. out there right now. It's true, as they usually are. Yeah, I mean they it's you know, they go. I mean they're the ones that, that go the least. But red white's red red white is slept on. That co- combo is so good in yeah. this format. But no, don't worry about it, Master Plum. We we like we no, you're good, about, dude. Yeah. We, we talk about shit all the, so much all the time. We say many words. You know me. I don't shut up. Yeah, that's what I do. I say words. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we miss those words. <laughs> Fourth year lingus is just one of the cards that I, I have. In the end, in you are right because we already said that, and we are right. <laughs> But yeah, there there is there's opportunity in the last like three, well I guess two picks for Kyle, three for Jake, or no three for both, uh, for them to pick up. Yeah, but I mean, that's picking up. Each splash. Yeah, but that but it's two picks to pick. You know, you know the lands for you. It'd be, the at oppor- this point, your opportunity cost is too high. Yeah, yeah, because you're you're missing out on the yeah. the mana for it. Somebody threw something and I missed it. Uh, it was a Crozen grip for. Somebody. Okay. Mike, I think. Okay. Warp Coil Engine just seems really unique. It's just like a good value. Like... I mean, you know, you're gonna sight in for it. It's gonna it's gonna make Kit Kyle in the in the in the junk. I'm just curious now because this yeah. just seems like one of those cards. It's Lifelink. It, it's gonna sight in against Jake and Kyle. A little and... under half half the time. Yeah. Okay. Shoppy decks, Goblin Weldery decks. That's kind of what I thought. Uh, Welder especially, because you sack it, so you pop out the two worms, and you can bring it back later, so there's a shenanigans. I turned one at once with Lotus in my engine workshop. And then... And one. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Very swiftly. Okay. Yeah. It it didn't get sorted. Okay. (laughs) It was like Lotus workshop, worm coil engine. (laughs) Because there's also the embarrassing, well, no, now you beat it, and they're like, all right, and then storm off. You're like, ah. (laughs) K-Return, that is... That can't come up that often. No, no, not at all. I know. Twice, maybe? Well, remember, now we have Cincy and shy oh, in here. Once. Once. Yeah. Okay. Nalrod. But it doesn't Ooh. do anything. Such a... There's the march. Great march. Wait, so late, so good. J- Jake would have been the only one to say, yeah, I no, want to take right, this removal right. spell. No, and it looks like Jake just wants to play to the board. Yeah, like, and Cody, Cody is smart. Oh, oh March of swirling. He's, like, he's like, I'm just marching. When the Saints go marching in. Yep. The beat of my own drummer. Ideas and bounds. We have a spelling error, but the card remains the same. Draw three, discard three. Yep, yeah, which makes sense. You want to win on that turn, so you don't yeah. really care. Yeah. You're usually a bubble Hulk theory. Um, I don't. I think again with the sideboard card stuff, like I think uh, a transmute card would have been better there. I thought for a uh, hot moment, ideas and bounds did have transmute, but that's muddle the mixture. Muddle the mixture would have been yeah. the better card because muddle counters. And... Yes, it has another mode. Yeah. It's not just transmute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Torp Orb. Muddle, Muddle would have been really good for him. Do you okay? So Torp Orb obviously better than Elspeth Mother of Machines because it costs two instead of four. But would yeah. you expect that to have gone? Oh, like, not somewhere? in this draft. No. Okay. I mean, it's gone a couple times, and okay. I think it's fine. Uh, but I think you want. I think there actually is a James just power with the artifact power on these X spells. Uh, We're think, playing Commander now. I think there is a big. Mana, uh, and I try started to try, but I ended up going into something else. But I got big mana white, where you like Grim Monolith, uh, Ancient Tomb, yep. um, something else, and you're powering out things like that Elspeth or the six drop, uh, the Wanderer. Okay, like a big mana white slash something list. Yep, 
Are you also trying to take advantage of the double trigger on March of the, uh, Spoth March of the Machine? Yeah, yeah, you were going to have stuff in there that would take, like, your Skyclave and, you know, your stuff okay. like that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of wa- good white removal dudes. Monarch, yeah. Skyclave. Doomsday 46th pick. It could. It could very well happen from Nick. Why not? We I just mean, have yeah. the VRD equivalent of Spanish Inquisition, where it's just all the combos all the time. Yeah, exactly. Nick's deck. Why not? You have Thoracle. You have, like, a handful. I don't... Yeah, with ideas and bounds, and Mason, you have Mason. You know, I think Mason should take um, the flooded, gr- the blue green draw land here. Not flooded grove. That's already been taken. Waterlogged grove. Waterlogged grove. Yeah. Yeah, the blue green one would be blue good. Just give him a little more draw. He's yeah. got. Uh, uh, you know, is he gonna rely simply on the rain six to recur, or is he? That's what it looks like thus far. Oh well, no, he's got the one green, the green guy, yeah, but, yep. as well. If you want low mark, you can you can whisper into Mason's ear. He already has thought sees, so just be like that little Fay. Um, I still would ex- like with one crucible effect. I still would expect yeah. rhyming up excavator. But you're not gonna go all in on it. I You've mean... strip mine and wasteland. Yeah, and I, I, agree. Draw, like... I agree. I agree. Uh, <laughs> all right, there goes on holy heat. Leyline of combustion. That is what. That's Card some spice. Does a thing. Yep. This is from like the second era Stops. of City of Traders going super late. Stops life key? Whenever you and or at least one permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or an ability an opponent okay. controls, it deals to... Oh, so it's anti-storm. Right. Here I come with 10 drills. Take 20. <laughs> what? Over- Overcharged amalgam? amalgam? Got exploit. Oh my God, Voracious Great Shark. God, Vince. All right, Flash. There you go. Exploit. Okay. 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 It's just a lot for a counter spell. It is. It is. Yeah. But it's a counter spell on a three three flyer. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you would do a Vincer, right? Yes. And you've got bitter ball. I'm okay with this, right? Yeah. Because this is a Vincer. Yep. Now, it doesn't return. Yep. But it, you've got Bitter Blossom, so you're attacking. Yep. It's a 3-3 three, three flyer, yep. which is relevant. Mm-hmm. And it also hits activated abilities or triggered abilities. Oh, okay. So I didn't realize that part of the counter spell. I'm actually okay with this. Yeah, I think yeah. this is really interesting tech. Yeah, in my um, mind, I was just like, well, why not rewind? Right. But yeah, that makes But again, sense. he's got so many 3 and 4 drops. Yep. Like, he's just going to be... And brutal. Yeah. So, uh, Master Plum, they're, they're, it's a late City of Traders. Jake has both Ancient Tomb and City of Traders. But in my What's mind, he... the, one of the reasons for that is because you don't have the initiative creatures as Jake. So, you. Right. So, if I mean, I Cody wasn't going to take City of Traders. I guess if he traders, needs to cast his. Uh, uh... Your GTA Batter Skull Cauldron oh, yeah. things you need your, to cast. Your skull, your skull and your Cauldron. Yeah. Right. Um, you're, to your point, yeah, you have Palace Jail. You're not really speeding up a lot of what you're doing. Um, yeah, I don't know what he's speeding into other yeah. than just uh, I need to be able to hard cast my um, Cauldron. Yep. My... And uh, Solitude, right? So it's like these yeah. are like turn three, turn four soul lands for yeah. you. Yeah, okay. Because that's where it seems like that's when they're going to be best. And like, the downside's very little for you. Correct. But the upside's also. Exactly. Like on, yeah. on turn two, you're going to be able to cast. You're, you don't have any three ups. You're, you're three up doll. I would like to. the new Lord of the Rings equipment card. Yep. The one that uh, equips returns what's something from your graveyard. Oh, the new Hammer Time card. Yeah. yeah, we were looking at this last night to see if we would need it. Um, there's what Breaking is, Point. What does this card do? Any player may have Breaking Point deal six damage to him or her if no one does destroy all creatures. Creatures destroyed this way can't be regenerated. So this okay. is the full board wipe that Kyle mentioned earlier. I believe this is from Judgment originally because it's from that cycle, like Browbeat, etc. Okay. Um, I've never seen this card. <laughs> I thought it cost a lot more mana, actually. Yeah. I thought it was I like mean, six, six I don't know. I, I don't think Punisher cards are great, but that's interesting. Yeah. No, it's it, cute. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. Um, yeah, destroy it. Creases. So you just... You zonk your own creatures, but at that point in time, this is like what I said. Your creatures need to deal right. a minimum threshold, and that you is like... Getting the trial solid there. Yeah, 100%. All right. Mason, what's our last baby? All right, we started at 10. We're wrapping up here at 10 local time. We're wrapping up about 1.45, all said and done. So three hours, 45 minutes, not too bad. Two breaks, yeah. yeah. Two interviews, not bad. 
And the players will basically export their lists into yeah. Moxfield. Start printing, Mark. Um, yes. But it, uh, some I of them mean, are... Fast Bond, which I, Mason just said he didn't want in his deck, and I, there wasn't like... Oh, people were there. ready. They were just waiting on Mason. He right. takes Mystical Dispute into Sedgemore, which... That's a late through time. school. Sedgemore is good with Chain of Smog. It can infinite with Chain of Smog again, but again, yep. he's got so many main deck cards. What's he... Yep. What's he I'm very, that's what I said. I think yeah. James Moxfield is going to clear up a lot of this. Yeah. An offer you can't refuse... Uh, I like it. It's a really fun counter spell. Blame Kyle. Kyle. Kyle's like, oh, I work logistics. I'm going to make you print all the cards. Yep. Uh, and Vince. Maybe that's why Kyle drafted the deck he did. <laughs> I'm tired of being on logistics. It's a one mana counter spell. Like, you're trying to win on one t- uh, on one turn if yeah. you're Nick. This is kind of what, what we talked about at the top and we've just seen kind of happening over time. Um, Nick also has Pact of Negation. Yeah, offer's good for his right? deck. So you're trying to win... On that turn, yeah. Plum, so, Plum's ran a lot of, or a decent amount of. Uh, he, Plum's actually our only seven and zero. Oh. Plum seven owed uh, one of the online with Thoracle combo. Yeah, uh, with, uh, which is what Nick yeah. is playing. Yeah, so I think offers really good in there. Yeah, and you can generate mana with it yourself, like like Mark just said. Counter target yourself to get yeah, counter two your treasures. Own spell. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird sometimes when you're like, play oh, pack, yeah. counter your own pack to get two treasures. Yep, yeah. It's like yeah, count. remanding your grape shot to recast yeah. grape shot for and 11, Cody with the. Here was that black the man. Fallen Shinobi. Because he loves the Fallen Shinobi because that card's broke. <laughs> it is really good. Yeah. Um, Gracious Great Shark has Flash. I just want to go back to this. When it ETBs it counter target artifact or creature, which just costs so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, his mana is going to be the, the de- death. I think, yeah. Like, you need a lot of mana if you're Vince, especially to cast a lot of the, the later picks. And yeah. you don't have a lot of it. You only have Mox, Sapphire, and Dark Rip. Well, that's so about it. We also forgot about that. There's the painter grindstone combo, just tucked away in Vince's list, which might just be relegated to and, the sideboard. And helm, uh, ley line. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I don't. I want to say not all of them are going to make they can't. the main forty. <laughs> when you are very solidly in the flash, and like rogue themes. So Vince, James, and Nick have a sideboard issue. I think Nick's better on a side. He, Nick's is the least of the issues. Yeah. But they've got more playables than sideboard cards. Yes. Um, there's the least. Kyle and Jake do as well, but they're in the mono that it kind of has its own, um, you know, it has its own issues that you can generally extend. And they're both also going to have pretty low curves. Yeah. Though. For, for me, when I look at Nick's list and I see a sideboard issue, it's more about what cards aren't you going to play in the main because a lot of them just go. So you have to kind of pick a plan and then put the rest of the cards that also work for that plan in the sideboard. Right. So do we... Did we get brain freeze? Yes, we did get brain freeze, and we have okay. ten drills yeah. um, of damage. So, like, we have very clear ways to win if we're Nick. Right. Echo of Eons, Pact. Yeah, we're very clearly. Yeah, and he's got clear ways to else. win. Is just the you know. Ha- oh, and Thoracle. Duh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we just need to pick. Pick two. what's going in the main. Yeah, yeah. So he's got the least issue. I think he just has too many main deck cards. Where yes. where James and Vince have severe sideboard issues, yeah, so like they don't have correct. Yeah. The the one thing I do like about Nick's build is that he gets to and James s- has a few start game. Like, okay, everybody has access, gonna have access to Moxfield, so you right. your heads up, so you yeah. can see what Nick is going to do game one. If Nick comes at you with tendrils, yeah. and puts the brain freeze package in the sideboard, now you have that cat and mouse of game of wait a minute, do I sideboard in my I, I, my shuffle Eldrazi? I like Wish or not. in the the storm deck for that. Same, yeah. yeah. It's a very good option there as well. Um, we didn't end on a lot of, or any red for Nick. We have Xander's Lounge. We yeah, have he's Pyroclasm. Red. He's got a Braid. He's got Pyroclasm. Yeah. He's Vandal, got Blast. Vandal Blast. Yeah, we, ha- we have a minimal touch of red, and Wish yeah. does not really extend us too far into right, red. Right. Yeah, absolutely. With the Valk, yeah. And mm. the Polluted Delta, right? And so the Lotus. Yeah. And he's got Breach. I mean, he's got his second oh, yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah, second pick. So. Yeah. So we're good on there. So yeah, it's just like Wish allows right. you to put all... You get to win from hand. Right. If you want, keep one in the main and one in the board. Okay. But one of your win cons, right? And then, yeah, you get to pick which one you're going to win from. Am I going to win from hand because I can tendril somebody out? Um. Well, he's got... I mean, a lot of it's not a straight combo, like just auto win combo. I mean, he does have balance to parish protection. Yep. Uh, but a lot of it's just micro combos for value. Things like... Um, you have Invasion of Gavacon and... Uh, oh, so I think this is actually... Magistrate. This is a, a parlance issue with the game on the whole. 
when we talk about combos, people understand it in a number of ways. Right. When you say combo, in this instance, it we don't mean infinite combos. Right. He's not going to put together a combination of cards to do something right. infinitely. He's going to put together a combination of cards that are synergistic. Right. Uh, Spellquell or Lavinia is uh, you know that type of synergistic uh, uh, because when they cast it for free yep. after it, they can't cast it. You it have three mana to ferry. Yeah. And uh, um, the. The Azor Spellqueller. Spirit Spellqueller. Yeah. Yep, right. That's um, another one. An ephemerate to go along with that. Right, right. right. Uh, then they, you know, so there's a lot of that is just hyper nice little synergies mm -hmm. in there. So, yeah. So we don't mean, so when we're talking about Cody's deck and like a combination right. of cards, it's that combination of cards that work together well for right. a synergistic outcome. Right. Synergies over yeah. combos. Not, not infinite. Um, right. Nick can't go infinite either, but the combination of, he, of cards that he has will lead him to win the game. He, on well, the yeah. So when I, generally when I say think of combo, I think of either I win the game in the spot or I go infinite. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, where Cody's combos are synergy combos. Yep, yeah, and that's that's what I mean. I think it's like a weird parlance issue. It's just like yeah. uh, tribal versus typal, and it just needs something that people need to like, separate. Right. Um, you know. So, so like sim similarly, James has a number of synergistic options in front of him that we're waiting for as well. This year, you're going to go big mana into um, uh, Torment of Hellfire, or are we going to go big mana into that black X spell, Exsanguinate? Yeah. You know, yeah. Where are we going to? I don't know. Um, Either of those spell seeker would have been pretty good for him. Did yeah. he get one of those? Yeah. That would have been an interesting one. All right, I'm going to go see if Mark needs some help real quick yep, and see if we're sending somebody in. Yep, okay. Yeah, because basically yep. right now... Uh, we're, before... we're in the lull. This is always the worst lull. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're at a lull because there's an expectation for our players that they get their Moxfield decks set up, that they submit their lists to Logistics to have our cards uh, printed out. This is a paper event, yes, but we use proxies for everything because while we could be playing these decks in paper, there are some odds and ends cards that just don't exist in an easy to find fashion. As was mentioned in the chat by uh, Katerberg, what is breaking point? Because chances are, while that card might exist in the St. Louis area, finding it at a store to play in paper is gonna be very difficult. So instead, we just print everything out to make sure it's here and easy and in front of us. And so we can get started. Uh, will we have an interview? Quite possibly from somebody who's pretty quick with their Moxfield update. And if not, then, you know, Mr. Hagen and I will just sit here and pontificate about the draft. But for anybody in chat who either might have just joined us or has questions in general, feel free to ask. While we're sitting here, we're looking at these lists overall. Um, so there are some questions in regards to who's going to do what. We believe Vince is going to be going into the Flash and Rogue style of things with the, the Fey build that he has in front of him. There's definitely a mill plan. Um, Ouroboro plays into that. So do the Crabs, Tasha Sidious, Laughter and the Thieves Guild Enforcer. So there's this interesting overlap that we'll, we will be excited to see uh, once the Moxfield goes up and see into which one of the two directions Vince will be leaning because you can't really sit on one or the other. you got to kind of like pick a lane and go because not all of your Fae are rogues and not all of your rogues have Flash. So that'll be interesting to see. And then we pick up some Flash cards at the end, kind of like question mark. Um, and then we were very curious to see what Kyle's going to do because there was the run on Planeswalkers from Kyle. All very powerful. Uh, there's not a lot of ramp in that deck outside of the Mox Ruby and the Ragavan. So getting to six mana for the Chandra, possibly a thing in the main. It might be something that we see coming out of the sideboard depending on the matchup. It is the anti-control Chandra, the one that cannot, cannot be countered. So we'll be curious to see what that is. And then, as always, we will be curious to see how Mason's deck kind of punches up. There are a lot of options in front of him he talked about it pretty, pretty eloquently when we had him in here for the interview but there's a, a lot of red options in front of him in the list so we're not quite sure um, how deep into that color he's going to go versus just the soul type base that he has um smart and handsome mason lang you know you can't argue with that point accurate um is there anybody in particular, though, that people would like to see come in and talk? We had Kyle, we had Mason. Um, there are some, you know, there are six other drafters that we could see between the end of the draft and round one. And usually we bring in a couple other people throughout the day. But is there anybody else that we'd like to see? Uh, yep, Ideas and Bound is at the end of, uh, towards the end of Nick's list. Now, there's no Doomsday, and we did mention that that would be a really good uh, last pick with the style of de deck that Nick has. Um, who's, who's newsletter, Nick's or uh, Mason's? Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, so Nick's list, Nick basically stands himself on combo with um, a pick one uh, Black Lotus into pick two Underworld Breach. Nick was very uh, emphatic about what he wanted to do with this draft and then leaned into it. The only kind of lean away from it was when he moved more into a Storm style of deck and when i say that i don't mean brain freeze because lotus underworld breach brain freeze is basically that storm uh, i mean the tendril storm and we see that uh come further out in the the draft itself so we ha actually have two combos right there with thoracle it itself though we could have leaned into um doomsday all right cody hello what's up Oh, well, not much. All right. Ugh. Can you cast Fallen Shinobi? Uh, technically. When you put a swamp in your list? No, Rafine's Tower. Oh, I thought that was the uh, the band one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Sp Spar's headquarters is the band one. Okay. All right, fair enough. Yeah. So how do you but, feel? Uh, I mean, there were a couple things that... Uh, oh, you can come in closer. You're oh, lost. sorry. Let me go to player. There uh, were a couple things that Jake took that I kind of wanted, but... Other than that, I felt okay. Okay. So what did what did Jake grab um, from you? I can't remember. Because um, we're looking at when we were looking at your deck, we figured we had an idea where you're going, and then it kind of solidified into like anybody who watches LSV draft knows what um like as our Cheons is mm -hmm. like that strategy. So we kind of saw that. So I'm kind of like I mean, Jake had a very straightforward mono that's, white that's aggro true. draft. So I'm, I'm just kind of curious, uh, like mostly just the. Um, I think Anointed Peacekeeper okay. and uh, the other Elite Spellbinder. Okay. Yeah, like Spellbinder makes sense. Yeah. Um, what about Selfless Spirit? Somebody asked about that in chat. I didn't think you wanted to be on it and Jake no, got it. No, I, I, I kind of wanted the Boromir because it does the same thing as Lavinia, but yep. it gives my creatures protection. But yeah, I, I don't think I wanted the Selfless Spirit at all. Okay. Okay. But, and Boromir is nice both against you and in your own deck too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting against Jake. Yep. And so you have Path, you have March of Otherworldly Light. Uh, mm -hmm. Did we miss any other onboard removal? Um, Cyclonic Rift. I mean, Teferi, either Gust, Technic, or Spirit, I guess. Yep. Touch the Spirit Realm. Okay. Um, yeah, mostly just control yep. people, not let them have things that I can't deal okay. with. Okay, so the draft kind of came together based on the, the list you had coming uh, into today? Yeah, I, so it's not the list that I wanted to play, Okay, but um, I kind of like got into it because blue-white was pretty much open, mm -hmm. at least at the beginning, like getting both forces is Yeah, that was dumb. on the wheel, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, like it took Force of Will and then I had to wait the full cycle to get Oh, negation. I thought you got it back to back. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah. Because I took, I took White Plume. Got it. Okay. Uh, over the both forces. Yep. Okay. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. See, I thought that was the wheel. Okay. Never mind. You mm. wheeled force into Teferi, Teferi. three. Yeah. yeah. Which, okay. I'm surprised I got that too. But yeah, I thought that was gonna go up a little further. We were kind of in this area where people were a little muddy, and I wasn't sure if we would have a planeswalker deck. And then it turned out Mason kind of like became one in the middle. But without Kinda, Brandon yeah. here, we lost like the Naya planeswalker deck. That, or mm -hmm. sorry, the Bant planeswalker deck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, not seeing Yavamaya taken by the person that had Nissa was interesting. Yeah, that's. I had considered just taking the Yavamaya because I didn't have a pick, but I was like, ah, eh, let's find something okay. else. <laughs> uh, is there anything else from Lord of the Rings that, aside from Boromir, that you're looking for? Like, did you care about the One Ring? Um. So the plan that I had coming in today was One Ring to Fairy's protection. Okay. Uh, doing things with Chronotog. Mm -hmm. So basically, I just never took another turn, and I had protection from everything. Yep. So, but the the one ring got taken and just kind of, I still have the Chronotog to Fairy's protection, yep. but it's a back burner thing got it. at this point. Yeah. Um, was Reprieve on your radar uh, when you were building this list in particular? So I had considered Reprieve at the end, but I needed more things that dealt with things in play. Yes. So, on board. Yeah. Okay. No Supreme Verdict. Um... Just too many creatures of your own to want to... Yeah, yeah. I, I think Rift is better, because by the time I went to Supreme Verdict, usually I have the mana for Rift. So. Yeah, and you don't have uh, Jason Mind Sculptor, so you can't yeah. win off a Planeswalker directly like that. Correct. Yeah, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Um, so, uh, 
the loot trees just value loot tree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's he, if you're in blue or red, he's just good value yep. for anything. Um, okay, so the containment priest was that on the list regardless, or were you settled uh, on that once you saw James take some reanimator pieces? So I, he was on my list, or she was on my list from the beginning because yep. of uh, like uh, spell queller. Um, just locking down the game. Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's doing what, whether or not there was a reanim- reanimator player or flash threat two two. You know, no, yeah, not right. bad. Yeah. Um, what uh, was skull clamp ever in the conversation here? Um, actually, I didn't even think about skull clamp, okay. but I don't think I have enough one toughness creatures. Sometimes it's not about just clamping yeah, through creatures; it's just, just about just being able to build back. Uh, I I do want to thieving skydiver uh one of Jake's equipments and just kill him with yeah, get him. Yeah, 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 like GTA. I'll just... Yeah, we <laughs> we were actually talking about during the draft. We didn't see Dak fade, in, and I mentioned well, like there's some some decks where Dak Faden would be good like in the Izzet yeah, decks and sure. I mentioned that Thieving Skydiver might be an option more for you and for mm-hmm. Mike than, than Dak would be and you yeah. eventually pick that up yeah I mean Thieving Skydiver is surprisingly like a sleeper like most people don't even think about it mm-hmm. but just like turn two stealing a mox is pretty good you gotta pay for it you can't pay zero you can't pay zero? Correct. okay so uh, well, I might, when you picked it, I actually was like, wait, can you pay? You have to pay for it, but yeah. can you get something that's less than that? Because I wasn't sure if you yeah, could steal yeah, it. You can get less, yeah. yeah. It okay. specifically said you can't pay zero. Okay, um, so three. But... Yeah, that's fine. I mean, and with the... Chrome Monks, I can do it. On yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, You have the accelerants, right? Yeah. Um, and then you got both the white initiative cards. Jake didn't really fight you on... Um, yeah, he he was kind of sad when I took the white plume. The second one, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you took the white plume was first. Yeah, yeah. yeah I picked it. So I was looking at... Yeah, I, I mean, the season engineer is just a good card it gets around things because it gives well it's a, you, you take white plume right that kind of demoralizes jake it's like well am i gonna take true. a four mono yeah. one like eh. yeah so and i was thinking about some of the blue ones but they're just we not... were talking about that it's like a six mono one or yeah the, the rare is a six mana erico sneaks like a four or five mana and it's just not worth it uh miss little noodles worth wants to know if you will marry them um uh, maybe i mean i am already married but Maybe we can work something out. All right. Okay. Uh, Gobacom. Uh, I just, I love that card. Okay. Yeah, like... It's just a good anthem effect on the back end? Yeah, yeah. and, like, I was going to take, uh, what's it called, the uh, Elite Spellbinder shortly yeah. after that, and then by the time I was getting ready to take it, Jake took it, so... Got it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. And so, you you just looking to really enter combat. Just, yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just uh, kind of outvalue, control the board a little bit, and then... Yep. Um, okay, so yeah, the counter spells you have make sense. Is Dovin hand of control, like a main board kind of thing, or is that um, a sideboard option? It's probably just going to be in the sideboard, because, like, it's only good against some of the decks, because yep. uh, it's not great against the creature decks, but yep. it is fine. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought when I saw you pick it. I was like, yeah. I don't know if this means we're going to be flexing more into control or if we're going to stay with the the, yeah. the Chion's thing. It's kind um, of just a pivot piece yeah. if I have to. Yep. Uh, everything else just kind of seems pretty clear-cut and makes sense. You know, um, The Twister was interesting, but I guess Vince floated that one a little too long for you. So No, they were... So right after he took Time Spiral, they were like, I'm surprised Time Spiral was going to take it. And I was like, eh, sure, why not? All right, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was like, it wasn't a card I wanted, but yep. it... It's fine. Like, yeah. I'll empty my hand pretty quick and helps me get stuff back. Yeah, so, that's what uh, yeah. that's what Kyle said uh, when he came in for his interview. He, he talked to us about Wheel. I didn't even ask. He was just like, you just fly your hand out. You're your Legion Wall Boss. You're like, boss, I got no cards. You're like, all right, wheel it up. Yep. <laughs> yep. Right? Awesome. Um, looks like we are ready for yep, round yep, one. Nice so we're going to kick you.